Welcome. Hey, Carlos. I am late. I'm late. I'm sorry. Hey, John and Dillinger. They have wronged us. Indeed, they have. Vengeance. That's what we seek. Zolrikas. I have to. I don't think I can match Billy Guy's voice. Zolrikas. Yeah, it's a bit hard. I know he's a couple of a uh, couple of octaves lower than me. Um. Just for the VOD, actually. Um, so yeah, if anyone's watching this recording later on, uh, maybe just stop this and watch the video that I've linked in the description down below. That is basically the guide to everything that we're going to do in this campaign. Um, hey, Malus Duckfleet. I haven't played dwarves in pff, like a month or two now um, because I was working on this dwarf video and I didn't want to like play dwarfs while I was just about to release a dwarf video. So basically I've been on you know abstaining from the joy of dwarf and uh i've got a lot of dwarf build up inside me if you know what i mean ready to just no that's that's so weird i don't know no where i was going with that hey liz <laughs> hey you are um yeah so dwarfs beligar iron hammer um reclaiming the holds vengeance all that stuff this video, by the way, very well structured. I usually can't be bothered to watch guides longer than 10 minutes. Yeah, I, I'm just really happy with how it turned out, John, as well. I've actually watched it myself a couple of times. I find it, like, almost addictive. I get, like, hypnotized by it or something, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I'm really, I'm really happy with that. I think it's the best uh, best job I've done so far, so I'm happy that I'm still sort of improving. Hey, Liz. Been a member for three months now. She's been three months already. Wow. Thanks for the... Uh, thanks for still being a member for three months. Much appreciated. Um, nothing wrong with being proud of good work. Yeah, no, I think, um, yeah, I spent a long time on it. Nearly two months to get that video done. So uh, I put a lot of work into it, uh, but I actually was really happy with the results. So, um, you know, I think that's something that I can, um, you know, I can stand by by for, uh, you know, and be proud of until one three comes out and the game changes and all of it's irrelevant. <laughs> but for right now, at least, uh, it's um, you know, it's a pretty good uh, pretty good guide for Belly Gar, I think. Um, love the strategy is great. Hey Zen Zendata Zen 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 and Ata Zen and Artanus. That's a hard name to say. Zen or is this is it Zen Artanus? Hey, Metacuba. Long time didn't catch you live. Been busy at work. Ah, oh, no worries. Well, welcome. Welcome, welcome. You're here just in time. Just in, in time for us to reclaim the holds. So it's, um, yeah, so it's um, 12 a.m. here, midnight o'clock. Perfect time to begin our new dwarven tale. Uh, I don't think there's anything really to... I, I always forget to, like, explain stuff for the new people. Uh, I just assume that we already know, you know, everything that's going to go down. But, um, but yeah, if you don't, if you don't know everything about Belligar already, check out the video and the uh, link in the description. Um, hopefully, most of you guys that are watching now have seen it already. Time to settle some grudges, indeed, indeed. Um, but yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, the thing with Belligar, like one of the main things that dominates his early campaign, is this 50% increased upkeep. So all of his stuff costs 50% more, which is crushingly high crushingly high penalty um and uh yeah so you have to keep your army quite small but the thing that the other thing that's uh defines beligar is his ghost heroes so these ghostly ancestor heroes um that are these um yeah really powerful hero type units that he starts off with uh, that's probably about all the preamble we need get into it but yeah i'm looking forward to this I've been uh, I've been without my dwarfs for a long time, and now I feel like it's just time for some dwarf action. This is the time of the dwarf. Uh, I'm also officially on leave now for the next nine days, so there's nothing to get in the way of my warhammer. So I'm just gonna be like getting lots of sleep, playing lots of warhammer, hanging out with you guys. It's gonna be awesome. I might even do some double streams. So um, I don't know if I'll do it today. I might need to catch up on some sleep, but. Um, I think there are definitely some days where I'll do no normal stream time and then I'll do another stream like 12 hours later. Like, so, you know, have a sleep and then I'll get up and do another stream on the opposite time zone. I did that for a while last time I was on leave and it was really good. So I'll do another, I'll do a different, like I'll do one, yeah, one campaign in one time zone and a different campaign in another. There's like two campaigns simultaneously. The dwarf lords of Karak Izor have sponsored your quest to retake your ancestral home. That's right, we're watching this. But, uh, but yeah, so Beligar has been displaced from his ancestral home. That's the storyline. 
Um, so Belligar is actually the um, he's actually his birthright is actually uh, Karak Eight Peaks, which is just about here. And this, this is where he should be. This is his, his ancestral home of his people. Uh, but he's been like his family's been homeless for a while now. And um, he's currently holed up in Karak Izor as a refugee, and uh, and the storyline is that the the, the thanes of Karak Izor have been have funded him to go on another expedition to try to take over his home. I think he's actually had a few expeditions to try to retake his hold, and they always fail. And then he has to go around hat in hand, like begging again to get more funds and more soldiers and more like rune weapons and everything. Um, so that's why I call him uh, the Beggar King or King Beggar. <laughs> so that's pretty out of kind, but yeah. But yeah, I like uh, Beligar. He's uh, he's kind of a he's a bit of a tragic hero in a way, you know. Like uh, kind of reminds me a bit of Thor and Oaken Shield. Okay, so one thing about this particular setup is that we don't want to include all of the heroes in at once. The whole point of it is to make um, Beligar's army a little bit weaker, so that it's attractive for the orcs to want to attack us. So that we're trying to draw these guys out to attack us. So if these guys were in the army, then they may not attack us because we were too strong. But um, now, since they're not here, they may actually attack us. And I'll put two points into scouting to increase our magic item drop chance. Put in here. This is just mirroring exactly what the guide tells you to do. <coughs> Excuse me. Got this really good landmark, gives you heaps of money. We want that. Don't we're not going to recruit any of this stuff because, as mentioned, uh, his um, army is really expensive. <clears throat> and we're going to go for a diplomacy tech tech tree, so all diplomacy until we get to High King's authority. All right. Uh, do I actually? I think you can actually already get. So, mm, sure. If we can, oh, yeah, I think we go get a little bit of money here. We actually get a decent amount of money. As you say, sir. Seven hundred, it's not bad. Um, what would your high king Hobo Dwarf been? campaign, exactly. That's exactly it. Um I think as people try it out for themselves, they'll be crediting your video, which should draw in viewers. Yeah, well I, that's the whole that's the whole point of it, Carlos. You know, I like coming up with these ideas and and um, or even that video, a lot of those videos came. Well, you guys came up with those ideas, and just you know, as is often the case, like I don't, you know, I don't like magically invent stuff or anything. It's just a matter of like sharing and discovering stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, like that's that's the whole deal. Like you know, you share you share your campaign ideas. Other people try them out. They share their campaign ideas with me. It's uh, you know, it's all good. So be it. Um, and I think um, I think some people like that like a lot of people contribute ideas for my videos and like approach me with ideas and stuff and and I think it's because they're like kind of like me like I've always been this sort of person where I have like an idea that I think is good and then I just want to share it I just want to like I just want to tell somebody I want that idea to go out into the ether and be you know help somebody out there you know or whatever I don't know I just want to give it away to somebody you know, you know I don't know if you guys understand what I mean by that but um but um but yeah I think other people kind of feel that way as well so um yeah so some so yeah I guess I you know I take those ideas and then I publish them and then they become part of the like Warhammer zeitgeist you know what I mean like um yeah without being too like, I don't know, we're not trying to be too egotistical or anything. Like, we have come up with, like, not me even personally, but, I mean, us as a group have come up with a lot of cool stuff in the last few months, you know, and, and published it. And, um, and yeah, and I think some of that stuff has become part of the, the kind of Warhammer zeitgeist. Is it the right word? Like... You know, basically the, the like the accepted truth about the, about this game now. You know, is is altered by the stuff that we do, which is pretty cool. Like, I think you know, it's nice to nice to be part of the community and, and contribute. All right, there's nothing too exciting to do there in, the, in that, but I thought I'd get it done anyway. Um, I do want to keep moving and just trying to make sure I don't forget anything. Guys, definitely helped me. So thanks to you and this community. Uh, no worries, Vicious City Fidian. Thanks for your support and uh, your kind words, mate. Um, love Lila Guy's law, so related to me. Yeah, he's awesome. 
Do what you feel is good for you and your health. Working too much even when playing is too much. Yeah, well, I've got a lot of I've got time off now, so I get to sleep and play on a ridiculous amount of Warhammer as well. So both things together is pretty good. Um Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure I don't stuff anything up like straight away. I'm trying to I'm talking a lot and that's really the only danger zone where I'm gonna like screw up my campaign. So hopefully it won't do that. Um, I'm going to just fix my camera because the autofocus is trying to screw me over again. The streams feel a little bit like chemistry should have been at school. <laughs> What's that? What do you mean by that? Uh, click monkey. You mean like you're, you're actually learning stuff that you actually care about? <laughs> hey, Vasily. There's Vasily. Vasily and the John, the two stars of the show. They've um, both contributed heavily to the to the new Belgar video, so thank you, gentlemen. And you know, and and your ideas have uh, it's heavily inspired this particular campaign. Okay, so this is the first little trick. So this guy, we did indeed sucker them into attacking us. So we don't retreat straight away. You've got to actually it won't count as a loss unless we actually get, you know turn up on the battlefield. So we've got to manually fight the battle and then manually flee. So even though we could clearly crush these disgusting groby scum and it pains us deeply to show them our backs that's what we must do to reclaim the hold Belgar's got to uh, yeah got to take this ignominy this ignominious defeat and we should really go and kill them all but no, we have to stick to the strategy. We have to withdraw. There it is. Fleeing the battlefield. It's creative, fun, and learning stuff. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's um and it's a beautiful game. It's just I love this game. I love dwarfs. I love Belga. I love it all. It's amazing. Um a new campaign, sweet. Indeed. New campaign inspired by your uh, original campaign ideas, the John. <clears throat> okay so we've now got a grudge against this guy because he made me flee he shamed us I answer to clan all your skills tell me get these parents moving Um, now, I always auto-resolve this battle. Um, I wonder if it's actually worthwhile fighting it at all. I don't think it is. Yeah, no, I think we can just... We can just auto it. It's, it's fine. Okay, so we didn't get a magic item drop there. It would have been nice if we had got a magic item drop. Um, you cannot have everything. Hey Liz, your video has to be hyped to play some Dowie. Oh, awesome, awesome. I was hoping that uh, you guys would all be inspired to uh, try some try some Belligar with me. Um, yeah, if anyone's uh, thinking about starting a new campaign, great time to start a Belligar campaign. We can all play along together. I'm pretty awesome. Have you ever played a horror game called Doki Doki Literature Club? A friend always tells me it's good. No, I haven't. It sounds sounds awesome though. And uh, thanks for the thanks for the super chat by the way, Liz. That's awesome, man. Much appreciated. Um, I don't know if we should do renames of our king of our ghost heroes because I feel like you know they're kind of they've got their own names, even though they are they aren't legendary. So we theoretically could change their names, but I don't know. I feel like it's a bit. Oh, wait, wait, I'll rename these rangers after you. There you go. The Lizarathi rangers. I'm not sure what that stands for. Maybe they hunt lizard men. <laughs> hey, Linksy. Welcome, welcome. Fire! 
by the comet. Hail, mountain lords. So. Greetings. We may not be the end. Affirmative. Yes? Do not greet me as a friend, nor are we foes yet. Yes. No evil to be still, Silvaron. Let them speak. Dark are these times, and dark my The forest call. You do well to kneel before me. <clears throat> Just making sure I didn't stuff anything up. But yeah, I think we're on track still. Waiting to join an interview. Oh, really? You got an interview? Cool. Give me some Dawi luck. I don't know. I don't know how you make luck in Dawi. Dawi like way. <laughs> I recommend giving one Thane points in training. Ooh, interesting, Carlos. Um, well, we're going to pr primarily going for a hero hammer stack, so we aren't going to have any units really. Um, so yeah i don't know i mean yeah no, i don't know i don't know if it's a good idea really because yeah i mean yeah i don't know like maybe later but it's sort of a bit weird because we're not gonna get our rangers for a while and then when we do get the rangers um we are gonna um yes it's just it's not a lot of xp like we aren't gonna we're only gonna have two rangers for ages and then we'll get some more later on but the thing is like they're range troops and range troops get experience really fast anyway and there's some other like skills that are important for my things to get um yes i don't know i feel like i mean i don't normally take training like ever but um and so i've sort of decided it's not worth it but i think it's still worth discussing but not not in this particular campaign though Oh, I did stuff up already. I forgot to build a second lord last turn. God damn it. <laughs> Talking too much. Oh, well, we've had practice at least now. Restart incoming. You got it. Got to build a second lord in turn two, guys. Fuck. All right. Now I'll just I'll talk less now. I'm just going to concentrate, not talk to you guys. Made me fuck it up. Um, that's the good thing about this guide, though. Uh, um, pretty much everything that you need to do, you have to do like super early in the campaign. So it's um, so if you stuff it up or if something goes wrong, you just restart, and it's all auto resolved pretty much up until turn eight. So yeah. Yeah, training doesn't do much. Um, it's uh, it also it doesn't do anything at all to lords and heroes. So this that's why sort of in this particular one, it's like yeah. So just to demonstrate how easily that you can get this wrong if you don't follow the guide, guys. That was uh, totally intentional. Uh, so yeah, whoops. It didn't take me long. It's like literally I only went I, I went one turn was as far as I got without um, stuffing up. So that was pretty uh, pretty poor. Yeah, so we we can hunt, um, hunt scars and later on you get five battles to get a second rune spite, but we're gonna get another rune spite like on we'll either get on turn two or on turn five, depending on how lucky we get. Mm. Yeah, sorry about this, guys. Just bit ruins the flow a little bit when you have to like redo everything again. So, greeting, stranger. No, they didn't like us as much this time. Dicks. I wonder if we can still get three hundred gold out of them. No, no. The nation. What brings you here to disturb my work? Yes. No, I could have got money then. Um. Shield scamper back to your empty halls, dwarf. Very good. Anad? Come, come, kin. 
Let us feast and drink. No way. Cool. Um, yeah. Okay. Haven't stuffed anything up yet. Cool. All right. See if we can get this right this time. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'd, I'd like to think that there's some kind of possible world where training could be good if you were like going for a unit based thing and you'd like the chevrons were really valuable on that particular unit or in something you know maybe if it was like an infantry army where they get experience kind of it's difficult to get experience or something but yeah anyway yeah no i think I'm, i've gone off you know it's all these type of arguments that people are making in chat right now that's kind of put me off training but but even if i wasn't off training i wouldn't go for it in this particular campaign because i'm you know i've got specific other stuff that i want to get at least until level 12. If we gave Lord Hero XP to be decent, yeah, that'd be good. Looks like you need to watch your own guide. I know, Gregory, fuck. I mean, like, because I've been working on this guide, so I've seen the guide, basically I've watched the guide, like, over and over about, like, 50 times now, right? <laughs> and that's why, it's, that's why I've been hanging to play it so much, because every step of the guide, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll do that, and I'll get it really perfect. And, you know, some of the stuff, even in the guide, that I didn't really do perfect, because I tried to make it a bit faster, whereas in the real game, like, I'm going to, like, fight the battles manually and stuff like that and do it, like, even more perfect than in the guide, you know? So I'm like, I'm just hanging out to get all these, just do it all, you know? And then, of course, I screw it up as soon as I try and do it yeah that's how it goes Lund's air. on my way what needs to be done grease those axles train moving it shall be done Yeah, now we can already resolve. Again. Okay, we didn't, we didn't get an item again. It's unfortunate, it's about a 50% chance of getting a magic item drop on that first battle. So we yeah we got we didn't get it both times so that's fairly unlucky but not unheard of. Lord of the it's not that unlucky. It's like a bit unlucky, but not really that unlucky. Oh uh, yeah, so we need to build another unit, build another uh, recruit on the Lord, right? Um, doesn't really matter. Which one we take? Three Lord. Lord of Clan Borgrim. Armed and I don't ready. think it actually. Uh... Beardling. I don't know if it really makes any difference, but. Because there's a little circle around the settlement where it costs zero movement to move. And this guy, because he's just spawns in with zero movement, but he can still... Move. Anyway, point is, he's slightly closer now to down south. I don't know if it actually makes any difference or not, though. But, um, yeah. Every little bit helps, maybe. Unless it doesn't help at all. By the comet, I trust our dealings will... So... Do not greet me as a friend, nor are we... A fool's action. Yeah, diplomacy is slightly different this time. Um, last time we were able to get agreements with a lot of these guys straight up, so... Yeah, unlucky that we screwed up that first time. Okay, this time we got it right, I think. When do you think it's good to just send the hammerers? Mm, yeah, you probably should disband them just then, like straight after the first battle. Or even before, even before the first battle on the first turn, you really, you don't really need them at all. Um, 
But I mean, I was gonna keep him until after this battle with Zaraxil, but yeah, I could actually just My probably just ban him straight after that first battle, I guess. Okay, so this guy, we're gonna force march him as far as we can go. If you say so, Beardling. This guy, we're gonna just accidentally bump into this guy. Whoops. I didn't actually work, but yeah. Setting Put him there. So he's still in he's still getting replenishment from in here. Um yeah, you could disband him earlier, but like I'm not gonna run out of money, so I don't really care. But um but yeah, it probably yeah, you probably could be sensible and disband the hammers earlier. Um or even disband all of the all of this stuff, all of the melee stuff. I think that's what the John says to disband all the melee stuff. I can't remember what his strat is but mm, yeah i'm just gonna keep him because um i just want it to be sort of easier and i don't think i need the money so i hope i don't need the money if i go broke then it's gonna be jokes on me but um i don't think that's gonna happen so i think we'll be all right hmm Bye bye Slayer Lord, yeah, that's it. The old Slayer Lord may uh may bite the bullet. I'm just thinking. We could actually recruit right now if we wanted to. No, oh, we can't really afford it though. Second restarting coming? Oh why? What did I do wrong? You can't just say second restarting coming, you gotta tell me what I did wrong. That's force favorite green skin hero force reset during Yeah, yeah, that green skin hero is really annoying. Okay, so I reckon he has to go about here. And that should lure them out there. And I reckon Belagar I don't know, I reckon Belagar's gotta go kind of like I feel like you just gotta be outside of like I don't know. I feel like you just gotta have this guy outside of your ring of like your like influence area. Like I think maybe like there, maybe there. something like that. Very well. I will do as you ask. Hey Andrew, how you going, man? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for your uh, thanks for your help as well. I really appreciate it. And Dash Dash and SC and all the other guys that contributed ideas um, and all the other people who I forgot to thank. Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you all. Uh, right, uh, yeah, it was a real uh, a real labor of love that video, and it was and it was definitely thanks to lots and lots of people that contributed. So um, you know, heaps of these d dwarf streams that we did, chatting about dwarf strategies, trying out different stuff. You know. There's actually like, yeah, a lot of work that went into that, not just in making the video, but also in the research that we did and the discussions and yeah, so it was, I really, and I thoroughly enjoyed all of it and I'm still enjoying it now. So good for us, basically. Shoulder axes, lads. Felix Jaeger. Let's get some aliens after that ruckus. The written word <laughs> shall immortalize the horrors I have witnessed. Oh uh, yeah, did anyone recognize <laughs> I had a little pop quiz, like what's the correct turn to correct turn to Confederate Thorgrim? And, and I asked in the comments like if people could guess or if people paid attention to the guide so they could tell us what the correct turn correct right, turn to quiz. Confederate Thorgrim is. Um I've got another I've got another pop quiz. Does anyone recognize the voice actor that did the laughter in the um, in the Skaven Blight battle? The laughing with the um, with the subtitles. Revenge incarnate. All right. Hopefully this is gonna work. Yeah. See, we're cutting it pretty fine. Like we could delete. We could get rid of these hammers right now. But oh, we're not going to. I think we're good though. 
Hopefully this works. Again, if it doesn't work, we can always restart again, but I think it should work. We shouldn't get discovered by that. It should go for him. Even though he might discover us as he walks past, he'll be already attacking that guy. So I'm pretty sure the AI doesn't change course. So if the, if the AI is like planning on attacking this guy, even if it gets to like here and sees us because it's already issued itself the attack order, I don't think it'll, it has a chance to change its mind. So we should be sweet. He should definitely get to kill that guy. That's the theory anyway. Fingers crossed. Uh, you're welcome. Appreciate the call out on my Skaven name in the description. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, hoped, I, was, I was hoping that you would take that as the, as the um, you know, um, appreciative thing that it was. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is our Slayer Lord. He's shamed his clan, his hold, and he's gone out solo to seek death against the enemy. We'll, uh, we'll grant him, we'll grant him his wish. There you go. Be at peace, Thorhall Helhein. You've reclaimed your honor in death. Okay, now he's in uh, he's in march stance, right? So he can't attack me, um, and we've been offered the chance to ambush him. Now we do not want to ambush him because we're going to get a grudge because he killed our dude. Oh, he got a magic item out of that as well. Sweet. That means we could possibly steal it off him. Not that we necessarily will, but it'd be cool if we did. Um, yeah, so anyway, long story short, the grudge hasn't sort of spawned yet. So if we kill him now, we won't get credit for the kill for the grudge. However, the grudge will still spawn at the start of next turn. And the, the grudge will be to kill this guy who doesn't exist anymore. So we'll just have this like permanent grudge that you can't solve. So that's bad. So don't kill him, basically, is the short version. <clears throat> Cool. He's just stuck there looking like an idiot. This is exactly what we were hoping for. Got another grudge. This is what we want. It's all about the grudges. Vengeance! Uh, it sounded kind of like that College of Pyrotechnics video I saw ages past. No need to restart. Always the chance you get an item. True. Uh, even this stream's thumbnail is a piece that just barely didn't make it into the video. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, this uh, the thumbnail is uh, is a uh, was, we were thinking about making it the Beligar, the human battering ram was like another theme we were thinking about going for. Uh, yeah, so do we want to auto this one? I think we do want to auto this again. We're gonna lose those miners, but it will save us some hassle. Maybe I should just keep them until the same spot that I did in the other, in the actual video. <coughs> um, yeah, so the good thing about fighting open field battles is you can do this to get another 10 Oath Gold, which we do want. Um, although, since we are in our territory right now... We could get two, 20 more growth. I wonder if that's sort of worth it. Probably not. Uh, this is the whole thing where you get torn with legendary because like there's always like multiple ways to go I and mean, if you get wishy-washy you start choosing different things and you get nowhere you know Um, yeah, I think impossible grudges are supposed to just automatically fail, but I'm not sure. If not uh, yeah, automatically get aborted and sort of fail, but I don't know if they do or not all the time. But it doesn't really matter because it's not so much the like even like it. Um, I mean, obviously, it'd be really bad to have a grudge you can never solve. But even apart from that, having a grudge that we can't get the thirty oath gold from is what is the what we want. Like the point is, we want the thirty oath gold, you know. Um. I kind of want that growth. Maybe. The 10 Earth Gold right now doesn't matter too, too much. Nah, screw it. We want the money. Out. <laughs> um. And, yeah, I think we're going to go for... Lightning strike first. 
yeah. come in handy. And yeah, one more resolve. Why not? Yeah, we got a student. That's good. Finally got at least something. I mean, we should have, we could have had a chance to get more than just the one student, but we haven't been super lucky this battle this time around. this boost income would give us uh yeah it's not very much all right um now now could be a good time to get rid of these hammers hey because um they are pretty expensive we aren't we're not really planning on using them much oh check these guys out they got two silver chevrons hmm that's interesting he's like double silver chevrons and miners better than normal door four is i mean i'd say no is probably the answer they are no no they're not at all better <clears throat> Fear no peril. I've not got all day. copper mines gives them chevrons yeah yeah indeed it does i just i hadn't really thought about whether i wanted to get them instead of the to the warriors maybe but nah Onwards to death. um yeah there's no real need to sh there's no real need to just pass for no reason so i may as well now i think that i know last time i went for rangers first because it's sort of safer but the growth only takes one turn so technically we could get like a couple of turns of growth in here um and then cancel it and then get it right it's only probably like two turns max it's like 30 growth i don't know if it's super worth it but we i mean we saved the money we saved the money by not having those hammers so we may as well i guess Blasting warrior better than warriors overall. You reckon blasting charge is better than warriors? True king. One seventy versus one eighty nine. The blasting charges are pretty cool. Uh, I mean, they're slightly cheap. I don't know. Screw it. Whatever. I don't think it makes any difference really. Like, I think we'll still sort of, you know, we'll still prosper regardless. Um. And that means that we can um, abandon this one turn earlier, which is pretty cool. That doesn't give us any chevrons or anything. Oh, wait up. We need the... We need the, to be able to recruit them. Sorry. Don't do that. Otherwise, it won't work. You have the heroes to tank most here. Well, I'm going to auto-resolve most of the fights, so it doesn't... Yeah, we mainly just want whatever's best in auto-resolve. I haven't actually tested out the miners in auto-resolve. Potentially, they're not going to be too bad. Cool. All right, everything is on track so far. I think what? we're trying out. We're trying. We're, do, we're deviating from the plan already. Taking some miners instead of warriors, but hopefully it's going to work out. Yes. Do not greet me as a friend. Nor Never. Yeah, that was a lot better last time when these guys liked us just naturally for no reason. I wonder if I did something slightly different to make them not like us, or if they just actually because they just spawned with defensive maybe or something like that. They're just less likely to make agreements this time around. Hmm. <laughs> Master in spite. So we weren't lucky to get it on turn two, so but even if you don't lucky enough to get on turn two, you can still get on turn five, so it's still good. Give it to the man himself. 
Uh, you could give it to... Um, I'm sort of thinking maybe it's better to give it half, half enough stone beard. Um, but yeah, I don't know, either way. Love the Belgar, very informative for myself. Oh, that's awesome, HMS. I appreciate it. I appreciate the kind words. Glad it, glad it helped. And hopefully inspired you to start your own Belgar, Belgar campaign. Yeah, with the auto resolve, you tend to just be like cycling through units anyway. They don't like tend to survive that long. Um, but, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. They might pay, they might, you know, we might, we might manually fight a few battles early on or something. So, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, um, oh yeah, so we should be able to get trade agreement maybe with Border Princes now. We should already try that. Not yeah, no, they're not, as, they're not as friendly with us this time around. It's alright. More bombs. More bombs! <laughs> hey, Morn, how you going, man? They give more air power than warriors when they're higher rank, but yes, they tend to take more damage. Hmm. I feel like it should count them as sort of like, um, as like, um, which one of these actually gets me closer? I think that gets me closer. By my hammer, it will be done. Revenge incarnate. Troll Slayer. Godtrek Gernishan! You have my cooperation. Follow my lead! So, turn 6, and turn 7, then 8, then probably turn 9, we'll stay here. The move turn 10 will be here, and the move turn 11 will be there. So, probably turn 11, turn 11 we want to start recruiting rangers. Um, so that means we need to have... We need one turn to get rid of this, that's turn 10. And then ranger building takes three, so that's turn 7. Yeah, so we're only going to have this for like one turn. Great. Alright, well that wasn't really worth it, but oh well, whatever. I wonder if we should build another growth building here, maybe. Next turn. I need the eight peaks turn by turn three. I need the eight peaks by turn three guide. When is it ready? Oh, hey, you go. Um, I'm pretty sure there is no turn three eight peaks guide unless you're doing movement bug. Um, and even with movement bug, it'd be pretty kind of hard. But um, but yeah, no, I think there is, I think you can, t like somebody, another 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 thing that inspired me to do the Belligar video was a guy who told me about his um, speed run on Karak eight peaks. He didn't use movement bug, I don't think, but he used, um, like he cheesed out all the battles like super hard. Um, and yeah, I think it was like, um, yeah, I think it was like six or seven turns or something. It was basically like the fastest possible time you can get to Karak 8 Peaks. Like, he didn't slow down for anything, I don't think. I think he did it in, like, the, literally the fastest time you can do it. And then he fought Karak 8 Peaks with just the starting heroes and shit. Um, but yeah, I didn't, um, yeah, anyway, I didn't, I didn't want to do a Karak 8 Peaks rush guide, especially because he'd already done it. Um, and so I did the opposite way around, you know. Um, no, I, well, no, I'm not, yeah, I'm not even talking about the movement bug glitching way. I don't really care about that. But, like, in terms of, like, doing it, well, I suppose the movement bug, yeah, that's interesting. I was talking to somebody about um, speed running and stuff like that. Like, I'm not really into speed running, but um, but um, 
but I do respect like the speed running people because a lot of the cool exploits and everything come from people like trying to speed run stuff and everything. Um, just as a lot of the exploits come from me trying to like do really weird shit or other people trying to do really weird stuff from the from the like more single player game gaming community, you know. Um, remember Johan and respect him, okay? <laughs> exactly, Andrew Jones. We've got to um, we've got to uh, avenge Johan. Okay, so I think that we had this growth up for like one turn. Now I think we have to open. Hey, none of your business. Thanks for subscribing, man. Much appreciated. Another uh, another one joins the cult slash club. Oh, fuck. Johan's dead already. Yeah, I know. Well, he's probably going to be dead by the time we get there, yeah. Or maybe, I don't know. Or maybe Johan's not born yet. Maybe this is, maybe we've gone back in time to, because humans are short-livered, you know. Maybe this is before Johan was born. Um, uh, I feel like I could build growth here, but... Nah, I think I'm. Uh, yeah, no, nah, I think I'm gonna go for like an even less fiscally responsible method than what I did in the guide. So I need more money. Iron hammer. You have my hammer. I'm gone. Got trick. Girlish son! Out of your leafy hideouts, beasts! Off we go! Alright, we're in position. Turn 7. Next turn we're going to attack. Um, Ica Claw's here. Next turn he's going to move out of there and go to Tabaro. Otherwise we blame John, because that was John's, was John's strategy that's built up. Yeah, this is all good. We don't really need to keep checking. It's like it's not really that critical, you know, that we keep checking this diplomacy all the time, but it's just sort of a compulsion that I've got, you know. <laughs> if we just wait until we get our um until we get our technologies unlocked, then all of this diplomacy stuff will just straight away become a lot easier. Gonna be a dwarf and scrounge for every last coin. Yes. I knew we'd get 400. These humans can't barter. They are weak willed. They're weak willed folk. They're not as staunch as dwarves. You have a proposal? We are willing to hear it. So it's not Lupio Sunscryer. He's apparently the Lord of um Lord of Estalia. It's uh Johan is the um Johan is the mayor of Tabaro. So we've got a we've got a free Tabaro for him. Estalia pre Johan is a scary dark place. Yeah, Johan's the people's hero. We've got to help him. He's a freedom fighter. He's under the yoke of the Skaven, the Bagaroki scum right now. <laughs> Alright. Let's do it. I don't know what you're talking about. It's only mine if it works. It's mine if it doesn't work. That's right. <laughs> oh, did he not move? Bloody John. He's always fucking me over. <laughs> um, recruitment 25%. Yeah, actually, we'll take that because we're probably going to recruit some units. Um... Oh, no, he did. Right, cool, cool. So, yes. All right, John, you are right. It is yours because it did work. So, yeah, so this, so, um, what do you call that? So, yeah, so this guy was over here and Ica Claw was there and they swapped, um, which is fine because this guy's the weaker of the two. Um, Even slayers must rest. Our ancestors would be proud. I feel like we probably have got one extra turn that we could have waited. Could have maybe kept the growth for two turns. But, yeah, blah, whatever, it's fine. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could have kept the growth there for at least one. Yeah, one more turn is probably the right amount too. I think I figured out it was two turns, but I don't want to be I don't want to be going up here needing to recruit and not being able to recruit. So yeah, that's why in the guide I just said build the range of things straight away because if you if you don't build it in time and then you got to wait around up there, it's yeah, to be annoying. Hey Shagrat, latest Bella Guy video is fantastic. Definitely trying some stuff when I play as Clan Angren again. Uh, awesome, thanks man. All hail Hornet Rat. What's going on, Liz? We got we got news. Oh, all right. See, this is uh, this always thanks thanks by the way, Liz. Thanks for uh, doing your uh, job as your sacred job as the. Uh, news person you know, living up to your newsman badge um what am i doing here so yeah I mean, this is like the dilemma that i have at the moment it's like i'm really into my dwarf campaign but then i feel like as a total war channel when there's total war news we kind of have to we kind of have to um you know we have to cover it so so time out Time out from the dwarf stuff, guys. We're going to uh, do a little bit of uh, on-the-spot reporting on the latest Total War news. We've got the um, magic highlight. Uh, where we put it? Uh, right there. Let's go off the graphic. Okay. Magic in Total War Warhammer 3. The storm cometh. Not too long? Okay, cool. Um, I'll, I'll just read it, and then I will quickly go over anything that's important, and then we'll get back to some Belagar stuff before too long. The winds of change blow through Total War Warhammer 3 and all of your armies feel the impact or, well, at least the ones with spellcasters. As part of our general update of game systems in Warhammer 3, we're tweaking the winds of magic, power reserves, casting spells, and even, even adding a whole new battle rule set for particularly magical encounters in the realm of chaos, Storm of Magic. Well, so a new rule set called Storm of Magic, is that what that is? Um, first, let's detail the changes we need to Winds of Magic. Well, not a full overhaul should make spellcasting more enjoyable with more interesting consequences and greater strategic decision-making. Core is that armies will now have a variable Winds of Magic reserve pool that increases or decreases based on the strength of the winds in that area. Some examples are a basic early game starter army begins with 50 reserve reserves of magic. It's in a region with blowing winds of magic gives plus zero per reserves per turn. Assuming nothing special happens, it remains that way. The same army moves into a region with calm winds of magic, uh, which reduces by 10 per, 10 per turn. It will have 40 reserves that start at next turn and will continue to drop the longer it remains there. If it's a demon faction army, it will eventually start to receive debuffs with the opposite true at the other end of the scale. More on that in a moment. Oh, okay. So it's like, so it's not like your wins are just instantly whatever it is in that region modified by your army modifiers. It's like your wins are like a bucket full of wins. And if you go into a dry area, the bucket will start to go down, but you'll still keep it for a while. So you could be in a really high winds area, have your wins up to like 250, then go into like a winds of magic desert that's becalmed and has really bad winds. And you'll still have your, you'll only lose like a little bit at first and it'll start to go down. That's pretty cool. I like that. That seems really good. Um, and then, yeah, you can go back to a high winds place to, like, top yourself up again or whatever, yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, once again, the army moves, presumably on some sort of marathon, into a new region. This one, time with strong winds of magic, providing plus five per turn. It also adopts channeling stance, increasing by a further 15, and is joined by a hero with magical reserve skill, giving it another plus 20% gain whenever the reserves are increasing. Its total bonus is plus 22 on the following turn, and it will cap out at 100 within the next few turns if it finally stops moving. Hopefully that's fairly clear. So what, so 100 is the cap? So does that is 100 the cap for strong wins? Or is 100 just the cap all around? Like you can never have more than 100 total. That's interesting. If you can never have more than 100 total, that's very interesting. Hopefully that's clear. There's numerous other ways to increase or decrease, decrease your reserve or impact your enemies, dilemmas, research skills, post bubble decisions, and so on. One of the key factors when playing demon factions is that even if you have no or minimal spellcasters, you want to keep an eye on it for the benefits of high reserve and the drawbacks of low. Those are 
All Demon Factions will receive Replenishment Rate, Leadership, and Physical Resistance debuffs when at low reserves. At high, the buffs are Campaign and move, campaign Movement Range and Zinch gets faster barrier recharge speed. Uh, remember that Winds of Magic have a lot of implications for Zinch and can be manipulated directly. Corn Spell Resistance. Note that spell, Corn has no spellcaster units, so this is the only real benefit for them. Nugal Melee Defense, Slanesh Speed. Hmm, Okay. What about in battle? The reserve pools represents the amount of magic you have to draw on through the course of the fight. It slowly moves from reserve pool to your power pool from which you directly spend on spells. Okay, so it's the same. If the reserve runs out, you'll need to either make do with what you have or find a source of magical power on the battlefield, draining from an enemy spellcaster in a Zichen ritual, for example. The opening deployment phase gamble for power from your reserve works much the same, though your total starting power is always a percentage of your starting reserves. Here we go. Higher reserves, more power, no matter how bad your luck. Your reserves will return to their pre-battle level once you're back on the campaign map. This is partly for balancing and fun reasons, but also represents how the winds of magic are never drained, simply channeled. But what if it's just, an, just as an example, you took your army model or otherwise inside the realms, the Chaos Realms, where the winds of magic are unpredictable and powerful, a constant roiling storm of devastation and regeneration, a storm of magic, if you will. Storm of magic, pictured. Uh, Storm of Magic is new battle rule set for Total War Warhammer 3, one that is always active in the non corn Chaos Realms. If you were to fight a battle there, other than a survival or quest battle, it will use these settings. Straight off the bat, reserves are infinite. Whoa! Reserves are infinite in the Storm of Magic. How quickly you can move them to your power pool will still be important, but you'll never run out of energy to channel into big boom, magical lasers or spirits. Storm of Magic also changes as the battle goes on, each law having a chance to be the next in ascendancy. Oh, wow, okay. So different laws of magic, different winds, whether it's like Ashkri or whatever, different winds become ascendant from time to time. That's really awesome. Law, which is currently empowered, has a number of effects laid out below, as well as giving you access to the law's cataclysm spell as an army ability. Charged by any spell casting by either side on the battlefield. Once charged, the change to the next random spell law begins to count down. You lose access to the Cataclysm spell if the law changes before you cast it. You can only use this Cataclysm spell if your army has a spell caster, though the passive effects of an Ascendant law are still applied without one. Um... I would assume that you can only cast it if you have a spellcaster that has access to that law of magic, surely, right? If you got like, if like life is in the ascendancy and you've got the life cataclysm spell and you've only got a fire mage, then you wouldn't be able to cast that, would you? Um, I don't know. Hmm. Cataclysm spells are ludicrously powerful abilities, mark the end of a law's ascendancy once unlocked. Once cast are available for each side of the battle, they include massive buffs to allied troops, huge persistent heals, fair share of devastating thunderstorms and volcanic corruptions. They are simply not very fair. Here's what each law gets. Note that there is no requirement to be using the law on one of your spellcasters. You still get access to the passive buffs and the cataclysm spell, so long as you have any caster. There also aren't cataclysm spells or special effects for every law in the game, just those laid out below. Law of beasts, law of life, law of death, law of fire, law of heavens, law of life, Law of Light, Law of Metal, Law of Shadow. So just the basic laws, none of the special ones like the Skaven Law or the Law of Death or uh, Law of Vampire. Oh, you got Law of Death, sorry. Law of Vampires or any. None of those like special racial ones you don't get. Um, yeah, they mentioned you don't need Law. Yeah, it seems pretty whack. I think that's really whack, really, because uh, that should be like an advantage. Like if you go in with like eight spellcasters and you got one from every wind, it's like, haha, I've got everything covered. And then some other dude has just got, like, Lore of Skaven, and they can do it, you know? I suppose it's fair for, like, Lore of Vampires and Lore of Skaven users, because they wouldn't have it, they wouldn't ever have an ascendancy otherwise. Um, all units become immune to psychology, gain charge bonuses. Mercy's Monstrous Regiment. It's named after me. Um, strength of the Wild is imbued on one unit's, one unit's weapon damage, armor, piercing, melee attack, and physical resistance. Okay, so you just make one of your units, like, super tough. It's pretty cool. All units perfect vigor. Tree sprouts from the game from the ground as raw life energy flows across the battlefield, providing a huge regeneration aura. Okay. All units gain armor piercing melee damage. This is lower death. Armor piercing melee damage. That's pretty cool. Suffocating dust cloud chokes the life from enemies in a wide area after a short wind up. Okay, pretty cool. Fire. All units get bonus melee attack. Magma storm, massive eruption protrudes from the ground, burning everything in the area of magical fire. Lord of Heavens gets all magic, all missile units deal extra damage and extra armor piercing damage. Um, great Storm develops in the battlefield, annihilating an area with lightning bolts. Cool. 
Law of Light. All units gain immunity to psychology and magical attacks. Cataclysm spell time amok. The flow, flow of time is altered over a portion of the battlefield, improving allies' reload skills, speed, and melee attack. Cool. Law of Metal. All units receive bonus armor and missile resistance. Cataclysm spell Gehenna's Golden Globe. The Great Molden Sphere emerges from the earth and rolls across enemy forces. Cool. Uh, Law of Shadow. All units get faster charge and movement speed. Cataclysm spell Dance of Despair. A haunting tune develops envelops enemies in the area, reduces their leadership, melee defense, and melee attack. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, lots of different spells. Just the standard eight wins, yeah. Um... I think they did it where they say every starting race can use it. Not all lower magic available for starting one with three factions. Yeah, every everyone can use it except Corn, who doesn't have any spellcasters. But yeah, um, what of Corn, the raging against magic as he's doing everything? His forces receive further bonuses to their natural spell resistance in a storm of magic toughening against their natural forces around them, but not the benefits of the ascendant law of the ascendant law, such as anger at the storm that Corn gains the ability to summon demons more easily, allowing for a surprise bloodthirster should their opponent get too cocky. On the flip side, Zeech's mastery of magic means Zeech army in a storm of magic gets to pick what the first law in ascendancy will be, making it harder to tailor their strategy. Uh, making it possible to tailor the strategy. His forces also have a lot of abilities through armies and characters to increase the rate at which their power recharges from reserve, making infinite reserve quite strong. That's all the win That's all for the Winds of Magic today. We'll be back soon. We'll look at the Taste New Laws, coming to Warhammer 3, the spells and effects. Um, okay, so the first thing that strikes me about this is um, this part where um, they say that it caps out at 100 with the next few turns. I want to know, is that every army, like no matter where or what bonuses, always caps out at 100? Um, it doesn't say that, but it doesn't say anything about it not being for every army, right? So that sort of, like, I don't know, in, in equal parts scares me and excites me because like how, like for those of you who watched my stream yesterday, um, we're doing like a foot lord, um, a foot, foot magic, um, sorry, foot wizards. So any wizard character, any spellcaster can't have a mount, it has to be on, on foot. And the reason why I chose to do that in this campaign was to do a self-imposed limitation because um, with spellcasting, quite often in the mid to late game, if you're not playing dwarfs, it ends up being just every battle's the same. You fly out with your Pegasus, you run around in circles around the enemy army, distracting them, or you just drop bombs on them until you kill the whole army with, um, you know, Wind of Death, um, Law of Fire, Law of Shadows, whatever, you know? Um, so how I chose to limit that for myself was to put all my wizards on foot so they can't do that. I just have to at least defend them in a combat, you know? So, but yeah, if they make it 100 wins of magic cap for all armies, that would be another way of um that would be another way of getting rid of that you know it's like everyone's at max only got 100 points you know so you can't ever like just win battles with only magic um unless you're in the storm of magic but then there's the fear part of it that seems a bit on the weak side you know what i mean like especially if you're a really magic based faction like vampire counts or um or you know if you've got uh yeah it's very low cap that's right yeah especially if you're vampire counts or someone that relies like super heavily on magic you know um they did also mention exploring the battlefield for wins once you run out well did they for reserves Where's that part where they said that? So what about in battle? The pools, the reserves pool represents the amount of magic you have to draw on through. Slowly removes from reserve to power pool. If the reserves run out, you need to either make do with it or find a power source of magic. Okay, yeah, so you can get it from the battlefield. So yeah, the, as soon as they said on the battlefield, the first thing I thought was like a magical pool or like a holy tree or like a magical stone with a little AOE around it that you can stand in or something like that. So like focus places of power that you could take to get magic. Um, that would like be pretty cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think these, yeah, like if there's a certain place on the map that you need to hold, if you want to be able to unlo unload magic power, that would be pretty awesome, I reckon. That would be pretty cool. It just make it so much more like thematic and tied to the the game, and not something you can just easily just cheese out, you know, whenever you want, kind of thing. Um, arcane conduit, yeah, that might be another thing. They don't say anything about like arcane conduit. Um, I think they did say something about 
heroes adding reserves pools, but that's like the plus 15 that you start off with, not like not like Arcane Conduit. They don't, I don't think they said anything about Arcane Conduit or like active abilities that you use um, afterwards. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe with Arcane Conduit, every time you punch that, you could like slowly get, you know, five or six more points. So if you've got like 10 guys with Arcane Conduit, you can slowly rebuild your reserves permanently with it. Maybe, maybe. Um, if they reduce the cost of spells, that would do a lot to make things like Purple Sun better since you won't be out of, won't be out of your Vortex until the regen ticks up. Yeah, they're also going to do some stuff now that, to increase the power of magic spells as well. I think, um, yeah, I think Legend was talking about it a bit on his um, Zeech video or on his, maybe on his video about um, Ithay or something. I can't remember. Um Good thing now is your starting mana is consistent, not random. Yeah, yeah, this is still randomized, they said, but it's not like 100% random. It's, yeah. Um, it's been really hot in here, so I'm just going to turn on my air conditioning, guys. Sorry, one sec. Too much passion. Too much Warhammer passion going on here. Looking at this, each ritual draining abilities might also allow you to drain actual winds from the enemy instead of just slowing their regeneration. Yeah, yeah, that specific basically just straight out said that. Said that you could just uh, res you could just drain um, drain power out of the out of your enemies with some certain abilities and stuff. Winds of magic has a meaningful impact on other demons you fight. Yeah, that was an interesting thing. That I thought was a bit weird, like it was how I was saying that like the winds of magic affects um you know the different like like here, so saying uh, okay, yeah, so this is yeah, okay, that's interesting. Okay, so so these buffs are on the campaign, right? So um so it's not like if you cast some spells, then all of a sudden your um, Nurgle melee defense goes down or your speed goes down in the battle. It's like it's it's based on the campaign the campaign winds of magic, not your in battle winds of magic. So if on the campaign you've got a hundred winds of magic, then your melee defense will be super high. Even if in since you know in the game in the battle you cast your spells and stuff, that won't go down because that's based on your campaign stats. That's how I'm reading it anyway. It doesn't explicitly say that, but I think that's what they mean. This is all talking about like, you know, permanent, like not permanent, but like the way it'll be sort of permanent while you're on the bat, on the, you know. Zinch will hard counter cast the doom stacks. Yeah, maybe. You just go around and like extract all of the magic power out of all their wizards. <laughs> It'd be pretty cool. There's no, ch no mention of corn miscast chance for enemies here. Is it mentioned elsewhere? No, monkey man food. This isn't really about that. This is just about the way the winds of magic works. It's very small scope type of thing. It's only mentioning other things that kind of relate to winds of magic and stuff. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if corn still has some like anti-magic stuff. Um, I wouldn't if they don't have it as built into their units and their casters and stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if they have like items that can drop for them that give you like miscast chance and stuff. Um, yeah, I would I mean that seems like a pretty cool thing to have for corn, but um, and yeah, just and resistance like the color of corn just gives you straight out spell resistance as well. Um, I wonder if corn will also have more like ward save items because they're getting rid they've gotten rid of magic resistance. They've only got spell resistance now. So if somebody's got a magic weapon, magic weapons essentially will just cut through all of your physical resistance style toughness. Um, and there is no magic resistance. So the only thing that'll stop it is ward save. So ward save works against both physical weapons and magical weapons, but physical resistance only works against physical weapons. So that's like a fundamental change to the way the damage is calculated. Um, 
And um, yeah, so corn's got going to have spell resistance, right? Obviously. Um, but I wonder if they'll also have ward save, maybe. Could be interesting. Like, like just say, like I would expect demons to have physical resistance. Um, but yeah, it'd be cool if corn demons actually got ward save instead of instead of physical resistance. But I don't know. Nah, that's yeah. Nah, I don't know. Whatever. Just ignore me. That was just I was just thinking out loud. I don't know what would be good or what would be bad. I think that the whole aspect of balancing that sort of the damage values and everything is just really complex. How you going, Merlon? Welcome, welcome. Hey, Kiva and Chips. Welcome, welcome. But um, yeah. It's not, uh, I mean, you know, just a little tidbit about Wemma 3. Um, yeah, a few interesting things there. But, you know, as with all the other things, it's like not coming out for ages. So it's like not really not really much we can do with this information right now. Um, there is supposed to be some big news coming next week. Um, I suspect that will be Ogres because Simone did actually announce Ogres last week. But then he was like, oh, whoops, I meant something else so i'm guessing that was they were going to release ogres info last week but then they changed their minds so it kind of makes sense that that means now the ogre is going to get released this week not sorry not ogres released this week but ogre information released this week um and um if ogres are the pre-order then i would guess we will find out you know about that next week um or if they're not the pre-order, I guess we'll find out that next week probably too. So yeah, so next week could be actually a good and interesting news week. Um, unless they announce that the pre-order is going to be playable in Warhammer 2, it's still kind of not really relevant, you know, until after Christmas. So it's like, yeah. But if they announce that the pre-order is going to be playable in Warhammer 2, then it's like, game on, boys. <laughs> Meat's back on the menu, literally. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I'm excited, but I'm ready to be disappointed. Um, we still haven't seen any hints that they're actually going to make Ogre Kingdoms playable in Wyoming 2, so I'm kind of waiting to be disappointed for them to say there's not going to be any pre-order race in Wyoming 2, but I wish they would tell us, like, yeah, I don't know. I'm still holding out hope that Ogres will be playable in Wyoming 2, because if they weren't going to be, you would think they would tell us early, because... Otherwise, there's going to be a huge backlash. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's better to not tell us till later because then people will whinge to long for longer. You know? I guess, yeah. I don't know. I'm not really sure. I'm not really a marketing person, you know? Probably somebody who's into marketing would know better. But yeah, like, do you get, are you going to get more backlash if you tell people now that the ogres aren't going to be playable in Warhammer 2? And then they have, you know, like, if you know, if you, if you let people think they might be playable in Warhammer 2 now, and then at the last minute you're like, oh, no, they're not going to be playable to Warhammer 3, so you just got to wait. Or, you know, well, people get really pissed off when you say that. Or if you say now, just let you know, guys, warning you in advance, ogres aren't going to play Warhammer 2. And then everyone starts grumbling and grumbling. And then over the months and months, that just like builds up more and more anger, you know? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> either It could go either way. Um, I'm guessing it's, yeah, I'm guessing from the marketing point of view, it's probably is better to just fuck everyone around and not tell anyone what's going on until the last minute and then be like, oh, no ogres in Warhammer 3. But then, like a month later, be like, "Oh, but Warhammer Three is coming out next month, so it's all fine," and everyone will forget about it. You know, that's probably, maybe that's what they're going to do. But yeah. Anyways, did anyone else have any other super exciting things I wanted to point out about this um, Winds of Magic um, expose? Hey, thanks, Legend. You're a legend. Much appreciated. Um. My uh, the um the the god of cheese has blessed my video, my guys. I asked um I asked the I asked Jeff the god of cheese to bless bless my Belagar video, and he has he has blessed it. Uh, he said it was a good guide. Man, he's a man of few words, but there but that just makes them more valuable. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. Um, all right, guys, I'm gonna fuck off this uh this this uh, information now and get back to our dwarf guide our dwarf campaign. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot, um, Liz, for letting me know about that news. That Anyone who wants a newsman badge, that's how you get one. If I'm like happily doing my campaign, blissfully unaware that there's any news come out, and then you tell me like live on stream, Mercy, there's some Warhammer news. You need to drop everything and go and check that shit out. Then that's how you win your newsman badge, and you get to have your Aquamarine name on the Discord, which is, of course, completely valueless, but it comes with great honor. 
Which is important if you're a dwarf or a Bretonian. Excuse me. Sorry. Just need to fix up my Discord. My, uh, get rid of that. Marine equals aquamarine. Space Marine. Exactly. Space Marines also care a lot about honor. I like honor. I'm not sure how much I've got, but I try to protect the bit that's left. Revenge incarnate. All right, guys. So just before we got so rudely interrupted by Creative Assembly dropping that awesome infos on us, um, we got um, we were about to fight the ultimate battle against Skaven Blight. This is what we've all been waiting for. Um, just keep. I'm, I'm really gun shy that I'm gonna just. I'm gonna screw up again because I screwed up that other part. But I think we're good. Let's let's get into it. Are they at war with anyone else? Can we manipulate? I mean, as much as I dislike being all sneaky and stuff, there's some way we can manipulate this situation diplomatically. Oh yeah, we can sell a war to this guy. Why go to war for free? We'll uh, take payment from you to... Oh, actually, maybe we'll just take non-aggression. Cool. All right, we've got a little bit of... We forced them into an agreement with our hardball yes. dwarf diplomacy. You have a proposal? Weak willed no, humans gave in. Not. <clears throat> Lord of uh, what are you going to do after taking Skaven Blight? After taking Skaven Blight, we're going to farm Oath Gold, my, my bro. We're going to get that sweet, sweet Oath Gold. Uh, and then Belagar's going to go up and beat the shit out of uh, Skarsnik. I mean, there's a lot more details to it to that. There's a lot of fine, fine detail, but um, but that's the that's the the gist of it. Revenge incarnate. <laughs> By the damage grown. Actually, um, after we get our diplomacy running, take my money too while you're at it. I've done an ROS build with Ungram. It has a lot of, it's a lot of fun being a one-man bowling ball. <laughs> nice. Hey, my lover. Thanks a lot for the super chat, my man. I will take your money. Thank you. I'll add it to my huge pile. Um, yeah, I've got a, I've got a little bit of a pile now. I've probably got a, a nearly enough to do a modest upgrade of the PC. Not that, not like to get like a monster. I've been doing YouTube now for a bit over a year. Um, uh, I've only actually no, I've only been monetized. I think I've been monetized for about eight months. But um, but yeah, so I've actually got a little bit of a stack now. Um, so yeah, I was planning on probably spending all of that on a new computer so we can. Um, Hopefully, fix some of the right. Yeah, right now my disc. My, right now my um, OBS is saying um, overloaded, <laughs> so it's struggling to process. I think my graphics card's struggling to process the information fast enough to upload it. Um, <clears throat> do agent action with the Runesmith to try to get movement follower after Skaven Blade. Very good idea, Z Z Z Do I say Zand? Art is it like Zand Artanus or is it Z and Artanus? Um. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, I was actually thinking that exact thing when I was doing the guide, but again, I didn't want to, because I already covered that stuff in the Dwarf Follower Guide, I didn't want to double up on it. But yeah, that was another one of the little details that I wanted to add in. Um, anyway, so the, my, the thing I'm thinking about right now is diplomacy-wise, once I get these diplomacy buffs, uh, if you've watched the video, you know that we're going to go out and dwarf tax everybody for like heaps of extra income. I'm just trying to decide if I send um, Felix out to if i send felix out early i could either send felix to bretonia to get dwarf tax on them or i could send him to empire to discover carrot cadron get early well if we want we can get early confederation on them and dwarf tax the empire <clears throat> and then and then circle back down and go get thoric discovered or we can just send him i mean thorgrim sorry or we can just send him straight well, straight to like Thorgrim and then down to Thorek. I 
I think I'll just leave him in there for now. Xandard Hannes. Okay, cool. I'll stop. I'll stop awkwardly struggling with that. No one. Kill him. Oh, Lizard Rockies. This Iraqi Rangers got deleted. There we go. We're back again. All right, got some renames up in there. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. I just, I just, I think I won't. I'm maybe I won't overthink it. I'll just leave him in there for now. We'll worry about it later. All right, first actual manual battle of the campaign. Pretty exciting. Um, now, if we spread them out and we like did like evasive maneuvers with them and stuff like that, we probably could avoid getting them all wiped out. You know, as long as you don't clump up. As long as you don't clump up your units, um, you know, they probably won't all get killed by the nuke. But, um... But, um... But, yeah, we don't need them, really. Like, they would be sort of useful for the battle, but we don't really need them, so... I'm just gonna take our infantry off the, off the battlefield. Um... Yeah, the rangers, um... I think the rangers can get dwellers... Not dwellers below, menace below, but um, we're we'll just hopefully that because they're far enough back they won't get targeted, so it'll be be sweet. And let's do it. Um, yeah, target got trick on the ground there because oh shit. Yeah, so just I might just put him into melee mode actually because he's annoying because he. Because he doesn't, he's not a melee guy, so he doesn't um, target the door the same way that everybody else does. Master engineer. All right, we should be getting the menace below pretty soon. Meant for him. That's cool. They can't run as fast as he can, though, I don't think. Plan Rats uh, 38. Nah, he's faster than him. He's boy, too. That's cool. So, Gopro can just outrun them. Then he'll, like, turn up here with, like, a heap of them in, in train. Um, the only bad thing might be if um, he gets nuked. If he gets a direct hit on him with a nuke. That was weird. I thought it was, like, spinning around. Check that out! What the fuck is that? That was so weird. If you get the, if you, if you click on the little arrow that points to them, it just like spins around weirdly. That's super weird. I don't know what the fuck that's about. No, we'll just wait for Gotrek. I wonder if these guys are just gonna time out. Oh, that's a fresh bunch. They just spawned who looks at it. I yeah, I want to get Ungren and make... Oh, is that the nuke? No, it's uh, Dwellers. Uh, I mean, Menace Below, yeah. Okay, so now we've got um, Belligar's inactive. He's got his Spite Rune activated because he's um, in, in combat. So now it's time to do... There's a nuke blows up the because we're underneath the doorway then you can't actually hit us even if it did land directly on us it's just the, the the central area is so tiny it'll probably miss even if it lands right in the middle of everybody but there is a slight chance that it can just 
kill one or two of you guys like I did in my um, one of my tests. I did, I've done this battle like about, I don't know, a shitload of times. There was only like one time that it actually got anyone. Um, so it's pretty, you know, pretty safe, but... We just want to drop the room of um, Wrath and Ruin um, every time it comes off cooldown. Um, between the between that and this um, instant damage coming up from um, damage dealt from Belligar just being his, his, that's his spite room, just killing everything around, just melting everything within um, a 40 meter radius. That's the radius there. So you see it's just, it's just killing everything at once, which is pretty cool. It's very powerful. Uh, especially on tanky characters like that you know if it was like some like no armor or elf or something then it wouldn't be as good but because these guys have just got that staying power you know they can just <clears throat> sit in here for ages and um and just soak it up and just melt everybody so yeah it's pretty cool I'll turn this up let's speed up really. um if you plan on hiring thanes to big for money please keep in mind you lose more than in their recruitment cost and upkeep then you gain immediately yeah yeah that's right but i mean the earlier that you make the contact the quicker that you can start getting the money back because once you discover the factions then you can get rid of the thanes again and um and then you can still keep asking them for more money like every six or seven turns or whatever it is how what how how fast does the how fast does the money reset happen um uh, when you can ask for money again Yeah, that's why I was kind of thinking maybe we should use Felix to do it because Felix will is free, right? We don't really need him in our army. He doesn't really serve any particular purpose. Um, but he's a free agent, so we could send him around and um, get him to like discover other stuff. We could also send the engineer. We don't really need the engineer in this early part, but later on once we get the rangers, the engineer is actually pretty cool. Um, plus, we need at least four heroes in the in the army. Um, but yeah, so we could get rid of the, the engineer. Oh no, we need the engineer because he can stalk. We could get rid of the runesmith, but the runesmith's, um, you know, wrath and ruin is pretty useful for um, just clearing out chaff and stuff. Um, even though we could get by without it, by just melting stuff with the wrath with the spite rune, like the wrath and ruin's pretty good. Mm. Engineer gives campaign movement. Thanes are least important. Now we need the Thanes for. Um, we need one Thane to be stealth, and we need another Thane to tank. So we need both Thanes, and we need the engineer because he's stealth as well. I mean, I mean, we probably you probably don't really need them to be stealth. Like you could n do it with just no, st you know, with just the ranger stealth and all the heroes visible. Doesn't really make that much difference, I guess. But it is kind of cool, like the way that Vasily does it, like having the second second rank of heroes stealthed so that they don't immediately pull aggro. And then if anything does lose aggro on the main tanks, they can then pick them up. You know, so they're like the second row of heroes is invisible at first, so they don't pull anything. So everything just clumps around your front two guys. But then if something gets loose, then they can they can pick it up. So that's kind of cool. Whereas if they don't have stealth, then the things will peel automatically without there being like, even if there's no reason, they'll still peel off the front tanks and go onto um, onto the back row. No, you know, just start. Well, not, so they won't go straight for the rangers because they're invisible. They'll just start like kind of randomly scouting, you know. How's uh, how's he going now? Five sixty one. Uh, yeah, it's probably could get it up higher than that. Doesn't actually do anything in there, I don't think. <clears throat> Once Ranger Army's up, Rinsmith's no longer needed. Yeah, the Rinsmith's no longer really needed, but the good thing about the Runesmith is if you've got the Runesmith, then you can then the Rangers aren't really needed either. 
You know what I mean? Like, I can always just do this same thing. I can just put all my heroes in the corner of the map and then just kill everything with by melting them and dropping Wrath and Ruin on them until everything's dead, you know? And I can just retreat all the rangers off the battlefield. Um, so, you know, you've got the options. That's why, that's why, I, like, I did read that, yeah, you said you don't need the, um, need the Runesmith, but I just feel like flexibility-wise, it's kind of cool having both, you know? Hey, how's it going, Waifu? How you going, man? Welcome, welcome. Um, I don't really need to do this, but I'm just trying to get as many kills as possible as I can on Belagardus because I just don't want to get lots of kills on him. That's a little bit. Anyway. I kind of always don't want to use the Wrath and Ruins so I can get more kills on Belagard. Fine. <laughs> I've got tricks chasing him, you know, off there. so far. Not bad. Not bad. Do you get vision on my ranges? Oh yeah, I don't think routing units don't get vision, do they? Or do they? No, they no, they do. They do. I think they just didn't get close enough. I wonder if routing units have reduced vision range. I'm sure. How are we going? All melee units gone? Yeah. So now we can just run over there and just chase everybody. Rounding ones get vision, but shattered ones shouldn't. Oh, that might be what I was. Yeah, shattered, shattered don't. Yeah, that might be it. Yeah, because I was thinking of like I feel like I've gotten not gotten discovered by routing units, and I have gotten discovered like you know both. But yeah, probably the ones that didn't discover were shattered. That would make sense. So we can basically just herd them into that corner. They'll start running away from us. <clears throat> they just cast a spell on me, dicks. Point. All right, how many we go? 686. Ah, weak sauce. I got I got 800 on one of my uh, test runs. Hey, Messi, I saw Legends Twitter post about your two-turn rune of spite and decided to come check you out. Oh, hey, Nico, you know, thanks a lot, man, and thanks uh, thanks a lot to Legend for for blessing our video with his uh, with his uh, blessing with his Twitter blessing. Um, yeah, that was uh, really nice of him. See, so he, he's still even though he's not he doesn't stream anymore, he's still. Uh, is still the the big the great patron of the Total War Science. Not sorry, not that he doesn't stream anymore. It's just he's, even though he's taking a break from streaming, he's still always watching. He's always always watching. The next one, then. Crushed.
I'm glad it's just as cheesy here. Oh yeah, there's a fair bit of cheese that goes on here, for sure. And uh, today we've got a bit of uh, bit of grudging going on as well. Uh, do I want to go for a sack? Maybe. I can do. Can I do a sack and then do a loot and occupy as well? Or can I only do a loot and occupy if I? This is a bit of a mental blank for some reason now. Like, if I sack it now and then I attack it again, will it still give me the option to do... Because I want the minus 30 from the loot and occupy, but I also want the money. Can I take the sack now, get the money, and then loot and occupy again? Uh, I'll just take the loot and occupy, actually, because if it's got a barracks set, I want to keep it. Nah, it doesn't have barracks anyway. Shit. Oh, well. I don't know if I want to build a... I kind of want to build a barracks here, I think. I've got a student. That's nice. Another student. Nice. It still gives you the option, can sack loot and occupy. Yeah, well, in this situation, I should have done that. I should have sacked it and then done loot and occupy, because that would have given me exactly what I wanted. Except for sometimes there's a barracks here, and I kind of want to be able to recruit uh, warriors. Um, but I can't, because it didn't give me the didn't give me the barracks. But, um, yeah. Scrap. My builder barracks here. Just temporarily could be good. Revenge incarnate. Good senseless violence. Mm, I don't know if we need to do that or not. But... Armor is for maidens. Okay. Onwards to death! Where's the slaughter? Oh shit, we can't ambush now. I just screwed up now. I think if he can see him, he might ambush me. Restart time. Shut up, Dash Dash. Um, oh, what do you think, John? Do you think he'll? Do you reckon he's going to go for me because he's not an ambush? I kind of think he will. He'll go up. He'll kill Gotrek in ambush, and then he'll just retreat again. I don't think because if I think I think if I put Gotrek back in here, day. yeah, I can't afford to lose Gotrek. I want uh, see. So basically, going to miss out on that thirty oath gold now, uh, which is pretty brutal. But yeah, it's fine. Whatever, that is fine. You just have to sack Tavari for three turns to compensate for this grievous error. I know. I failed. I don't know. It's probably for the best, actually, because even I had gone into the ambush and then. No, the, no, the ambush is good because. I think I said in the video that it was dangerous to do the ambush, but I think it's actually not dangerous because they can't see me. Like, as long as I'm not in range of these heroes, if I was like there, they can't see me. So they won't go, but they won't go there because they don't want to mess with Belga. So it would have been pretty much safe. But because I moved too much and fucked it up, but yeah. Anyway, whatever. You get it. You get it. <clears throat> yeah, 
Yeah, I like the Lunar Rune of Slowness. It's definitely got some utility. I go, I max out, I go for maxing out the, um... I want him to have Stalk eventually. Yeah, whatever, it's fine. <clears throat> oh, I get 60 for that. Nice. Um, yeah, I don't really need that. I mean, it's sort of, you know, whatever. Good, good item, I guess, but yeah. whatever's. We don't need it. Um, so. We want the rune of. I think we want the rune of fear. It's probably my favorite to first one to get. And then. Well, actually, if we went like. Th if we got three runes of luck, that would make. Mm, that would be pretty good, actually. You might get the Rune of Fear and the Rune of Luck. Uh, but everything else bypasses armor because of high AP, the most fictional... What? <laughs> what are you talking about, the key and chips? Does reviving a faction reset the disposition towards you? No, I don't think it does, no. Um, yeah, I think we'll go for the Runes of Luck, because they're actually particularly good on these guys, especially once Beligar gets up to... Oh, I guess, you know... Yeah, especially once Beligar gets up high enough to get the plus 10 physical resist. We'll actually put one of the Fear Runes on Beligar, because he doesn't have Fear naturally, whereas all the Ghost Heroes do. And we'll give the two Thanes... Actually, no, he doesn't need that because he's already got, he already causes fear. Um, and we want to stack more good stuff on him. These sort of non frontline guys don't have as much cool stuff. So we'll give them, they don't have as many cool things to put on them. So we'll give them the runes of fear. Okay, um, yeah, so I think I'm going to build a, build a Dwarf Warrior building there, so we can start building some Dwarf Warriors for Gotrick. Still got a few turns before we have to worry about the Rebellion. Uh, how much growth we got? 11 turns, still got quite a time. Excuse me. <clears throat> So, greetings. Pretty sure once we get the second technology, these guys will accept the trade. And I think Tal Halson will as well. But we may as well just wait. Yeah, it's just not, you don't really have to anxiously check the diplomacy every turn like I'm doing. Um, I'm just being a bit of a nervous Nelly. They already caused fear. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, I'm equipping them so that they get the minus three leadership to everything in the local region. Um, I, it's it's not, I'm not putting it on them particularly. Like, it's just because I've got to put them on somebody. And the only person I've got that doesn't cause fear is Belagar. So, um, yeah, so I've given one to Belagar. Um, and, um, and the other two I just put on random ghost heroes, you know. Yeah, I mean, I could put them on um, Godric and um, Felix, but I'm going to split up the two armies soon, so didn't want to screw around. Yeah, I can't think of any reason, like any situation where I would actually use this. Yeah, no, they're all sort of useless. All right. 
Beast Slayer. Why not? Yeah, so we can't actually um Can't actually get go trick in there for the extra grudge, unfortunately. But we can get him in to support the battle. Demon Slayer. Belly Gar Iron Hammer. Oh, I didn't recruit units. Should have recruited, um. Oh wow, we're gonna lose like everything. Yeah, I really should have recruited some units last turn. Fuck. God damn you, Dash Dash. Uh. God. Uh, I guess we're gonna have to fight this one manually. I didn't want to, because I didn't want to recruit miners, but then I forgot that I needed to recruit, because otherwise we'd have to fight this battle manually. And I'm not even sure how we're going to win this battle. Like, I can, yeah, this might be a bit bad. Hey, Dash Dash. Um, yeah, I forgot to recruit last turn, so now I have to fight this battle and probably take Highness casualties. I don't want, I just don't want to lose my two ranger units. Um, hide my units in the forest. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's do that. Thanks, Carlos. Um, I kind of feel like we should sort of camp in the corner and then we can just route the units straight off the field. Like if we hide, yeah, if we go over here sort of thing and then we fight there. Oh, we're attacking there, aren't we? So they're not going to really come for us. Would it be better to... Oh, you mean we need to invite the Border Princes into some wars, you reckon? Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah, thanks, Dash Dash. That's good. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm digging it. But they do like us, so we should be able to pull them into a war with Ica Claw, hopefully. Oh, actually, that won't help us too much because we're about to kill Ica Claw. Hmm. We might be able to do it. What if we go over here and then send the rangers in to like shoot them a bit? Ah, uh, it's alright. They'll get into a war with um They'll get into a war with some orcs or something eventually. Just gotta stave it off for a couple of turns to make sure they don't declare war right now. Taslin, yeah, Taslin can betray you, yeah. Yeah, like later on, maybe like turn 30 or something. Turn 20, turn 30. Yeah, I usually don't have a problem with, with Border Princes, but yeah, I think it's because they normally get attacked by one of the Greenskin factions. But yeah, I think that you're right there. If we just, if we don't watch it, if we, if they never get, you know, if they never get attacked by the Greenskin factions, then we could be in trouble. Hmm.
Alright, so how's about what's next week's Total War Warhammer 3 reveal? Hey Kiva, I'm pretty sure it'll be Ogre Kingdoms. Well, not sure, I'm not sure at all, but I suspect it'll be Ogre Kingdoms. Yeah, it's like I feel like it's relatively rare that Border Princes will attack you because they pretty much always get attacked by the Greenskins, but if you're yeah, if you seem pretty, you know, I, w I mean, if you've had that experience, then I wouldn't, you know, I'm not surprised. But yeah, I just don't, yeah, I don't normally worry about it because it doesn't happen very often to me. But maybe I should be worrying about it. Uh, I usually get traded with them pretty easily. But we shall see, we shall see. Okay, so... I'm thinking, um, hey, Cathal Owens, thanks for subscribing, man, much appreciated. Yeah, I'm hoping that this video will, um, oh, thanks, Lord Black and Black Forest, welcome, thanks for subscribing, man. Yeah, I'm hoping that, um, this new video will, um, get us a bit closer to 10,000, maybe. Not straight away, but, you know, maybe, like, over the course of the next few weeks or whatever. Yeah, I really enjoyed making that video, hey, and it was really satisfying to make it and feel really kind of proud of it. Like, I was really happy with how it worked out. Um, I did, like, it's not like it was luck or anything, like everything that about it, I planned it and I executed it, you know, and like, it, yeah, that was that was actually really satisfying, you know. Um, and yeah, so I'd like to do that again, but at the same time, it took like nearly two months to make that video, you know. Um, and it's like... Fuck, that's a long time. You know, it's a long time in YouTube terms to spend on one video. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm a bit torn. Like, on the one hand, it's like it was really satisfying to do a video that I was actually really proud of and happy with. But then on the other hand, it's like, fuck, it is a long time to spend on one video. Come on. Did we get him? All I need them to do is to, like, not die. But... Are these guys all invisible? Yeah. Maybe I should just route them off the field. like one every six months or so yeah i think that's yeah i think that's pretty much what i do do you know i do one big one and then it just like ruins me <laughs> it's like it just drains my soul and then i just like can't do i can't handle that for taking another big one for a while um yeah so i probably will do i'll try i'm probably going to try and do a fo another follower guide next because they're a lot easier and um they it won't it won't do as well but oh man like the follower guides won't do as well, but they'll um, be a lot faster to make, and, um, and they're still. I think they're still worthwhile. Like I feel like the follower guides are still worthwhile, good content. Like I'm still proud to make them and stuff. I don't feel like it's shit content or anything. I just just know that they're not as you know not as popular. It won't be as successful kind of thing. It's like, even if all of these guys route, it's fine. As long as we win the battle.
So like these guys should be able to kill everything by themselves, given enough time. Yeah, maybe I should just throw them off the field. It's fine. Where is he? There he is. As you say, steady. Ooh. He needs to get away. Unfortunate because they he's mainly killing his own guys, I'm pretty sure. Pretty go. Yeah, no, we're not really getting much damage on him. Yeah, he's screwing up well. Specialist, 50 melee defense. What about Pika Claw, 61 melee defense? Okay, yeah. So they're gonna kill the other lord quicker. The other hero, I mean. They kill him quicker. Yeah, he's nearly dead already. Fuck, they're wrecking my plane. This is a lot rougher than it would have been if I had applied this the two other those other fucking units. Get him. Happy with all this, must say. Hey, welcome, hey young. Hey, look at Shit. I speak, my lords. 
This is a rough, uh, rough battle. Yeah, I wonder um, if the Winds of Magic stuff will have how that'll affect Skaven. In Wyvern 3, yeah, that'd be weird. I mean, it, oh, yeah, it didn't mention anything in there but about Skaven, but yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they, they interact somehow with the Winds of Magic stuff. It would make sense. This kick pretty hard there. That's pretty rough. I have to have a barracks into Burrow. Be handy if we could um, recruit some. I don't think we can really catch anything. Beligar is too slow. Gotrick can technically catch him, but I doubt he's going to do too much damage. <clears throat> Does Iron Brow get his ancestor hero? Does AI Amber? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets the. Um, yeah, if your AI plays Billy Guy, he gets the ancestor heroes for sure. Well, he got deleted. Oh wait up! He's still. He's still colorful, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter. He's still gonna be dead. At least you did some blood damage from the blasting charges. Yeah. The blasting charges did not help at all. I mean, they did they did help, I guess, better than if they weren't blasting charges, but yeah, I think I would have definitely preferred to have the warriors. Victorious! But alive! My quest is doom! Um, yeah, I'm going to take the, um, I think I'm just going to occupy it and get rid of it claw right now because I don't want to have to deal with this whole situation any longer than I have to. Billy Gow Iron Hammer. Good, senseless violence. To the next one, then! Gotrek Gernishan! You could call getting embarrassed because his army ran despite nobody being able to take the six dwarves left behind. Exactly. Hey, Pat Patrick Bialk, thanks for subscribing, man. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, thanks to anyone. Uh, thanks for again to Legend for um, for retweeting about my video, and thanks for anyone who's who's joining us because of um, because of Legend's recommendation. Much much appreciated. All right. Well, that's that's like just what just happened now. Is now that's like the worst thing that's ever happened in any, like any of my like I've played this 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 opening like just to make that video. I played this opening many many times, 
and yeah, because I didn't recruit, I should have recruited three units, three extra units from Scaven Blight. Then I could have auto resolved that and not, not lost any units probably, and um, which is what I normally always do. But because I didn't, um, yeah, I got fucked. Basically, um, yeah, that was pretty rough. Now. I don't know if I should move out in case he sieges and then we don't get any replenishment. What? What am I? I might actually double recruit. I might recruit an extra lord and double recruit here just to make sure that we're not going to get in trouble anymore. It's pretty expensive. Um, pretty expensive um, insurance, but. Um, Fuck it, as they say. Yeah, so we got four miners there, we got three miners here. He should attack us again next turn. He's getting no replenishment, so this stuff should all be kind of shit. Mercy is the legend of the beard. Yeah, I am legend of the beard. I gotta make a coffee and then I'll I'll come back and I'll show you my cosplay. I've got some cosplays planned for today. It's not very good cosplay. It's very low effort cosplay, but um, I'll, we'll see. You guys can judge. You guys can be the judge of how good you think it is. Sixty-seven. How many turns we got? Five turns. Yeah. So I feel like we can screw around here for another like two turns, maybe. Then we got to really start heading back up. We don't. As I said, we don't really need to worry about this. Oh no! Here we go. They're in a war already, so we're sweet. As long as they're in a war with like one other faction, then you don't have to worry about it. If we could get him to join in war against Ica Claw, though, like if we get anyone to join against Ica Claw, that'd be really good because he's weak. He's going to die in a second anyway. And then that'll give us like free relations. Again, even though we don't really need the relations anyway. But... Look at these guys. Yeah, so there we go. Now we've got a nice relationship with these guys. These guys are another bunch of dudes that randomly will declare war on you sometimes. Cool, oh, cool, cool. All right, good. Um, I'm just gonna get a coffee. Sorry, guys, I do this sometimes. For those of you who aren't familiar with the stream, this will be we'll be switching to chair stream for a couple of minutes now. Uh, it won't be too long. I'm just gonna quickly get a coffee and I'll come back.
What, what, what do you think? I look at iron ammo. <laughs> sort of? No? No. Yeah, no, it's pretty weak source. This is actually a uh, Mexican wrestler mask. <laughs> so it's like, it's got vaguely the right colors, but yeah. <laughs> Not really that cool. But yeah, I feel like, you know, gonna go like this a bit, you know. Put this part down a bit. Yeah, it's like Belligar, Belligar Iron Hammer. Reclaim the whole, no. Reclaim, no, nah, fuck. Okay, I lost it. All right. Luchador, Luchador Iron Hammer, that's right. <laughs> oh dear. I won that by eating um, a 1.2 kilo burrito in one sitting. It was meant to be a one kilo burrito, but you could make it. You, like you could um, choose your toppings yourself. And like whenever I go to whenever I go to the burrito place, like they'd be like, "Oh, would you like be? Would you like if you say like what you want at the start? Like if you say you want like beans, rice, and pork, then they'll just put like a little bit in each, you know. But if you say like, "Oh yeah, I want beans, thanks," and then they put the beans in, they put like quite a lot of beans. So they think you're gonna get a bean burrito, and then you'd be like, "Oh yeah," and I'll get rice as well. So then they'll put some rice on, right? And then you'd be like, "Yeah," and pork as well. And so then you get beans, rice, and pork, right? <laughs> so this is my like special way I used to order my burritos. And, um, and yeah, so I was actually for an eating competition. So it was like a massive burrito. There was like a one, one kilo burrito, but because I, because of the way that I ordered it, because that's how I usually always order my, my normal burrito because I like, I like beans, rice and pork. And I used to just be a greedy pig. So I'd always try to get more anyway. So I didn't think about it, but I did it when I, when I did the eating competition. So I actually had this, like, like two of my other mates did it as well. And their burritos were like this. And my burrito was like busting out like this. It was like at least. 20% larger um yeah that's the only time I've ever done an eating competition it was actually it yeah it was actually pretty interesting like I've never really had that experience before like because I, I ate about one third of it and I was fucking full I was completely full you know and then like after that I had to just keep just jamming it down just keep eating it like a machine like you know don't care about your feelings don't care about the pain just like keep just eat 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 and yeah and I thought I was going to throw up a few times, um, but I just did it. I just ate it all, <laughs> and then I just like staggered back to work. And I won. I won the Luchador mask, so it's pretty cool. We need to start a GoFundMe for a proper Viking helmet. Yeah, for sure. Should wear that from now on and change your entire personal persona to Luchador Bellicar and only play Dowie campaign from there on. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Alistair, welcome, welcome. Min maxing the burritos exactly. <laughs> Uh, all right, now, what do we do if we... I really want to get this auto happening so I don't have to fight any more battles, for fuck's sake. Um, yeah, I'm about to... Uh, I don't want to... I sort of... Do I, wanna, I don't really want to wipe him out, but... I feel like we're going to take worse casualties if I actually fight it than I'm going to... What's he got left? How come these are still full health? Fuck. No, at least they don't have the, um... Oh, no, they still got them as well, yeah, fuck. <laughs> have you read the new magic? Yeah, sorry, Luan, you missed it. Yeah, if you go back to, um, one hour into the stream, that's where we talked all about it. Um, if you have anything interesting you want to say about it, I'm happy to chat, but uh, I don't want to go through the whole thing again, you know what I mean? Because we just spent like an hour talking about it before. Um, but yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. I mean, it's like, it's just, I don't know, all these little tidbits, you know, they don't really, um... Um... Yeah, they're little, oh. Hey, Timothy Robert, thanks for subscribing, man, much appreciated. Um, what are we going to do here? Are we going to fight it or are we going to auto? I really want to auto because I want to kind of start getting the campaign moving, you know, start doing, like, start getting going. Fuck it, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, shit. Okay, took some casualties. That was heavy, heavy damage. Oh, well, that's fine. Whatever. Done. And he's still alive, so we can beat him up some more. Excellent. Ah, 
No, he moved back closer to make it more convenient for us to kill him next turn. Fantastic. Rival power comes to parley, demanding a change in your mutual Auto it for progress. Yeah, just get it over and done with. Um, Kazarak One Eye wants two hundred gold. How about I give you fuck all, and not only that, I'm going to come over there and punch you in the fucking head. That's 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 what I'd say to that. The gall, like the sheer gall on this beast, man. Um, no, actually, we won't we won't go over there and punch him in the head because we've got other business to attend to. I think he's wiped out um, Estalia, though. I'm a bit concerned about that. I was hoping that Johan would be able to come back from the dead. I'm trying to think of some way that we could go over there and kill Kazrak. Kazrak the big balls. I know he's got some big balls, doesn't he? Uskin, Belgar. Iron Hammer. Your prestige grows, my lord. How darn he news of your conquest spreads far and wide. Your development. No, we've got our maxed out relations now. Even the most distant Hammer of, of destiny and bestial lords. Cool. Terrible knowing. Give him the von Moga special. I'm really worried at the complete lack of real gameplay. Historically, it's a really bad sign. Oh, hey, Kane. Oh, it's super early, though. The game's not coming out for another six months, you know, so. What are your thoughts on the Zeech roster? Uh, Zeech roster didn't really do anything for me, Alistair. I don't really like demons. Um, I like the mortal followers of Chaos. I'm all about champions of Chaos, warriors of Chaos, chosen of Chaos, um, the Forsaken... Um, you know, anything that's got a helmet, basically, is where I'm at. Um, all of the monstrous and... Oh, there's some of the monstrous units are pretty cool, but I don't yeah, I don't really care about the demons. I feel like the demons are sort of like a backdrop for the mortal, you know, things. That's just how I personally see it. I don't, I'm not saying that's how it is. Um, but, um, but yeah, I felt like the... I feel like the Zeech roster is just... Like, to me, it's just bland. It's just, like, horrors and flamers and shit. Like, whatever. I don't care about any of those units. Like, they're not, they're not the type of units that I get into. Like, this is just personally. I'm not trying to, like, say this is an evaluation of it or anything. Like, for the, you know, in general, like, an objective evaluation. This is purely subjective on me personally. Um, yeah, I much... I thought the corn roster seemed pretty bare bones. But I still much preferred the corn roster to the Zeech roster. Because the corn roster showed, like, you know, juggernauts are cool. Corn berserkers are cool. That's pretty much it. That's all that was cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, Ghostbusters Slimers in neon colors. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I like the Forsaken. Um, yeah, that's about it. I guess the mechanical... What's the mechanical thing called again? I forget now. That's pretty cool. So, Belligar's already got... Billigar's already got his um his thing. So I might get that on Gotrek this time, just so that he can get the um get the trait for the extra ten research rate. Not that we really care that much, but uh, what are we gonna lose? Rangers. Oh man. Fuck, I don't wanna lose my rangers. Alright, I feel like we should be able to fight this manually. <clears throat> yeah, hopefully Nurgle is amazing. Yeah, I'm I think it's like I said, like whenever the whenever the new game comes out, it's always gonna be shit because they're gonna be missing because they've still got at least one DLC. Like you need one DLC just to finish just to basically finish the faction off, you know? At least. Like before the first DLC, a faction's always kinda like three quarters of the faction, you know what I mean? Um Sometimes less, depending on how much they're holding back for the DLC. Um, so, like, you know, all of these rosters are, like, kind of bare bones. Like, they still need their other quarter of their stuff. Um, so, I'm hoping that, you know, they... I'm hoping that with the... Yeah, I, the, thing, the main thing I'm hoping for is seeing the journey for a champion... You know, getting getting chaos gifts, getting more mutations, aiming to become a, a, a demon prince, and then either succeeding, ultimate ascension to demon prince, or failure, ultimate destruction, turn into chaos spawn. Like that is like the central, quintessential 
thing of the like story of chaos you know and that's what i want to see in my chaos armies you know so um not obviously none of that applies to any of the legendary lords because they're all demon legendary lords so my you know, so my main hope now is that every one of the current demon factions will get a mortal legendary lord as the first dlc and each of them will have that kind of thing going on like each of them will have a really cool story type campaign that will have their ascension and ideally they'll also be a generic lord as well that also has that as well you know so it'll be like a legendary a mortal legendary lord and you get to see them develop and get their chaos gifts and all that and there'll also be a normal generic mortal legendary lord that's like if you want to be like a you know a guy chasing the path to demonhood whatever um but anyway my point is I, like, I don't like demons that much. I don't feel like they don't... It's sort of like in Warhammer 40k, how all the best stories about the Imperial Guard, they're not all... They're, the best stories aren't about the Space Marines, the best stories about the Imperial Guard, because you can identify with them, you know what I mean? Like, I can't identify with being, like, a millennia-old demon, you know? Um, but I can I can definitely identify with being a psychopathic marauder that wants to appease the Dark Gods for ultimate power. Totally. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so my my current my current feels on Chaos is that I'm going to be a bit bummed out with Chaos when they first come out. I mean, I'm going to enjoy it because it's going to be novel. You know, I'm going to just enjoy exploring the game and trying out all the new stuff. But you know, I like I, so I often talk about my like ultimate campaigns. You know, like there's like my exploratory kind of sciencey campaigns. I'm trying to figure out all the cool stuff that I can do with a faction, and then that that's always leading towards me having my ultimate ultimate campaign where I get to play out all my dwarf fantasies. Um, you know, the way that I want everything to go and get all the heroes that I want to get and all that kind of stuff, you know? So I feel like I'm not going to be able to have my ultimate campaign with, like, any factions when Warhammer 3 comes out because they're all going to be half-finished, kind of, you know? But um, but it's still going to be exciting for the science point of view, you know, and just trying out new stuff. Oh, did somebody just subscribe? Thanks. Thanks for that. Doesn't Archeon kind of do that? No, pretty sure he doesn't in any way at all do that. Sorry, dash dash. <laughs> um, I guess like he, um, oh, you mean in his story? Yeah, yeah, sure, but it's not represented in the game in any way. Yeah, no, he like, yeah, yeah, no. As far as I know, he remains immortal. Uh, I, I don't know this whole story about it, but he's like. He doesn't want to become a demon. Like, he doesn't care about the Chaos Gods and all that, really. Um, he's a bit of a weirdo, Archeon. But um, but no, but I mean, he was a mortal follower of Chaos, so he he got mutations and he was he was on the path to Demon Prince. Them, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But it's not represented in the game in any way. Like, there's no reference to it or anything really. Um, there might be. Yeah, I don't know. There might be like a quest battle or something about it, but no, it doesn't really come through, you know what I mean? Like, you could play Archeon, you could be a new player that doesn't know anything about Warhammer, play Archeon, and still have no idea that, you know, that that, that whole path that I, was, that I was describing exists, you know? And that's like, that's that will be a shame in my book. Like, I, I really want people that haven't played, that don't know the Warhammer background, but that, that, do, that only know Warhammer um, Total War, to... to you know, get that from playing, from playing um, chaos factions in the game. You know, to get that as a, being a, an essential part of the chaos ethos. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, whatever. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I don't, I, I'm not a designer of the game. I don't want to design it. You know what I mean? I just want to play it. So um, I'm, I'm happy to see what they come up with, and I think it'll be good. You know, I, I mean. It's like it's unlikely that it's going to be like exactly the way I want it to be, but I still think there's a decent chance that, like what I described, that they will have mortal lords as the DLC lords. Um, I mean, surely they must be the. Surely they must be aware of that. Like, you know what I mean? Surely they mustn't think that they can just not include anything about that. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Tux. How's the video doing? Helped me a lot. Oh, awesome, man. I'm glad. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's you know, modest. Doing modestly, I think. It's chugging along. Um, I don't think it's, like, going gangbusters or anything. Um, it's, yeah. 
it's kind of hard with that with that because i spent so much time on it like i spent nearly two months on one video so it's sort of like it doesn't even matter how well it does like even if it's the best video i ever do it's still almost like not worth it because of how much time i sank into it but um but it was worth it to me because i had fun doing it and i was proud of you know i was proud of the end result you know so you know i think it's better to do it's better to like you know, even if it's not like cost effective, I think, you know, if you can do something that gives you some satisfaction, it's a lot better than doing like 10 things that don't give you any satisfaction, you know? Uh, for non chaos peeps, we're talking about random mutations and all that. Not even sure if that's in the newest version, might be an old school rule. Yeah, well, I guess that's another aspect to it because I'm not really a tabletop player. Like, I did play tabletop like way way back in the day but i'm much more a fan of the lore and the, the the fiction than i am of the tabletop so you know i don't even really care what the rules were on the tabletop like those little blurbs that you read in the little lore blurbs that you read in between the rules in the in the books in the rule books that's what i'm interested in like the world that's behind behind it you know Fuck. <sighs> I'm trying basically all I want to do is basically to not have these two ranger units die. As long as these two rangers don't die, then I'm happy. Um but um Yeah, we'll see how we go. Hey Jimmy, thanks for subscribing, man. Much appreciated. Anyways. Uh I forget what I even started me off on that rant. Shit. It's yeah, exactly liberal. It's critical to the chaos feeling. Like it's it's not so much about representing the tabletop game. It's about um, it's about saving Warhammer. You know, like I for, like there's a part of me that just really feel. Oh, he killed himself. Lol. He um his um, magic spell backfired and Ikaclaw killed himself. Lol. Um. Yeah, there's a big misclass card. Yeah, he got he got smashed. What's his movement? Can we get Gotrek to hunt him down? 47 speed. Holy shit, he's fast. I don't think we've got the Rune of Slowness, have we? Oh, maybe we do. He's coming. What's my sound? My sound screwed up. I come here and immediately hear Hickaclaw killed himself. Yeah, he killed himself. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, uh, yeah. I need to just wait. So that's the thing. Like, Wyma 3 is not coming out for like, you know, four to six months, right? And then even after Wyma 3 comes out, it's not going to be the Wyma 3 that we want or that we need, you know? We need the Wyma 3 that's like five years after it comes out and it's had like 26 DLCs, like in the state that Wyma 2 is in now, you know? Um, so, you know, we just really got to be super patient. And like, to be honest, all these hype up fucking all these high pop like information releases that that's um that ca does like every fucking day doesn't it's not helping you know it's not helping at all um but yeah but it's cool like i don't know i'm like i i can't say i'm not interested every time they drop some information i'm always really interested but it's at the same time it's like we need to be like disciplined and just you know be like no nah, don't care no, I don't care about Wyma 3. Whenever it comes, it comes. And even after it comes, I don't care. I'm just going to like be super, super patient. You know, the Wyma 3 I want is going to be coming out like about six months after Wyma 3 drops. So, you know, no point getting excited. Excuse me. I'll go watch a new video. See you afterwards. Okay, Saragoth, please do. Yeah, everybody, everybody, if you want to help me out, go watch my video. Share it with somebody that you love. Watch, just put it on repeat and you know, just keep it, keep it going. Now, um, 
But no, I did, I did put a lot of effort into it. So if you want to chuck a like on it or whatever, I'd be uh, much appreciated. Mushroom clad too, fitting for the glorious Snicket. Indeed. All right, well, that's the last we have to see of him. <clears throat> Boom. And now we've got the plus 10 technology on um, Gotrek as well. This is going to make all of our... Oh, yeah. That loves my preservation. We do like that. Another archivist. More trade, more research. Another student, another archivist. Boom, boom, boom. All right, cool. Um, okay, okay, okay. Now, are you finally going for campaign victory conditions? No. <laughs> Lol. You know, where, where do you think you are, Lurent here? Jesus. Um, did anyone see Gaming Rambles video? Um, if you haven't checked out Gaming Rambles, it's, it's not, he does very different type of stuff to me. He's more like a meme, like a meme lord sort of guy, you know? Uh, so he does those like funny videos with like cool music and different cool stuff. I don't know. Um, I'm not very good at that, <laughs> that sort of thing. I try to get a little bit in there. Gaming Rambles and the other meme, meme guys kind of inspire me a little bit. Akoi and... Um, Tarif and stuff, but um, actually, I don't really I haven't really watched any Tarif stuff, but Akoi okay, and Gaming Rambles anyway. Um, what was it about? Oh, yeah, so Gaming Rambles recently did a video about um, it was actually not a meme lord video, it was actually a guide video about how to get all of the achievements. So, if you guys are achievement hunters, um, don't watch my videos because I don't I don't give a shit about achievements at all. Um, if you want achievements, go check out Gaming Rambles. He's got a video that he just put out recently. It tells you how to get all the achievements. I, well, I think so. Anyway, I didn't bother watching it because I don't give a shit. But um, <laughs> but um, but I, I I I watched at the end of it because he actually. Um, he actually mentions me in there. Basically, he said how um, how I don't have any achievements, which is completely correct. Um, so out of I've, I've only got about fifty percent of the achievements, and I got them completely by accident. And we actually checked my achievements on stream the other day just to see, and I literally have never completed a campaign in Warhammer Two, never, never completed any campaign with any race. <laughs> so that's that's how little I care about the achievements. I've literally never even. Like, I've never even gone on here and gone, oh, what are the victory conditions? How would I do that? Never done that. Never set out to achieve these. Literally never. Not one time. <laughs> you can do Bretonia one stream easy. Yeah, no, I, I'm not saying I couldn't do it, John. I'm just saying I just don't care about it at all. <laughs> like, then, and that's illustrated by the fact that I literally have not, like, like, sh like, I hope that you guys trust me and believe me that sometime in my, like, 6,000 hours of playing Whammer 2, that if I set my mind to it, I probably could achieve a campaign victory. I'm l I like to think that I could if I wanted to. But, um, but, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, like, yeah, no, Bretonia, if anyone wants to get, just get one campaign victory, Bretonia is probably the easiest and most straightforward for sure. Definitely recommend it. But, um, but yeah, Dame, Dame Offensive also had a bit of a thing about this, was saying how, and, and it's something I've, be, I've believed for a long time, the victory conditions is just arbitrary, they're meaningless, who cares, you know? Um, I don't, I'm not a completionist. Doesn't mean anything to me. Hey, Nanny, how you going, man? I thought, I wondered if that video would bring you out of the woodwork. Did you see the Belliga video? Um... But yeah, like these, they, they don't, they're meaningless. You know, I'm not a completionist. So this, this arbitrary, yes, you got a victory doesn't mean anything to me. Um, the wood elves actually get a buff, I believe when they finish their campaign. Um, and so, and that's the type of campaign victory, victory I like that I've enjoyed in other games where you do whatever it is that ostensibly is the victory. And then you get some cool buff, like your kingdom is inspired now and you, you get some special knights or some shit, you know, like that's how it should be. Um, and I would hope and expect that they will, they will do that for every faction in Warhammer 3. Because now that they know that that's good and they did it with, with Wood Elves, then there's, you know, there's no reason that every new faction shouldn't have like a victory condition bonus that you get. Um, you haven't gotten Wood Elf victory though? No, I haven't got any Wood. I haven't got any victories with anything. 
Tomb of Kings get regen, army wide and void. Yeah, that sort of stuff is cool. Like when you, um, yeah, when you get it, when you do the victory thing and then you can still keep playing, but you have then a sick bonus or something, that's that's how it should be. That's that's it done right. Like these types of other games that are similar to Total War, that's what they've done. Like that's that's when I've liked it, it's been that, you know? Um, and that's one of the things that, that this is missing, you know, that it doesn't have. Um, but there's no reason that it shouldn't have. It'd be super easy to put it in, you know, just give you a special magic item that you get for every faction when you win, a different one for each one, you know, um, or a bonus or a buff or a grudge fulfilled or something, you know. Um, oh, yeah, Belligar used to have it. He used to have his grudge fulfilled thing, but he doesn't anymore. Well, that's not victory conditions, but it's like, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, but these type of games, like for me, I don't want to win the game. I want to live in the game, you know? Like there's no, obje like I don't want to finish the game. Like that doesn't do it for me. I want to be in the game, enjoying the game, you know? So, you know, a victory condition that I can achieve that then gives me something that makes the game more enjoyable, or more helpful for it, or for it. That's, that's what I want, you know? I've had a lot of coffee, guys. I've had a lot of coffee. <laughs> I think my sound's bugged out. Fuck. When's the rebellion going to happen next? Probably Skaven Blood again. Is that far enough to make him go that way? I haven't had to watch it because my new job's running me ragged, but homesick. I'm homesick, so I've got lots of time. Oh, okay. you're home because you're sick. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's no good, man. I hope you feel better soon. But um, are you that good sick where you like got a bit of a runny nose, so you can't go to work, but you actually feel totally fine? Um, that's the good type of sick, and you can just stay home and play Total War all the time. Or are you that sort of sick where you know you're so fucked that when you lay down, you start feeling sick, but then you sit up and you start feeling exhausted. So then you got to lay down again, but you start feeling nauseous again. If you're that kind of sick, then that's that's not good. For the most part, I'm functional, but I can, you know, but can game the day away. There we go. That's good. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've had the sound bug in it before, and it's gone away some way or another. Hopefully, it'll go away once we end the turn. Jesus, we need some replenishment in our soup, like in a hurry. Jesus. Uh, I think that's going to be far enough, but maybe we'll do a bit more. Now that should surely go the right direction. Bro, these fucking rangers just want to die, don't they? It's weird your ambient music, ambient music but your sound effects are bugged. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's pretty annoying. Yeah, I still don't have... I might just... Um, I just hold F forward out and we'll see if we restart. To get it to come back. I think we, I'm pretty sure we had it before and we figured out how to get rid of it somehow. So, yeah, it's just, it's just sort of annoying because you want that feedback, you know, like to be like, to know you clicked on something and whatever. I already screwed up. 
Gotrek's movement because of it. <clears throat> Da, da, da. What other chat did I miss? I do achievements when I don't know what campaign to play sometimes. Yeah, I was I was kind of thinking about it because I have done stuff like that. Like in Warhammer 1, I actually did, I did, um, like in that, like what we were just talking about that, like dead time when the game first comes out, but before the DLCs come out. When Warhammer 1 first came out, before the first round of DLCs came out, the game was very much like, I probably within the first week I was already starting to get bored with parts of it you know I'd already played like you know I'd already like tried out green skins and decided I was never going to play them again um you know and um yeah I only really played uh empire and vampire counts and dwarfs but dwarfs even were like kind of yeah you know um did we have that before alt x toggles sound effects did you hit that by accident i do it all the time so i know the shortcut oh okay yeah maybe thanks for the coyote i'll check it out in a second ah it's fixed now anyway oh yeah old x yeah it is old x that must have been what i did while well, the coyote yeah it looks like it sounds like when you restart it just resets that button that that effect but um, but yeah, that's that must be what it is. It must have hit wild, wild X. So yeah, everybody, I'll probably forget. But if you, if everybody takes a note now that Alt X turns off sound effects, so next time I do that and I'm I think it's a bug, you can remind me that it's just Alt X. Yeah, thanks, Wiley. Good good call. All right, I'm trying not to get our guys dead. Skarsnik try to rush you like how Belgar does when you play Skarsnik? Yeah, uh, yeah, but not straight away. Like, I feel like it's around turn 20 normally that Skarsnik comes for you. I think it's quite variable. But yeah, I'd say like around turn 20-ish. After turn 20, yeah, yeah. But yeah, my new philosophy with Skarsnik is basically just to not give a shit about him. Just just, just, just take all his settlements, you know? Um, sorry, I think the stream's lagging a bit. Oh, okay, sorry, man. Yeah, I think everything's okay on my end. It seems okay. Uh, I don't know. No, I think that's just... I think that's how it is on my screen as well. <laughs> He's beat to mush. Yeah. It's alright. It's alright. We just need to get a good turn or two of replenishment and we'll be back in the game. Advancing. It's all because um it's all because I didn't recruit that first turn when I got to Skaven Blade. I should have I should have been recruiting that first turn after I took after I um I, after I occupied Skaven Blade. And because if I did, had done that I could have just auto resolved and we would have been fine. But because I didn't do that and I had to fight it manually, lost my engineer, which is actually pretty bad. Um and um yeah. I wonder if I got any more Twitter Twitter followers. Yeah, I think I got a four or five new Twitter followers. I only I've got 182 followers on Twitter. I don't know if that's good. I don't think it is. Really good and cheesy Belagar guide seal of approval. That's um that's legends legends. You got legends endorsement. It's pretty awesome. I'm gladdened. 
Um, Missy said you came with a way to keep oh. generals from the Empire interventions. How to do it? No, I didn't say that at all. I don't. Not, was it you that was asking me about this last time? No, it was uh, Dash Dash was talking about it, and I was just agreeing that it's possible. Um, I didn't like come up with a way to do it or anything. Um, I think that you, yeah, Dash Dash is about to explain. Um, but yeah, I think one way is to just alt F4 out of the battles. Um, I can't remember whether you have to do it when you do it exactly when the dilemma first comes up or after the battle thing starts. Do you remember? Do you know which? There's one one way like that, isn't there, Dash Dash? And then there's a new way that Dash Dash was saying, which is like to let get the general killed or something, which I haven't tested at all. All aboard the pain train. That's right, Sagosh. How do you like the thumbnail? That was, um, Vasily came up with that idea. That's, um, Beligar's head transplanted onto a battering ram. It's pretty awesome. Actually, these guys may as well suicide away because they're. Anyway. I they can... Nah, I was hoping to get them inside the radius of the spite rune. The spite rune's sort of no good against um, ranged units, but sometimes you can get them within the radius of that, I think, if you... Uh, maybe not. It's been so long since I've been in a stream, your beard's almost fully recovered. Oh, we last have you been away since Volkmar days? Yeah, yeah, fully. That was uh we took a heavy blow. That was a grudge in that that one. Hey David M. Love your vids, bro. Oh thanks man. That's really nice of you to uh, pop a super chat down for us. Um, yeah, totally unnecessary, but it's very, very much appreciated, man. I will, uh, I will rename a unit of elite rangers in your honor. Once we get some. Unless you want 
a, a unit of elite miners that are soon going to be dead, <laughs> I can do that as well, but I feel like that's not really worthy of the super chat. Oh man, these miners got fucked. Is he broken? Yeah. Can we kill him yet? Kill him. Um. Oh yeah, we can't really catch anyone, but um, we should be able to kill this lord, hopefully. Does that give us any positive? No. There we go. That's alright, we'll put I'll put you on the list. Renames waiting. We're renaming Ranger squads at the moment. There you go. Um yeah, I won't, I won't put you in I won't I won't rename a suicide squad after your name. So yeah, so we'll take the 10 Earth Gold there. Fuck! I was like clearly on that side of him, like he should have gone the other way. What the fuck? <laughs> Piece of shit. Um... Time for a reckoning. No, I can't even fucking reach him. What a fucking piece of shit. Um... Sorry guys, I'm really fucking annoyed about that. Like I went to so much effort to make him go that direction. And then like how the fuck like seriously, Belly Guy was like here. Attacked that direction. How the fuck did he retreat that way? You know? It's whack. I think it's because I think it's because he was there was like a maybe there's like a little I don't know, I'm just making excuses. The game's fucked, basically. But I'm, I was thinking maybe there's like a little bump here or something. So he was, even though it looks like the line's that way, maybe the line was actually this way or something. I don't know. Anyway, I still think it's deeply unfair. I'm not impressed. All right, how are we doing? Victorious! Earth alive! Lord of the England. True King. All right, how about we put Belaga there to we transfer these units into Belaga's army? Oh, oops. Archivist, nice. Transfer these guys into Belagar's army. Give this guy, I don't know, movement, whatever. Give him an archivist, yep. Then we, how much money we got? Oh, we got heaps of money, alright, cool. So, we'll go. This guy. Summon me if you dare. We'll give that guy an archivist, he's already gone, okay. Uh, we go for Life this guy. We'll give him an archivist. We'll replace him with this guy. I'm ready. And we will give him an archivist. And hopefully, he well, either him or the other one will get replaced with a Grungy Lord. Which will give us additional more, even give us even more technology. Great Grumney's beard. To the next one, then. Godtrek Gurnishan to battle. Godtrek Gurnishan. True king of eight peaks. 
I don't know if I should just take replenishment or. Hmm. Alright, so what are we going to do with this guy? Should we send him up to find Ungrim right now? Maybe? Because we don't really need we don't really need the money right now, and if we leave him in here, he's giving us extra chances to get ancillaries, which is nice. Revenge incarnate. Sorry, I'm just talking to myself for a little bit because actually I got hey Jim, how you going, man? Salty mercy. Have you missed the cosplay? Yeah, you missed the cosplay. Sorry, Cog Monkey. The Lord X is dead, wounded, and all oh, right. So I'm not, I'm not getting involved in that. Um, just you just tell me once you figured it out. <laughs> I'm not really that interested in that cheese. Like, I don't know. I think, yeah. I mean, if I could think of a way, like a lot of cheeses, like if they're, it sort of depends how dirty they are, I guess. And then also, like, um. Well, maybe I'll go for some early replenishment. That can be quite handy right now. Um, yeah, it depends kind of how dirty they are to a degree, but also like whether it's got a specific application. Like, I don't really like, I don't know. I don't like, I'm not like against like cheating or anything super, like I'm more against things that aren't fun, I guess. That's probably my, my take on it. Um, And, um, what do I want to do here? Do I want to put Setting forth. all the shit into his army, maybe? On to vengeance. Not sure how that makes any difference, really. Our ancestors would be proud. Oops, um, yeah, that's fine, whatever. Uh, actually, maybe we should do another recruit, just to be sure. Probably should have just kept that other lord that we already had here. No, it's fine. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we've got these. Now we're going for High King's Authority via Empower the Holds. Yeah, like, if we, if, like, yeah, so... I am preserved for a great two hours and ten turns. This is Mercy in his prime. Already two, 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 ten turns in two hours. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, Alright, what are we down here? Let's, uh, yeah, let's, like, gotta get back into the habit of, like, doing end turn before I start oh my, my rants. Actually, I really would like some dwarf warriors. Fuck it, I'm just doing it. Iron at the one. Time for a Maybe not. Come this far. For the wisdom of Valea. Lund's heir. Gotrek Gurnishan. Gotrek Gurnishan. Gotrek Gurnishan. Yeah, like um. Oh, yeah, I was thinking I'm not going to save all my money right till the end this time, and I'm actually just going to buy buy runes, but I don't think there's anything I also really actually want. Mm, yeah, no, there's nothing really... Juice speed and melee defense is pretty solid. Hmm. We don't really do that much melee damage. Uh, we probably do a fair bit of melee damage, actually. The only other thing I really want is parrying, melee defense, but mm, I don't know how it's really rune of HP. Oh yeah, I want the rune of HP. Like I'm, I'm not saying I'm saying right now, like what I want right now. 
I think that, um, oh yeah, I've already got the Rune of Fear. The Rune of Fear is my, so Rune of Spite, number one. Rune of Fear, number two. Got both of those already. Um, and then number three, if you haven't, if you need it, then I take Rune of Luck to get or more up to um, 80 80 percent physical resist because one spell a gala levels up he gives plus 10 so that gives him the 90 percent cap even if we don't get any other magic items um which we've already got some other ones as well but this that's pretty much all my sort of starting things and then kind of almost on the same tier is this plus seven melee defense for belligar and the two tanks but it's sort of a tier down i don't know if i need it as much just trying to think, like, it basically just means, like, one turn, it'll take one turn longer to get my Iron Warden's Tankards. I don't really need Iron Warden's Tankards, like, anytime soon, though. Yeah, so I want to have, I want to get, get some, having, I want to have some fun a bit earlier this time, so I'm going to do a bit of shopping oh, a bit earlier. Um, yeah, so we give one to Belligar and one to each of the um, other tanks. No, not that Lund's really a tank, but... Fifty armor means he hardly takes any damage. Yeah, yeah, with fifty armor, with the fifty armor rune, you can get Veligar up to two hundred armor, which makes him immune to non-AP damage. It's pretty sweet. But um, but yeah, we're fine at the moment, I think. What? Still want this you trade. The it's, they're holding out on me. I think they'll get it once we max it out with 49. Yeah, once we get up to around 49, I reckon they'll go for it. Dark are the I serve the Lady of the Lake. It is done. I know. Yes? I am ready to parley. I hope your words Very work. well. No. The hunter come! The beauty of Athel Lauren is that is impossible. Now we're getting there. We're getting there, though. Protector of the realm, the lady grants you safe passage. You mewling fool. So, greeting, stranger. Agotos. <laughs> You also need like 120 melee defense to get max melee resistance against 40 HMA from all directions. <laughs> nice. I don't think we're going to get 120 melee defense somehow, dash dash, but um, that would be, I mean, that would be nice. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't reject it if, if I could get it for free. That's for sure. Never pay money for anything that you can just not pay money for. That's my rule. Yes. I wonder if you have my hammer. Ready. Revenge Maybe I should have turned back already, like that turn, but whatever. Round. Okay. Onwards to death. Beast Slayer, where's the slaughter? Unto glory for the ancestors. Keep me busy. Your doom is assured. On the move. Get out of range. God mm. trick. Good Swear to God, I'll lose my shit. Uh, might yeah might send Billy back because victorious Earth alive an ad as the high king commands 
born to die. Good odds for the great death. Time for some. Yeah, so that's cool. So we got another 50 Earth Gold that turn. It's pretty nice. More money, more students, more items, more runes. Oh, that was, we just got a rune. What? Master rune. That was a sweet, a sweet drop. How did we score that? That was very nice. Um, P.S. I love how you released the video yesterday on my birthday. It felt like a birthday present. Oh, I didn't even know it was your birthday either, John. Uh, or maybe I didn't. I forgot. I, sorry. But yeah. Thanks. I mean, not thanks. Happy birthday, man. <laughs> I'll, um, I don't know what else I can do to honor you. But, um, yeah. Preserved for a greater doom. Summon me if you dare. Eat up the miles. I've not got all day. On the move. Follow my lead. Out of my way. The axe thirsts for war. Sweet. Sweet rune. So we got two of these bad boys, we got one of them. We're not doing much we're not very having much luck with the um Yes. We're not having much luck with the um Grungy Lords. Oak Slayer! Thank you, thank you. Got the Warhammer Blood of Anarian up to Bane of Malekith Trilogy and hardcover from the wife. I was really happy with that. Oh, very nice. I read Pyre's pipe and was thoroughly confused. <laughs> Loads of pipe. <laughs> that was a lot of Yeah, that was spirit. 10, 11, should I take 10, so 10, 10, 11, 12? I mean, it'd be 10, 11, 12. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. Let's keep we'll keep those two. The replenishment would be nice, but it's fine. Yeah, what do you reckon to go for on Hulk enough? So basically we don't want to go stalk because we want him to um, tank. So we want the enemies to see him so that he can, I mean, I suppose we could go stalk on him as well, but, and then he could just, nah, it's not, yeah, it's not good. Um, but yeah, we could go 50% iron drakes and iron breakers and miners. We're not going to have any of those units though, probably. It gives him 75% fire resist, but whatever. Um, I think guardian is probably what I want because that way he could potentially give Belligar 15% extra physical resist if he hangs out near him, which, you know, might happen sometimes. Keeper of the gate, always. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what I thought. I I just I feel like, because I normally use him just like him and Belligar just slightly apart from each other, so he's not, the Belligar's not in the, ra in the range, but... Um, but yeah, but I mean, in theory, if I needed him to be, he could cruise over next to Belligar and start bodyguarding him. And that would actually, if we can get Belly, if like Belligar's got like 67% physical resist, that 15% would put him up to um, 82%, which is, you know, very high. <laughs> um, it's like, it'd be, it'd basically reduce his damage by like, you know, 40% or something. So it'd be pretty good. Hmm. <clears throat> Oh yeah, we need to um Let me just check on that rune we need that rune um ability from the runesmith. Um Rank up outside of an army. Okay, yeah, that's kind of hard. Um, 
Mm, yeah. We'll just keep an eye out for him. When he's like nearly about to level up, we'll try and make him do a, you know, do an ability on something. <clears throat> True king of eight peaks. Victorious! Earth Oh, I could have probably got another rebellion if I had have, um... We probably got followers on... Oh, I didn't check. We might have a follower on Gotrek that's causing Black Order, which we don't want, obviously. <clears throat> what rune discs you get there, Missy? Which what what what? Uh, rune r the um. Guardian. Oh yeah. I thought, oh yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, the Guardian puts the Ghost Heroes up to ninety when they're in a blob. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Um, I was yeah. I just like I was just thinking. Belagar gives them all plus ten fizz, and then you just put physical resistance, and then you just put five percent on them, and they're done. But yeah, you can just get that, and then fifteen percent. They're all done straight away if they stand nearby. Yeah, that's actually yeah. I didn't even think of that. Really? And if we get both of them with that, then that'd be better. If we get another thane in there and give them that, give them that as well, that'd be nice. Oh yeah, I'm doing this. Um, okay, so we're gonna get a rebellion there, and we're not gonna get a rebellion there. Yes. <clears throat> Why not? Come on. In there. Get. Four of them bad boys. What this? Crap. And then we should be good to go. Lord of the it shall be done. Seeking vengeance. Yeah, so three turns. Yeah, see I probably could have yeah, I said I could have kept growing. I could have kept the growth building for ages more like probably yeah. I could have kept the growth building for like three or four turns, probably actually. I didn't realize it was going to take, I was not going to come back up here until this late. I should have looked, I should have watched the guide and actually counted the turns, but I didn't. But yeah, anyway, whatever. Just that extra bit of growth would have been nice because it would have, man, we would have hit two or three around, you know, a bit earlier instead of like turn 25, 22 or whatever we're going to hit. <laughs> NGs get Guardian the photo buy ability to get them to 60. What? NGs get Guardian? Do they? <laughs> I could then think about that. Uh, sorry, Verinx. Hey, uh, thanks to Verinx as well. Verinx and Verinx and Andrew Jones did a lot of help. Uh, helped me get some footage for the video by um, playing out some turns with Belligar campaigns and sharing me sharing their saves with me, so I could get some of those um, late game. I think Varynx played up to like 200, turn 260 to get to get me some screenshots, which was pretty awesome of him. Andrew Jones also played, you know, 150 turns or something to get me some screenshots, which was cool. Even though the scope of the video was only up to turn 31, um, the you know I just wanted to show you know talk about belly guy late game and stuff as well because obviously that's you know what you're kind of imagining as you're playing through the campaign that's like a thing with the with a lot of campaigns you know it's not it's not just the play time you're actually doing it's also that looking forward to how cool they're going to be later on you know and that kind of powers you powers you forward in your campaigns you know so i wanted to kind of show a bit of that so yeah thanks guys thanks very much for uh for that I made it into it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Like, Varys got his thing up to turn 260, and then he got into some sort of nightmare situation that he couldn't get out of, so he just sent it to Legend to do to be a disaster campaign as well. Nice. I made it into a disaster campaign. That, oh, did he what, Did he actually reply? I didn't think he replied unless he was going to actually do it. Well, I don't know. I don't think he replied. I don't think he ever replies, does he? I think he just, if you send him a disaster campaign, he just either, he, he does the disaster campaign or he doesn't, he doesn't, I don't think he replies because I think he gets too many emails and shit. Or did he actually reply and say no? <laughs> it's like, no, fuck off, too hard. <laughs> You've made too much of a mess of this, Varynx. Thought out your own shit. 
He did not reply. It hurts my feels. I oh, don't feel bad. He doesn't reply to any of them. It's just, you know, he's too busy. He does read them, though. So, you know, you can rest assured that he read it. And you can also rest assured that the more words that you wrote in there, the less that he would have read it. <laughs> I sent three disasters to Legend. He replied to them all, but rejected. Oh, so yeah, he does actually reply, does he? Oh, I just assumed that he wouldn't reply at all. Send it to Mercy first, so Legend will be enticed by even more difficult campaign. <laughs> because I'll screw it up more. How dare you, Dash Dash. I'm a master at this game. Sometimes when I'm paying attention. Alright, anyway, let's play some turns. We need to get... That's the. I'm good at the talking shit part. I'm not good at the clicking turns part. That's where we need to focus our energies. Oh yeah, we've got heroes, we've got all of our heroes equipped with, um, I think we have got all of our heroes equipped with students. Just to make sure though. No, here we go. Don't think we've got a spare archivist right now. Nope. Actually, what else can we get on here? Pretty hot. I don't want any of these public order things. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure this is going to be chaos. Oh no, it's not going to be chaos. It's going to be... Well, is it going to be chaos? Or is it... It's only 27% chaos. That means it would be humans, won't it? Yeah. I was going to say, humans are a lot easier to deal with than chaos, I'm pretty sure. How many restarts? Uh, one? One restart? Yeah, I, turned, I screwed up on turn two. So it was basically pretty much as soon as I started. I just like talked crap for 20 minutes, then played for about five minutes and screwed up and had to restart. Oh, shit. Damn it. Why? It's like a tier one settlement. How the fuck has it got the three great swords? I guess, I don't know, I guess that's just what happens. Um, yeah, the swords, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's just, there's nothing I can do about it. Fuck. It's really bad. Uh, so the thing is, if I don't f win this, then I don't get the, um, I don't get the, um, them's rebels, so they don't need settlements, indeed. Um, yeah, are you asking if I'm not in range of the city, John? You can clearly see I'm not in range, otherwise you'd see the reinforcements. <laughs> Lol. Um... Is there any possible way I can win this? There's no possible way I can win this, is there? You reckon that's winnable? <laughs> Cock monkey thinks that I can win it. Dash Dash is like, nah, you're fucked. Um... Great swords will tear you up even if they don't have guns. Yeah, this thing. I think even if I get like a full surround on the great swords, I don't think we're gonna win it. Fight it. Um, I'm tempted to fight it. Um. <clears throat> Hmm. 
I'll, um, I guess I'll try and fight it a bit and then I'll retreat and hopefully they won't follow up. Okay, <laughs> Legends reaction when it gets a disaster for Mercy. Now it's two generic half stacks against each other. <laughs> Lol. Hide him out of the timer. Oh, has he got. What? He used the settlement forces as bait. What? What? Are they going to get reinforcements? No, they haven't got reinforcements. Fuck. They'd be fucked for that. reinforcements as well. Being deep shit. Um. Hmm. Um... Ugh. Like, if Gotrek dies, then... Well, I mean... It's not the end of the world, it just means that we'll miss out on, like, hundreds of Oath Gold. But we'll save hundreds of gold, we'll save thousands of gold with the money, probably. Well, no, not really, actually. We'll probably be about the same in money because the, all the grudges sort of pay for themselves, you know? Um, Minus. Dwarf warriors! Pump those dwarfen legs! Hey. Yes! They have wronged us! That's yeah. Dwarf warriors for the high king. Move now. Right far, right fast. Miners, we demand blood for the ancestors. Radu, go trek. Dwarf warriors, rage far, rage fast. Let the vengeance begin. Miners! Moving out! Strike out! Kill Fucked up with there, but no. Oh. Move now! Miners! Yes! Understood, Lord! Miners! Into position! The clans unite! Miners! Draws! Ready, Axis! I don't think we can even kill these great swords, even with three on one here. I don't think it's gonna work out. <laughs> we'll give it a shot. I wonder if we'll even in legendary with legendary buffs. I wonder if we'll even beat these range units in melee. Gotrek's like not doing really well. My axe thirsts. Very well. Yes, this is real bad. It's real bad. We can't even kill this one unit of great swords. Look at this. They're still at full health. Ah, fuck me. All right. I guess we're gonna have to just run. This is the closest edge of the board. Cycle charge? Yeah, I mean, in theory, but like, this is our tank. These the tanks are all about to break. They're all dead. Hmm. 
Well, that is crazy. I didn't expect that army to be so strong. I, uh, I don't know why. I mean, I should have expected it. But I just didn't. Gave it a shot. Gave it a shot. Yeah, the thing is, yeah, th that was pretty bad. And I think if it had been Chaos, it would have been probably pretty bad as well. I should have taken that off him before I fought that battle. Oops. All right, don't it's follow up. Time. No, that's right. They won't follow up. That's cool. Now, should I bring Beligar back? That's sort of cool now because now they'll just sit there and mind their own business, I think. I don't think they'll attack me or anything. So now I should be safe to just sit here with Grotrek and just, you know, recruit. Um, and just like recruit units now. Monster Slayer! Runs air! Oh, well, faction destroyed Estal Estalia. So if we take this over again, and then we let it rebel again, then we can re-establish Estalia again. Although I think there's gonna be, they're gonna get chaos. I think they're gonna get chaos though, so it would be good. Mining in the woods might have worked. No, hiding nothing would have worked because it's like out like we um, our infantry were reasonably defensive. You know, they got forty melee defense, which is you know okay for basic units or whatever. But we have like no offense, so our our warriors don't have any melee attacks, so they can't hit, and they don't have any armor piercing damage, so they can't hurt the great swords like at all. And the miners have armor piercing, but they have quite low damage, and their melee attacks really shit, so they can't hit. They can't hit the the great swords although they if they charge they might be able to kind of hit them you know but they're still pretty crap um so you know that was the problem i couldn't hurt the great swords um and the great swords could definitely hurt me they were just chopping up my my warriors you know um maybe if i had a lord that had like full red line or something you know it might have been all right but what's going on here why do i have so much True King, Lord of the Angren. Mm. Grungni finally got one. Alright, we'll put them in there. You should know what to do with them. Alright, I think we're still good. I think we're still kind of good here. We just have to curtail our exploits a bit. We're just going to farm Scaven Blight from now on. Uh, that should still be okay though. So, I am ready to parley. I hope you cannot. What? You have a proposal? We are willing to hear a weak order. Armored in. Welcome to fair Britain. Impossible. Shield uh, I think soon our strength rating is going to go up a bit once we get our ranger stack, so then we might be a bit better off. I think at the moment everyone despises us because we're such pathetic weaklings. Um, hey, Charlie J. Yeah, I'm well, man. I hope you're well too. I've played Knifey Spoonie enough to know how OP great swords are. Yeah, great swords. 
Very great. See, if it was the other way around and I was playing, I was using the great swords against them. Oh, actually, no. Nah, yeah, if I had have had their army versus my army, I probably would have won. But it would have been, you know, obviously the the legendary the legendary um, penalties would have been a bit sh a bit crap. But yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, I hate Karakon. I forgot. I should have killed them. Oh, this guy. This guy has come crawling back, eh? Um, yeah, I better, better send him after. He's going to take quite a long time to get up there because he doesn't have um, any movement buffs. Off we go! Sigma forbids this. Do you think from there he'll be able to get them in one turn? I think he will get two, but... Oh, they might spawn down here. I don't know. Six and four. What about if we go? Moving out. Hmm, that's really nearly enough space to actually get them, isn't it? Summon me if you dare. The throng agrees. Beards in belts. Aye, grudges will be settled. of Valaya. Revenge incarnate. Hmm. Yeah, this is all kind of working out okay, I think. Go trick not win? No, go trick did not win. Sorry. He should be able to be fine against this Skaven. True king of the earth. What do you want? You pseudo elf. I have no case for mountain flowers. A bad view, hey lad. Point taken. Cup. All right, should we can get now? I can get a comfy. Get a comfy auto resolve. Keep me busy. Yeah, it's not that comfy, is it? Still does a fair bit of damage. Time for some bloodletting. Now we just need to get. Oh, man, so far. We, uh, we really need to get these get these kills in one turn. It's like it's so inefficient. Like it's gonna take eight. Uh, so if you can get the, if you can kill the rebels in one turn, then you can get a rebellion like every second turn. But if you can't kill them in one turn, then you only get to kill them like every like four or five turns. You know, it's really in inefficient. Um, so you know that's bad basically. Um, it's like it's very costly 
Uh, like it's not really, like the, the money is the thing. It's really um, costing us a lot of money um, to keep. Like if we were if we were being able to do two fights per turn and get the rebellion um, and kill the rebellion, then we'd probably get about two thousand gold. And then next turn we wouldn't get anything. We'd, re we'd recruit. The next turn after that we get another rebellion, get another two thousand gold. You know, and it kind of pays for itself. You just get heaps of free oath gold. But if you can't, if you can't kill them in one turn, then like, you know, we're getting less money. But also it's going to take like four turns before they come back. And we're not getting any money all that time as well. Got to pay all of these wages. You know, um, so yeah, it's not great. <clears throat> I don't know if I should build more troops just to make sure, but I think uh, I feel like we'll be fine with that. Let's <clears throat> go. I really want that, but I don't know. Anyways, so yeah, so you need to make sure you take him out in one turn, is the, the moral of the story. So I don't know, I don't know if this is going better or worse. This is going, definitely going worse than the guide. Um, we've had a couple of missteps, but I think we're still basically on track. Belligar has actually come back up, I think, one turn earlier than he, did, than he did in the guide, so that's actually kind of... I think it's kind of helpful in a way. Like, I mean, if Belligar had have stayed back with Belligar one more turn, then Belig... Then, I mean, if Belligar had have stayed back with Gotrek one more turn and helped him bash, then bash the rebels and stuff for an extra turn like he did in the guide, then Gotrek wouldn't be in the situation that he's in right now. But, um... But... But yeah, but being up here one turn earlier and being able to go up to Skarsnik one turn earlier, it could actually, you know, could actually help us out, maybe. Gotrek wasn't worthy of the beard. Oh, that's, that's pretty harsh. Harsh words. What happens when you record a guide on easy, but then try to repeat the campaign on legendary? <laughs> well, well, yeah. No, it's it's more a case of when I did the guide, like I pour, I, I poured over like every move painstakingly, you know, and um, and I redid, I redid it over and over again, kind of thing, getting the thing. I didn't actually redo it over and over again that many times. Um, most of it, like I did it. Well, I did it. I did it already successfully, like on the first the first run through up to turn eight. But then I did something wrong. I had to like redo it. Um, like I did something not the way I wanted to do it, and I had to redo it. And then I got and then I got to like turn twenty seven. But then I realized that I wanted to do something different, so I redid it again. You know, so it's like I did it. I it's yeah. I redid it, but it's not, I didn't redo it because I failed. I redid it because I just wanted to do it differently. You know what I mean? Of course, you know, that's just me saying that. I could be lying. But it was definitely not on it was definitely on legendary though. <laughs> but there's no real way to prove that I guess. Oh uh, actually no there is. You can tell because oh uh, no, I think I edited it out. There was actually a part in the I did ha originally have a part in there where I showed the um where I showed the unit cards of the Skaven in Skaven Blight with the spite, the Rune of Spite damage on them, but I actually cut that out and show, and instead showed Belligar's 
unit card with the damage. So yeah, so I don't think you'd be able to sell it. Unless you can see, is there a debuff? Oh yeah, difficulty modifier minus four. So you'd be able, uh, no, but I didn't mouse over that. I was just messing over the damage. So yeah, you wouldn't be able to see that. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, no, there's no proof. I did the whole thing on easy. Now you know. Now you know my secret. Oh, but the thing is, I've done it. I've done it before on stream. Like the last time I played Belagar, I did the same. I did the same strategy. So there you go. Proved. Um, there are many grudges which demand satisfaction. The sure are all mad here. That's what it's all about. Saragoth says, "Yeah, I think you're lying. This whole stream is just pre-recorded. Indeed." I want to recommend Dune in the theaters for anyone who hasn't seen it. I second that recommendation. Dune is fantastic. Real, real, yeah, really lovely movie. Like, you know, really beautiful. Um, um, yeah, I'm entranced. I, I can't wait for the sequel. Um, the sequel's been greenlit, by the way. Anyone who was worried that maybe... If there's no minimap, it's later. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. So, yeah, sorry. I, I forgot about that. I don't like I don't play anything else except legendary so I don't even know what I don't even know what it looks like when you don't play legendary. But yes, you're right. I remember that. There's no there's no mini map when you're on legendary. So you can tell at least that all the battles were in legendary. Can you turn off you can't turn off the mini map, can you? I'm going to start my own campaign thanks to the motivation. Oh, awesome. That's great news, David. M. Um oh yeah, I forgot to rename your um your rangers. We've got some rangers to rename now. Do that right now. I suspect the sequel was greenlit many months ago when Legendary was going to sue Warner Brothers for HBO Max day and date release. Oh, uh, really? I don't know what that means. Um, but I thought I thought that if it did really bad in the cinemas and didn't make any money, because I think that it cost like $160 million to make it. Um, so I thought that, you know, if they only made like $100 million and they lost $60 million on it, then... They probably wouldn't make a sequel, you know, but um, but uh, why do you say is that because I don't really understand what what you what you said. I don't really understand what that means. I mean, is that is that because you're saying like they would have made heaps of money from that, so they automatically knew that it was going to be worth it? Is that what you is that sort of what you mean? And being able to pause and quarter speed. Oh, I don't know any about this stuff. Hey, Josh Arnold, thanks for subscribing, man. Much appreciated. So many subscribings today. That's cool. Must mean that some new people have found us from from the video, or maybe from uh, Legends, from Legend, um, from Legend giving us his endorsement. I might read that message again. I love, I love, uh, I love external validation from Legend. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. Uh, what did he say again? Where was it? <clears throat> oh, I lost it now. Oh, here we go. Really good and cheesy Belagar guide. Seal of approval. There you go. Legend seal of approval. Hey, Thorin Nash. Oh, Thorin's got a good dwarven name. I love Thorin Oakenshield. I love, um, like, I mean, The Hobbit's not as epic as The Lord of the Rings, but I do really love, like, Thorin Oakenshield as a character. I love that just, you know, kind of, he's not an anti-hero. Uh, yeah, he sort of is an anti-hero, I guess. No, not really. I mean, so, nah, not really. But he's just sort of, like, got that sort of tragedy about him, you know? Like, it's pretty cool. Okay, so we've got Lizard Rocky Rangers, Merloan's Huntsman, and David M. God, you're not giving me much to work with, David M. It's an extremely unlaw-friendly name. Um... Mm. Daviman? That's that sounds weird. <laughs> um, how do I make this sound like a dwarf name? I might need some help here, guys. What's a dwarf name? A dwarf version of a name that sounds vaguely like David M. Mm -mm. Davim, Davim, Davim. There we go, Davim. Davim's, Davim's, uh, crossbows. Boom. Dowie, Dowie M. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one. No, Davim's crossbows. There we go. Davirimum. Davirimum. 
That sounds pretty good. Uh, Devon. We're going with Devon. It's good. All right. I kind of like the, I kind of like naming naming um what is it? I kind of like renames when they're units because they're like because then you get to give them like cool names and also like they can die so it makes it more like exciting to see who's who's um Dwalid Manbos. I don't know. That sounds a bit weird, Varynx. Sounds like some it's got some sort of sexual component to it or something. I don't know. Sounds a bit weird. I know, I don't, I know you probably didn't mean it that way, but just that's that's what it conjures up in my mind. Maybe I've got like a dirty mind or something. Oh yeah, we want to start going for sharpened weapons now. Um, I would like to get the cooldown reduction. Nah, sharpened weapons probably more important. Actually, do we actually get the sharpened weapons? It's or is it like you have to choose or something? What, what, how does that work again? Is it? It's acting some really weird way, isn't it? I don't know. We're getting both. Getting both. Yeah. But I think if we leave the army and we rejoin, it screws it up and you don't get everything anymore or something. I'm not too sure. What you have never done the manbo? That's where it's at. I don't know what a manbo is. <laughs> Darwood Ma Mountain Strider. It's pretty good. These are all pretty good names, but I feel like I already went. I already did it now. Darwin's crossbows. Darwood. Actually, yeah, Darwood is better. Fuck it. All right, sorry, David M. We're gonna we're gonna change it. Darwood is pretty pretty good. So Darwood is the dwarven version of da David. So that works good. And then we've got. Mountain manbows. I don't know what manbow is in. I feel like you're. It's one of those things that's only weird if you make them weird. I feel like you guys are. It's. I feel like it's weird. There you go, Darwin Mountain Strider. I hope you. I hope you approve, David. I feel like that's a pretty solid dwarven name, Darwin M. All right, what do we got going down now? Armor is for mm. maidens. On the way. David approves. Nice. All right, thanks, team. We've got an excellent team of name creators here. Yeah, this money thing's kind of... <clears throat> Giant Slayer. Hmm. I really want this um you know. yes i am ready to parlay give me the trade you dicks fool's action. maybe they're not gonna do it dicks affirmative agreed So be it. Oh, I could have just done that to start with. Didn't have to give him all that so, money. Greeting, stranger. I'll ignore that. <clears throat> Alright, that's cool. Can roll with that. Darwood is actually a normal Polish version of David. Yeah, I know, but it sort of sounds like Dwarven though. Yeah. Uh yeah, it's not just Polish. I've heard Darwood is in other other languages as well, I'm pretty sure so real. In Greek, it's David. David. I think it's still pronounced. It's still spelled. Um, I've actually bought. I'm celebrating the, the start of the week of the door. For those of you who don't know, I was um. Oh, the you weren't here earlier. Shit. Um, I didn't. Um, I didn't play any dwarves for like the last nearly two months because I was waiting for, for this to finish this video before I did it, and um. And um, so I've been, yeah, basically been hanging out to play dwarves. And so now finally the video is finished. So now it is the time of the dwarf. Oh, Slayer! 
Keep me busy! Okay, so we got 300 plus 470, so it's nearly 800. Then I better not be fucking out of range. And then we got another... No, it's about 950 plus 750, so about 1700 gold. Um, so, you know, we almost paid for one turn's worth. Good, senseless violence. Gotrek, Gernishan, keep up. Gotrek, Gernishan. Gotrek, Gernishan. Gotrek, Gernishan. Gotrek, Gernishan. Yeah. I think that's about and as much as we need. Look at this. Fuck. It's going to take so many turns to. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, we need to um, get over here and start smashing these, smashing these dudes. Smashing some dudes. So yeah, we want to wipe these guys this turn. That's pretty rough. On my way. Why do people keep running away so far? Ah. Master Engineer at your service. I'd rather eat a squeak. On to vengeance. Right, that gives us our thanes and it makes our heroes all get their 90 percent physical resist cap so uh well yeah not all of them but actually no we did we gave the five percent to everyone did we pretty much um so send you After Thorek. Journeying. And send. Fucking 400 gold per turn. It's pretty rough. But, you know, it's got to be done. This time. Send you orders. to meet. Karen. And we'll send another one. Yes. Do you meet the Bretonian Lords? You have my allegiance. Yeah, that should be about to do it. Um <clears throat> So this seems far because you dwarf, short dwarven legs, maybe, yeah. Ready. Zorikas. I'm gone. Cool. Okay. Now we need to Lee 
leaving. Do we'll be able to... We should be able to, like, make it over there, shouldn't we? Hmm, I'm not sure. I feel like I should be able to make it from here, but I'm a bit worried that we won't. So, yeah, I mean, some more, a bit of extra replenishment would be good, but... Moving out. Just in case. Iron Hammer. What can I do? Watch. I answer to clan and hold. So be it. It is agreed. Hmm. Yeah, we're struggling pretty bad on the monies right now. Um. What? Greeting, stranger. Not likely. Right. No, sir. By the comet. Friendship is more valuable than gold. Or so. As you say, sir. Dark are these times. Onward. Come, come, kin. Let us feast and drink. Mm -hmm. The Empire. Who calls? Valiant Lord. Protector of the Oak. You do well to kneel before me. Hoef agrees. All right, starting to turn around now. Hey, Nelly Spreader. Bugman Doomstack with Snipe from Thanes is super strong. Defeated 10 green scam armies in a row. <laughs> wow. That's cool. Uh, yesterday I started a campaign in Zavalon with random start mod. I started in Red Eye Mountain. Would you believe that because of the climate and Northwood invasion penalties? I'm really poor as a high elf. <laughs> Belgar is a broke ass bitch, unfortunately. Yeah, I was doing really well like last campaign because I got I had this um I had this thing going super well where I was I was actually get, running two um running two at the same time. Two sets of uh um what do you call it? Two sets of rebels. But um yeah, I don't have that going on right now. Monster Slayer! Unfortunately. But it's okay, it will all work out in the end. Ready. <clears throat> this time. It doesn't really matter, like I don't really care what happens to my economy. As long as Belagar's army is still strong, then it's still it's just all good basically. I wonder if I should wait for him. I kinda wanna bring him with us. True king of eight peaks. It's another turn wasted, though. Hmm. Bugman Doomstack is outrageously strong. Yeah, yeah, but it's way too expensive, though, at the moment. Like, I can't afford it right now. The, um, this, the normal, normal range of Doomstack is fine. Don't need, don't need the Bugmans. Late game, though. Definitely want to get it later on. Oh, yeah, so, sorry, my story was that, yeah, I've been denying myself dwarfs for the last two months, so it is now the time of the dwarf. And also, I don't normally do this because I'm already a fat bastard, but I bought snacks. I'm having snacks. Well, I haven't had it yet, but I'm about to have some right now. This is my um, this is my this is my like Lembas bread. You know, actually no, Lembas bread's no good. That's elvish, isn't it? This is my uh, dwarven hardtack, flavorless salt biscuits. That's what we like. Uh, but yeah, I don't normally snack when I play games, but um, but you know, I'm sure a lot of you can probably identify with the uh, the concept of having like a coffee and sweet biscuits just sitting next to you in a little pile while you game and it sounds pretty idyllic so yeah i thought to celebrate the time of the dwarf i'm gonna snack while i game today uh 
Uh, but uh, it's just that it takes longer than it should to recruit them, and their ranger building is rather inconvenient. Oh, it's also that they're super expensive. Like, they cost, like, quite a lot more. They cost, like, 50% more, I think. I think they cost 50% more um, than the normal ones. So, like, we're already fucked anyway, as it is now, you know? So we can't really afford it. Um, oh, shit. I'm, like, I just need to get over there and smash... Just need to get over there and smash them. Are these guys not? Are these guys not recruiting? No. Shit, we could probably just recruit some more warriors and then just go and smash them. Can't afford to right now, obviously. But. Hmm. Interesting. Where's the best spot that I can sit here to get the rebels more effectively? I'm not sure. Hmm. Welcome to my private study. Wine of palest gold will wet our palate. Disagree with that. Well, let's see if we can do some dwarf packs now. I will. <laughs> sort this, um, sort all this out. It is a great day. Aye. Those who displease me do not like I am Morgiana. Fay Enchantress of Bretonia. No evildoer may receive the blessings of the lady. Yes? You have a proposal? We are willing to hear a it. A weak order. Sigma's will! What? I am ready to parley. I hope your words are wise. Empire's Didn't really work out that yes. well with the um, with Order Princess because I, I paid them like 600 gold last turn. You know and then I, I just asked them for 300 gold back. It's like, oh, you know how I gave you all my money? Like, could I just could borrow like a cup of sugar back off here again? You Shield of the mighty deep wood welcomes you beneath. All right, that should get us off the bread line just for like another one turn. Um, so that's good. I coffee while you game and suddenly it's all cold. Yeah, I'm experiencing that right now. I made this piping hot coffee just a second ago and now it's completely dead cold. Anyway, so here we go. He's uh, having some of our, lim I mean, hardtack, dwarven hardtack. It's completely flavorless salt biscuit, but in reality, it's not. Mm. Very nice. It'll power us through for a good eight hour, solid hour, eight hour gaming session. Ready to do the guild spinning. Yes. Lund's air. Yeah, right. I'm gonna um You have my hammer. Yeah, I'm gonna wait for him just so we can get our full stack going. Did a bit more money there. You're gonna go up and get me some more uh empire. Get me more some more of that sweet, sweet empire money. Um and we'll get Karakadran. <clears throat> His agreement. An oath is an oath. I wonder if we should go and visit Karaza Karak first. Just in case they die. I don't think that they will, but you never know.
go outside for one second and Mercy already has a full stack of Rangers. <laughs> They're not Rangers. Rangers is an Australian um, Australian word for uh, people with red hair. The Empire. It's kind of a derogatory time, but a lot of derogatory terms in Australia are sort of terms of endearment as well, so it's a bit hard to tell sometimes. Oh yeah, we need to, um, I forgot, we need to get a second army to defend, um, Karakaizor from, um, from, um, yeah, this economy thing's really working out a lot worse in this time, this time around. Mm, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have. Man, just another fucking... Shit. All right, we'll have to raid, I guess. All right, so if we're see. I feel like if I go there, then the rebels are going to spawn here. And if I go here, then they're going to spawn there. Um, maybe if I go here. Follow my lead. Oh shit! That's uh, fucking movement. What about if I go like there? Eat up the miles. No. Come on! <sighs> Ahead! Whatever. I stand defiant. Very well. I will do as you are. Seeking vengeance. Is there a reason you're trying to hold Scaven Blade when it makes you nothing? Oh no, I was I was trying to farm um, I was trying to farm both Scaven Blade and Tabaro simultaneously for rebellions to get massive amounts of um, Oath Gold, which <laughs> I have successfully done in the past. But I decided to be a bit clever this time and bring Belagar back up here uh, one or two turns earlier so that I could attack Skarsnik earlier. But then that meant that um, that Gotrek got his ass kicked and he then like was too weak to take out this rebel army so they took over tomorrow and then it's just like it's all sort of snowball out of control um but yeah basically yeah the, if you do it just if you do it just right you can actually just keep hiring heaps of just keep hiring warriors constantly and merging them together and you still keep making enough money from just all the battles and everything and you just end up getting shitloads of earth gold but um yeah i didn't do it right <laughs> basically but that's okay we're gonna because we're demonstrating now when you do it wrong and nothing works out the way you want how you can still salvage it basically my theory with Belagar is that it doesn't really matter like once you're at this stage that i'm at now where you've got a full stack of rangers and you've got your heroes somewhat leveled up um you just you can't lose them really you know like you just as long as you don't lose your army then you're all good it doesn't really matter if you lose Karak Izor or whatever you know because you can just go somewhere else take over their shit and start again you know it doesn't yeah it doesn't really matter like it's all your strength is in your army not your settlements really so it's yeah like you can just conquer some you can conquer Karak Peaks or something else over here you can confederate Thorgrim you can confederate Ungrim and just move up here if you want you know like there's yeah that's kind of like my backup plan I guess that's not what it's not what I was going for but you know if all else fails you know we can actually kind of afford to just lose everything and um and start over again It is agreed. Yeah, well, like I was saying before, it's sort of, you can do it two ways. You can either use the ranger stack, the ranger stack with the tanks, or you can just retreat the rangers and just kill everything with Belagar and the um, and the Rune of Wrath and Ruin, you know? With spite, Rune of Spite and Rune of Wrath and Ruin. So it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty good enough. 
Hmm. An ad? Aye. Let's hear what you have to say. Yeah, that's another thing I was thinking is I can take the Confederation with the Corignorn. Or I can maybe spin it out a bit longer by... Very well. Go on then. No reason for it. Never. Yes. To war! Welcome, friends of the Dowie. Oh, well, at least that solved our initial, that solved our immediate money problems. I think that was the other thing that happened as well, because, because I came up north earlier, a little couple of turns earlier with Belligar this time, and it was like, I didn't get my... Agreed. Oh uh, yeah, that's the other thing too. In this campaign, I didn't get the early trade agreements. Like in the first version that we restarted, um, we had... Um, we had, uh, you know, non-aggression packs and I think trade agreements already with some factions on turn one. In this one, they all didn't like us and they didn't give us any agreements. So that little like 50, 100 gold per turn, like the whole time adds up. And also because I came up here early, um, in my other version of it, I come up here a bit later, so I already had these positive relations um, with these factions. So I was getting these money things earlier as well. So yeah, everything's like... High end of the same, but slightly tweaked from how it was in the video. And so it's just sort of was a bit tighter. But anyway, it's all fixed now. We're fine. All good again. Mm. Is there a bit of a wall here? Or... Mm. Yeah, maybe a bit of a wall. That sounds cool. Money would be good too, but it's fine. Yeah, I might actually have to cancel that again if I'm too broke. There we go. Alright. Sorry. Uh, term one agreements are seriously underrated. You can testify that make a difference. Yeah, yeah. In, in Because like, yeah, like in my other ones, most of my other ones, I got like, you know, non-aggression straight away with uh, Border Princes, um, possibly... Balthazar Gelt and I got Taslin fairly early as well. And you know, and then some of those turned into trade agreements as well, whereas in this time this time they were a bit more resistant. But um but yeah, but those yeah. That like fifty hundred gold like from turn one definitely adds up. True king of eight um I was thinking the Crooked Moon Mutants Gits. We're gonna come for us, but an uncertain path. No, oh, actually, Thorgrim's doing all right, isn't he? Okay, so we basically want this guy to come all the way down here and discover Thorek, so we can confederate him. Any idea what do you to do when you play with a random start mod and you're surrounded by at least five scaven clans on three sides? I have no idea who's who lives in which ruins. Lol. <laughs> I don't know, Saragoth. It's not the kind of challenge that I like to take on. Um, I, yeah, I can't. I just, if you want me to appreciate the fuckness of your situation, then I appreciate it. But, um, but yeah, I just can't offer you any advice. Sorry, buddy. In The Hobbit, the dwarves ate a long life biscuit called Cram. It was made by the men of the dale and the lake, then adopted by the dwarves. Mostly flour, oatmeal, hard, but wholesome. Yeah, that's what we're eating here. Pretend Cram, but it's actually really sugary biscuits. Hmm. Hmm. Thanks for that, Clock Monkey. Yeah, I thought. I thought I remembered them talking about the dwarves. The dwarves having their own thing. Um. But uh, yeah. Hey, Hoback. Is this the legendary two-turn rune of spite rerun? 
Yeah, basically. But it's not actually guaranteed turn two. You got a 50% chance of getting on turn two. If you don't get an item in the first battle, then you don't get it till turn five. So it should really be turn two to five, Rune of Spite. But that's not as catchy for the title, so. Everyone remembers Lembus. Yeah, yeah, I remember, Lem I remember the name of Lembus, but I kind of thought I also remembered them. So there was some sort of comparison between Lembus and like other not Lembus bread, you know? All right. I see you drop scat all over. I like them scared. So. Dwarf tax, dwarf tax. Everyone pays dwarf tax. Sorry, that's the dwarf tax song. Yeah, as long as we can meet like a new person like every turn, then our dwarf our dwarf guys can kind of pay for themselves. Approach us, friend, and make your offer. I don't agree. Hmm. Who else were they at war with? Oh, these dudes. Let's get these dudes, because most of the other wood elves normally declare war on us. You dare trample the earth of Athaloran. The forest does not welcome your kind. No, just no. All right, just give me, like... Give me three handy. Give me three handy and we'll call it even. All right, boom. Done deal. You don't like me, I don't like you. Just give me the three handy. That's all I'm saying. I think the dwarves had dried meat. Oh, it's been a long, long time. So they've trespassed the Whistleland in the past, but not currently. So I'm guessing they're still all around here somewhere. <clears throat> so yeah, it seems like he's um seems like Skarsnik's not quite on the march towards us yet. Onward! Using guild roots. So be it. To war! Now we from another hold arrive. Tis a great day. Hmm. It's weird that they don't want to confederate anymore. Oh, we lost did we lose relations somehow? Hmm. Nice. No. One rug. Come, come, kin. Let us feast and... Zorikas! Yes. be done.
Should I... I don't know. Should I just abandon Skaven Blight? Do I really care about the... Um, do I really care about the... With gold anymore? I kind of like want to, you know... I kind of, it's sort of like sunk cost, the sunk cost fallacy, you know? Like I've already like wasted so much money, <laughs> you know, making trying to make it happen that um, I feel like I have to continue with it now to make it all worthwhile, you know? Hmm. Together, lads. For the ancestors. There's a spot here. There he is. I was gonna say there was a spot here where he was. He was hidden. But it's not anymore. Without delay. For Grimnir. Ah, oh, as you command. Zorika. Axes out, lads. I know. Nothing can stop us with haste. Shifting faster. He got a bit too close. There we go. Visible again. Who's his guardian? Uh, okay. So yeah, if he sort of stays just inside the guardian. Then he's got, uh, what, 30... 57% resistance. Oh, is that including... Not including that? Or is that including that? I don't know if that's including that or not. Doing too well here, I keep trying to Yes, Lord. Move now. I keep my own. A worthy order. Could their hex spitting tongues out? Who's with? Yeah, we ain't gonna catch any of them. Alright, well that didn't work. That's fine, we got I think we killed one. Uh, Oath God's only good early game when purchasing runes, late game when you have the resources to craft useful items, in my opinion. 
Well, we already have the resources. Well, we don't, no, we no, we don't quite have the resources. Well, we could have the resources whenever we want to build, um, uh, to build uh, Iron Water's tankets. We've got enough to build our first one now. Now um, I just need to rebuild my dwarf beer thing again. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of the whole point of it. Like in this particular one, the whole point of it is to get two um, two times Iron Warden's tankets for. Um... Hey Stephen, hey thanks for dropping by, man. And thanks for the thanks for the kind words. Glad you appreciated the uh, appreciate the video. I, um, yeah, I put a lot of effort into that one. Um, yeah, no. So the, the specific reason that I'm farming Oath Gold for this particular campaign is to get early Iron Warden's tankets because we're already like pretty beasty. But um, you put an Iron Warden tanket on Belagar and on um, and on Harkenhuff, Hark and then all of a sudden it's like even more beast. Throny is the average Halloween version of Thoric. <laughs> So yeah, we did the rename already, David. You can take you off the list. Yeah. See, we've got now. I've got enough for our first. Um, good night. Oh, shit, we yeah, we're really struggling on the money wise, don't we? Hmm. Yeah, we need to take a long, hard look at ourselves. I mean, I guess we could just do the Pavo version. Just go like one. New plans for a new doom stack like the White Lions? <laughs> no, no, no plans for another White Lions doom stack anytime soon. That is agreement. It depends what you mean like by the like the white like, it depends what you mean by like the White Lions. Um the White Lions were pretty crazy. <laughs> I don't think there's anything like that. Unless I mean you could just do the same thing with like Phoenix Guard, that'd be better. Do we gonna take these guys out with this army now? Well, I guess if we can't, we can always just retreat. Oh, yeah. I kind of want to do that. How much money do you reckon we'll get? What's the, what's the sack rating? Sack level. Where's the. Doesn't tell me the sack amount. Hey Steven, whoa, geez, that's a big super chat, man. Very generous, thank you. Um, that's not necessary. You're already a member, man. You're like, yeah, you don't need to do that. But uh, yeah, thank you. Very nice of you. I better read. I better give you a rename. Get you in here. We'll get you into the. We'll get you on the field. Gorit's not a bad dwarf name, I think. Put an extra T on it to make it Dwarvish. There we go. Gorit's Mountaineers. You join uh, join the ranks of our elite Lizaraki Rangers, Merloan's Huntsmen, Darwood Mountain Striders Rangers, and Gorit's Mountaineers. There we go. You can't sack us rebels. Yeah, you're right piece of shit um I reckon in in blood. fuck I it let's do it life. do you reckon that we could win this like I feel like if I tried to fight this manually I'd like I'd still lose <laughs> but I don't know do you reckon if we could grind them down like if we surround like three units of dwarfs onto each one of those like or would we still just die? It's those great swords, I know. Do you reckon we could kill them? And like, as in, if we order, we're going to lose what five units plus the rest of our army is going to get wrecked as well. But if we fought it in manually, do you reckon we'd be able to do any better? Or we'd still they just, they will spread the fuck out of you? Yeah. Fuck it, I'll just take the auto resolve, hey. They come Kashuk, 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 ah! Keep me busy! <laughs> oh, 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 that was brutal. Lane claim. Well, 
that uh God did we get any money out of that or what jesus that was pretty expensive little uh God pretty trick. expensive exercise Fuck, I don't know if we'll have enough money to, um, I don't know if we'll have enough troops to actually hire them. Hmm, interesting. All right, let's see what else we can do up here. Um, all right, we've still got... Oh, they got wiped. Okay, that's cool. What do you got going on? To war! Come, come, kin. Let us... Yeah, I was expecting a bit more money out of that, but, but yeah. Um, but that's okay now. Uh, yeah, see, we need more money. So we need to. If we could get this, if we could get this oath gold rebel factory going properly, you know, it would actually be all right. But we just, you need a bit of money to. You need a bit like yeah. I need to be not fucking on the verge of bankruptcy to make it work. You know. Uh, like, let's see who else we can stooge some money out of. Who hasn't paid us their dwarf tax for a while? What are you guys? These guys are just being such dicks. Like, be friends with us. Greetings, stranger. Yes. Welcome, ancient allies. In these troubled times, dwarves are a fine sight to behold. No, sir. I'll ignore that. Bro, fucking hell. These humans are cheap. Is Avalanche meant to be poor? I think Avalanche got like lots of wheat and stuff, like they are like the breadbasket of the Empire or something. But uh, I don't know if they're particularly wealthy. The forest come, the beauty of Athel. What do you need? I should have your beard for entering our hall. He wants my beard. Oh, when Castle's got five settlements. Shit, we want to go after them. Um. Screw it. It is tough. That way from another hold arrive. Tis a great day. All right. Don't think so. Let us begin. Mm, as much as I would like to just randomly attack uh, a grand start and raid all their money, we can't really do that, so. Um, yeah, so we're just doing some corporate raiding on. Um, Doing some corporate raiding on Karakone, because I hate Karakone, so we're just gonna just go out of my way to just destroy them and delete them off the map. 
Um, and also we're going to just sell all of their... Just take in controlling interest in Karakurn. And now we're just going to like liquidate all their assets. And just delete them out of existence. That's how we roll. Ruthless, ruthless corporate reader. All right, we'll change this guy's name to not uh, be illiterate. It means he needs an archivist. That Rurik is actually that feather faction leader. Good, give him an insulting name so that Karakone will forever be hated. Opinion of Belligar's Orcsbane talent, yay or nay? Um, Ready. And, uh, I mean, yeah, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, you, the, the first part of the campaign that we're fighting right now, which is the most critical part to get right, you know, you don't have any orc, you don't have any green skin enemies. Um, and then by the time we go over to fight um, Grumbrindor, no, not Grumbrindor. See you, husband and waifu. Thanks for dropping by, man. Um, by the time we go over to fight um, uh, Grimgore, like, you know, like, yeah. I, I don't know. I think, like, also, you know, most of the killing power from Belgar's army is from the Rune of Spite, the Wrath and Ruin, and from the Rangers, which is all, like, ranged. None of it's melee damage, you know? Um, so, yeah. I'd say no. Like, yeah. So I'd say you don't need it early. You do need everything else that I've got. Like, there's no way I'd take that before any of the points that I've spent here. Like, get Lightning Strike, get um, Tunnel Warfare, Ancestral, Age of Conquest, Plus, I would I like some replenishment as well. I'd still put replenishment ahead of this. Plus, then I'd go into red line and take tactician. Tactician, I put that ahead of that. Then even after that, I'd probably go into yellow line to make Belligar tougher, or I'd just go into red line more and finish off the rangers. And, you know, then I'd go back into Belligar's, get blade shield, um, uh, maybe missile resistance. Uh, don't need that. Don't need that. Or they local recruit. Nah, I don't need that. Um, then, like, I'd probably even take ambush chance before I take that. So it's like it's not like an, it's not like a nay, a complete nay. It's just like so low priority that you know I'd probably be level forty. If I was level thirty nine and I had one point left, then you know, maybe just for the RPs. But yeah. It's just, yeah. The only time I would take it is if you're doing some weird themed oh, army yeah. of like melee guys or something. Revenge incarnate. To battle. <laughs> And this doesn't even do anything. I'm just going to turn off my air conditioning because it's getting a bit cold now. Sorry guys, I just got the kettle got the kettle boiling as well. Mm. 
All right. You know what this is making me feel like? Do another bell. I know another Grumbrindle campaign as well. Well, I mean, it's not like I want to stop this campaign and start a Grumbrindle campaign. This is like I want to start a Grumbrindle campaign as well. I'm going to play... Maybe I'll play Belagar during the night time. And then I'll have a sleep. And then I'll get up during the daytime and play Grumbrindle as well. Because it is the time of the dwarf. Yeah, what do we do then? Vengeance calls. Vengeance. For the High King. I. Gazukan, Gazukita. Go. Ready to fight. Why is everyone invisible? Oh, okay, cool. This is working out nicely. Uh, maybe we should pull these guys back a bit. Too late, they all got spotted. in the jug indeed oh yeah we gotta get those uh we gotta get those emojis going well uh yeah i've been really busy with that video but um now that we've sorted that out we'll get some uh we'll get some more emojis happening Not doing very well on this end. <laughs> this guy is trying to catch him. Right, kill him. Kill him. And these tanks are getting a bit wrecked. Drain them. 
Mm, nah, I don't think we can really catch anyone now. Um. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fine. We can't really catch anyone. That's fine. Got the extra five, six hundred gold from killing one of them at least. Have some Bicky. Time of the dwarf. Until you see an AI cast a hero, see something cool, and you want to play another race with magic. <laughs> Sarah Goth, I think it's extremely clear that random start with Ilaria was not a good idea, and that you are maskist. Oh yeah. I knew there was a reason I was doing this. It makes everything all right. Belly Gow Iron Hammer. Journeying on. You have my hammer. Hey, you in the name. Hey, Brayman. I was actually playing the other day, and um, they were actually doing some magic on me. Like, not super effectively, but sort of. Effect you know, like... True king of eight peaks. Like, um, I can't remember what spells exactly. It was like, they did like a burning head on me and I caught, I caught one unit like pretty solidly and kind of took out half the unit. You know, it wasn't like they did a burning head down my line and took out like six units or whatever. But, you know, normally they do a burning head just randomly into a wall or into their own unit or they target it at, like starting at your unit and pointing away from you or something like that, you know. And, um, and yeah, that it was like that was the theme of the stream. Like, they made the... And the AI cast about three different spells in different battles and they actually hit me. And I was like, what's going on? It's learning. But, um, but yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, so now we've, um, confederated Har Harakone, so we've got some, we've got some beer. Um, yes. so we shall get me some iron water tank it. Uh, but yeah, so this was the whole point of farming the Oath God was so I could get this Iron Warden's tankards like fairly early. Um, it's turn 19. Um, if it had gone a bit better, we could have had our first one a bit earlier. But, um, you know, it's still still fine. And now, at least with one now, we can start like sharing it around between whoever's the most damaged each battle, you know. Um, I want to get at least two, get one for Hulk enough as well. Um, but if we could get, yeah, an extra, yeah, whatever. Until we've got, when we've got enough for everybody, that'd be ideal, but yeah. I wanted a challenging campaign as high elves, but when I played Teclas earlier, it turned out to be extremely easy. I like this one, but I'm scared of nukes. I can only have one army. I, I feel like that would be cooler with Teclas, because Teclas is more like a wandering kind of guy, whereas Alariel's like, her whole thing's defensive, and she's all about defending Uthwan, so it's sort of just really fucking weird and... This seems wrong for her to be randomly off somewhere else while Wolf One's being ravaged, you know? Um, yeah, I feel like if you're going to do, like, that sort of random start campaign, you should have played, like, uh, oh, yeah, Alithanar, probably. Alithanar, yeah, Teclas, or maybe Imric. Although, I kind of feel like Imric should stay home as well. I feel like Imric's, you know, he should be at home with his dragons, 
in his castle or whatever. Oh, what? Oh, because it's so damaged that it can't even recruit at all. Oh, all right, fine. Gotrek, Gernishan. Gotrek, Gernishan. You know, these are motivating. But isn't it motivating you just to get back to Ulthwan again? Most effective AI magic is the Skaven Mage in every siege battle that casts non-stop warp lightning. Yeah, the yeah, Skaven are probably the best magic because of the warp lightning, because it targets the units. Anything, anyone that's got like a wind spell or something, they always generally do it in some wacky direction that screws up. Walls up and try and hold on to this? I don't know. Kind of feels like it might be kind of worth it almost. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. The clan honor. Fate provides the plot. All right, things are uh, we're, we're back in business. A couple of uh, sneaky diplomacies and a, uh, a confederation, and we're back in business. Last time I confederated Carrick Norn, um, but this kind of works out okay as well. And we've also pulled everybody into war with um, Skarsnik, so we might need to... Oh, what? Dicks. How long did it take for walls and tier 3 money to pay for itself? Yeah, a pretty long time. But it's not really about it paying for itself for me. I was more like, just more like, um, you know, in game just to sort of own it, I guess. I don't know sort of where I was going. I guess it's not really a very solid plan. Gotrek Gernishan. Like, is there any, is there any, oh man. Like, if I go, like, here. That's beyond me. Gotrek like how far away around like like he's gonna go the wrong way isn't he where's the slaughter Godtrek Gernishan oh so he's gonna come in that direction because there's a bump here ah oh, okay now I kind of I kind of get it I guess there's like a bump here so when you attack he's gonna come like um he's gonna come like over here and then he's gonna attack in that direction and then that's gonna push him back that way so even though i'm coming from here it's like just a complete fucking mess really god damn it
Is he tired? God damn it. Not even fucking. Screw Whatever. <laughs> Had enough of this. Making ground. Which way? Oh, he, got, he died. Good. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. As long as um, he doesn't. Yeah, as long as I don't have to. So now we get an error of the rebellion in two turns, which is cool. Armed and ready. Got I can, I can dig with. I can. I can vibe with that. Lord of Clan Borgrim. Got another forty oath gold. My anger burns Very good. Bright. Garage. <clears throat> Godtrek Jernishan, Monster Slayer. A good old scrap. No more underway jumps in that area for me. Lord of the Angland. Very well. I will do as you. Shall I? Should I like farm this some more or should I go after Skarsnik? I mean, I probably should go after Skarsnik if I want the free rune because he might get killed. I don't really care that much if we miss out on the other free uh, rune, but um, I suppose we should at least make an effort to. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. We should at least make a bit of an effort to go for it. Uh... Oh, so he's actually yeah, he's in Wissenland now, with two with two or more armies because he's got like fifty points of um Dally, of uh he's done like fifty points on Wissenland. Um, hmm. Okay. In that case, we might occupy this now. Oh, I forgot to. Ah, oh, shit! I should have fought the battle so that I could have um. Could have um, healed um, healed Belgar. Didn't think about it. It's all right. No one who jumps that way. Oh, right, you get you lost an army against the wood elves. That's um, it's no good. Chapters to write. Destiny guides me. Illogical. Aye. 
Forwards. Oh shit, the vampires are... It is agreed. Jeez, maybe I should go and save uh, the Empire from the vampires. The throng is mustard. All right. By Sigmar's will, come in peace. So be it. Lord of Come, the beauty of Athel. Azray. I should have your beard for entering up. Our... Right. I wonder if we got rid of the barracks in Scaraven Blight, if that would give us more, um, like, weaker rebellions, maybe. Two hundred gold? How much is it to Hmm, I don't know. I don't know if I really am going to bother to I'm probably going to abandon it again soon enough. <clears throat> Attack. Just want him to be tanky, you know. Might be good to have another, another scout though. I answer to clan and hold. Hmm. Well, it's good to be back. It's good to be back in the streaming. Um, yeah, I've had way too many days off lately. I think I've taken off like four or five days off streaming in the last two weeks. Um, whereas, you know, I normally stream, like, pretty much every day. Yeah, I feel like I've been away. But now I'm back. And it is good to be back. No work for the next nine days. Just, just watching, catching up on shows, watching, eating, not eat, eating, sleep. Yeah, I'm eating, sleep. See ya, Havak. Thanks, man. Have a good day. Oh yeah, what am I going to do for my daytime campaign? Because I think I'm going to start another campaign that I'm going to play on the other. Like, after this stream, I'm going to go to bed for like five or six hours. And then I'm going to get up and I'm going to start some other stream. Or maybe I'll do Dash Dash's Chaos campaign. That could be cool. Like, I'm, I wouldn't mind playing Warhammer 3. Wish that was out. But it's not. Alright. Oh, here we go. What? Hmm. You wanted Grumbrindle, didn't you? Yeah, well, yeah, we could start another, we start a Grumbrindle campaign. But I'm, I don't know, I'm a bit worried that if I start a Grumbrindle campaign, it might, like, burn me out on dwarfs too fast. Oxyodal? Yeah, I keep, I don't know, I don't know why, like, I keep starting Oxyodal campaigns, but then they just, I don't know, they just don't, like, excite me that, I don't know, they just, oh shit, we got double rebellions. Eat up the miles. Let 
Let us begin. For the wisdom of Valea. Yes. Now, oh, why did I do that? No, it's, yeah, I don't know, I just did that randomly for some reason. How about, if you, um, how about you pick a faction you like and play random start mode? No, nah, I don't really like random start mode because I like learning about the game, you know? Like, I mean, I would, I'm not against the idea if I was super bored, but like, yeah, I, li I like to learn about the game and random start mode doesn't teach you anything about the game because that doesn't happen in the, you know what I mean? Like... Yeah, it's sort of like the same thing with mods in general, you know? Like, I'd rather just play a faction that's actually in the game so that I could learn more about it, you know? Must be getting tired. I only had, like, an hour of sleep because um, I had work today. Um, yeah, I just, I thought 70 plus 28 was going to be more than 100, so I, that's why I put a lord there. And it's like, yeah, that's not how maths works. Um, oh man, I'm just, I want to do everything different to what I did. But in my guide, I said... Don't worry about Karak Izor. Go after Skarsnik and get rid of him. Even if these guys are coming here, don't worry about it. Just, you know, just don't worry about it. But, now that it's here, I kind of want to worry about it. Oh, is there anything here that can give me more garrison? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Crap. They're all up in my business. Mm, yeah, I don't think we're going to salvage much out of there. Hmm. Should I stick by my principles? Maybe I should stick to my principles and just go after Skarsnik, you know? Just do what I said I was going to do. By my hammer, it will be done. True king of eight peaks. Just screw it all. Get that dog with Gubbo, indeed I will. Gotrek Gurnishan. Hmm. So we're gonna lose we're gonna lose Karakone, but that's okay. I don't care. As long as the main objective here was to make sure that Karakone got wiped out. As long as as long as Karakone ceases to exist, then I'm happy. One rag? X. Got then. It'll actually help us with the confederations because we'll get rid of that great power penalty if we lose that. Oh, did we not meet Hockland or Middenland? Mm. Nope.
Setting forth. Oh yeah, how's um? Yeah, he's still going okay. Anad. Moving. Watch your orders. Oh, right, well, hopefully there I'll be able to go around there and then again. I think yeah, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Nope, oh, there's Kuznick. We didn't get that raid anything, raid any region belonging to the Greenskins thing. But then, if you kill the army, I'm pretty sure it goes away. Beast Slayer! Dortrek Gurdishan! Vic! I'll do the fighting! Time for some bloodletting. What the? Making ground. I swear they just, whatever direction I come from, yes. they just always go the other way. It doesn't even matter what. Uh, you know. A reckoning in blood. Old call. Godtrek. Gurdishan. This Skarsnik right there. Should I jump back to there? Now he should be trapped. I mean, he can try and jump out, but if he does that, then we'll have a chance of intercepting him. I mean, it does kind of go against my thing, which was to go after his home base, but... Onwards. Yes, let's move. Never. Ha ha. Watch. Cool. Um, I could go up and try and get. No, no, Ostermax cease to exist. I mean, <clears throat> one, two, three. Yeah, like, with the Tomb King's extended mod, I could sort of dig that because at least, because then you're like, like if you like that mod and you plan on playing it a lot, then you kind of like learn about the mod. You probably play it a few times, you know, and then maybe you're going to wait till they work on the mod some more and you'll come back to it again and, you know, so it's sort of like an investment in a way, and it's sort of worth it. But even then, because I don't know, I'm not very good at Tomb Kings, like, for me, it'd be more valuable for me to just play vanilla Tomb Kings, because I don't actually know how to play Tomb Kings very well. Um, 
but yeah so it's like I, yeah i can sort of see the appeal a bit more of playing a mod like that because at least the, it's the same every time so you get to actually learn the mod but again i still wouldn't play it because i'd want to play just vanilla tomb kings but yeah it's just, I don't know, it's kind of like the whole, it's, yeah, my opinion is always yes. kind of the same thing. It's like, I don't have anything against mods, I just would never play them really. And it's not because I'm like morally against them or anything, it's just because there's always too much vanilla stuff for me to do. You know, the mods would be there, f there are there for when I get bored of vanilla, but yeah, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a, probably a window, there's probably a chance that there's a window probably before Wama 3 comes out where I might start getting a bit bored, but there's still factions that I've barely explored, you know, probably because they're shit, but you know, they could be good. <laughs> Great, like I still have to really get into Lizardmen and Tomb Kings, both of which I think have potential, but neither of which have I really fully, you know, nearly really given a good chance. I must protest. But yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not like against mods, I just don't have time, you know? I don't, like how I don't have time to play any other games except for Wemo. I don't have time to play mods or anything else besides vanilla either, really. I, am ready I suppose right now I do while I'm on holidays, but... What? I am ready to parlay. I hope you... Took a couple of months off from Wemo and I'm enjoying my return. Yeah, it's nice to, it's nice to take some time off. I'm wondering if more YouTubers will get tired of Wemmer before Wemmer 3 comes out. Telling Spartacus City I installed Wemmer 2 because he was tired of playing it. Ah, uh, really? That's a shame. Um, oh, no, that's, it's fine. It's normal. It's normal. That's how I used to be as well. Before like before I started streaming, I used to um, burn out on Warhammer all the time. You know, I'd play it for a bit, then I'd burn out, then I'd play Mountain Blade for you know a month or something, and then I'd come back to Warhammer again. But Warhammer was always the game I played for the longest longer stretches between burnouts if you know what i mean but yeah no, i think definitely a lot of people are um i think a lot of people um will, will probably step away from wema 2 or play it less and stuff stuff like that i'm about there to be honest but i do want to play a belly eye campaign now lol um yeah i wouldn't worry about it i wouldn't resist it if i were you guys like it's just you know what i mean like uh, for me, I find it happens very suddenly. It's like I'll be ha I'll be loving it, you know, I'll be loving whatever game I'm playing, and then I think, oh, maybe I'm not loving it as much as, and then and then I just never play it again. <laughs> like as soon as it's like that slight little bit of doubt starts creeping in, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should play XCOM or maybe I should play something else, and then it's just you just can't bring yourself to play it anymore. But yeah, just it just hasn't happened to me yet. But um, yeah, I'm sure it probably will. <clears throat> play hardcore for a few months and take a few months off i think that's the way for a lot of people yeah but i think it's a testament to the game that you come back to it you know like most games you just you play it for not even a month you know most games i play them for like a weekend or a week just enough time to realize that it doesn't have the depth that i need that it doesn't it's not gonna you know it's not gonna have that replayability it's not gonna it's not going to keep challenging me and it's not going to keep offering me new things to learn and you know and all, you know what i mean like there's yeah there, there's games there's games where you like you read a bit about them you're like oh yeah it's got like you know it's got leveling up it's got this and that it's got different technical aspects it's pretty cool it's pretty cool and then you give it a try and then you're like mm, yeah but it doesn't you know it's not quite there sort of thing you know that's how i find it anyway I hope that we get to kill uh, Skarsnik. That would be good. Oh yeah, I just I just panicked and destroyed this for no reason. That's all right. Maybe I should trash it as well. Six hundred forty gold. How much does it give me? One hundred sixty-eight. Yeah, screw it. I can get rid of it. Less one less thing to worry about. Um, I want to get crossbows, but I do kind of want to go for common stones as well, just in case we want to start, um, Oh, 
right, all of our heroes are all judented up. Does um, Thoric ever confederate Karakazul when the AI plays him, or does he just, just expand like normally? Bad luck, Skazza. Skazza, old mate. I'm almost willing to launch Total War Troy for the first time to remind myself why I like Total War Warhammer 2. <laughs> Lol. I think Total War Warhammer Troy is okay. It's just. I was watching a bit of Total. Um, Happy Compy Total Wars stream yesterday. Um, he's a pretty cool uh, YouTuber if you're interested in like um, Rome 2 and Attila sort of content. Um, he, he makes some pretty good videos. Gets my nostalgia going every time I watch one of his videos when I play Tiller. Anyway, I was watching a bit of his stream and he was saying that, you know, um, yeah, Tiller's great. No, Tiller. Um, Troy's great. There's just not enough of it, you know? It's not big enough. It's not as big and as varied as um, Wemma. And yeah, I think that was a pretty accurate, you know, I think that was a pretty fair, pretty fair evaluation of it, you know? Can anyone explain why I didn't get a grudge after this green skin filth raided me last time? <laughs> Mm, all right, well that happened. I was hoping to get some more money out of that. Damn it. Oh, I should have put a Lord here, I forgot. I wish I could, like... The throng is mustered. Using guild roots. I wonder if I want this guy anymore. What other, what other uh, things have we got? Grimnir, yeah, I'd rather Grimnir. Let's go. Aye. You can go to the devil. The Grimnir one will hang around for a while as well, so we'll just, um, we'll just, um, Unhad. yeah, wait for him. Using guild roots. Do not ask me to shame our clan. Oh. oh. You have my allegiance. Protector of the lady grants you. Honor before. Welcome to Fair Britonia, Commoner. Very well. Oh, um, no. Sorry, yeah, Nanny, no, I haven't. I've noticed some weird, like, they little discrepancies Martin with stuff Lord, like that, but, um, yeah, no, I don't know. I was going to say, not really that related, but yeah, I was going to say before, there's also yeah, one where you can get where... Um, you, you get, like, when the rebels raid you, and then you get one to kill the rebels, and then you get another one to raid five times or whatever, but then if you kill the rebels, I think the one to raid five times disappears, gets aborted, even though it wasn't, like, to raid those particular ones, it was just, like, to raid any green skins or whatever, but then you just, yeah, I don't know, it's weird. At peace, for that is all I ever want. Inspired me to grow my beard back out. I thought I was done with beards, but apparently not. I uh, really, what, what, why were you done with the beards? Like, was it just got itchy one day and so you were like, screw it, get rid of it? 
Armored in faith. Bow before the rightful. That's um yeah. Sometimes that happens to me. Like in summer, it'll get it'll get it'll just get itchy one day, and I'll be like, oh screw it, I'm just gonna shave it off. But then I'll just grow it back again. You ended up looking like a muppet. You look like a muppet with the beard. Beard gets really bushy. Uh, okay, yeah. Hmm. I don't really know what to do about that. You can get all these beard oils and stuff like that, which I do use sometimes if I want to be fancy, but I don't really need them. But Mercy, how do you even wear a mask? Beard wax, I guess. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. You mean, how do I wear the wrestling mask? Beards are, beards are, they squash down. The solid, you've only got the same amount of solid face that you have without a beard. It looks like your, your face is this big, but this part's all just an illusion. You know? It's funny when you go swimming, actually, because it all goes, you know how people's hair go completely flat when they're, when they're swimming? It's the same with your beard. Your beard goes completely flat when you're swimming as well. So it looks kind of, looks a bit weird. <sighs> hmm. If these guys would intercept me, I'd be pretty happy with that. But I don't think that they will. Nope. Monster Slayer. Gotrek Gernishan. Troll Slayer. Gotrek Gernishan. Hmm. Ahead! Eat up the miles! Onwards to death! Got a short spout of body dysmorphia after shaving my big ass beard. Looked in the mirror and legitimately thought I had a tiny head having had it for so long. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, yeah. I wasn't too happy with the look after I shaved my beard off either. It's like you're so used to having like an exaggeratedly large jawline that um, you start thinking that you're like super manly and stuff. And then oh, when you go, it goes away and you're just a regular human. It's like, oh, but I was better than that. It's right. I'm growing it back now. And I look at the old picture, the old video of me when I had the, the full beard, like real long. I was like, wow, that actually looks pretty extreme. But at the time it seemed normal because it just grows slowly, you know? So you just, yeah. I've got a big head, so the beard makes it look even bigger. <laughs> well. Big heads. Uh, fuck, what are we going to do here? Um, need to find something else to give me money. I need to, I'm doing this beggar guy thing pretty hard out. Just like getting money off everyone. But like my whole economy is based on just begging money off people constantly. <laughs> just every, every nation of the world. Give me the money. Yes, let's move. Do we, do we find... Yatwa and Fevin Karon? <clears throat> By the light. Welcome, Dwarf. Do you bring news from the Mountain Realms? Most prudent. What? Lord of... How do the dwarf realms fare in these dark days? I will. Alright, I think we're, we've pretty much begged everyone that we know. Everyone that we possibly can. I don't want to hire an extra lord. Um, I kind of 
I want to hire an extra lord here to help deal with this army. They're a pretty shit army though, aren't they? No, no, fuck it, I will get the lord then. It's fine. Um... We're trying to build anything here? Mm, no, not really. Thirteen forty. Oh fuck! It's pretty expensive. Time for a reckoning. Summon me if you dare. Lund's heir. Just gonna make sure that we actually get the rebellion here by getting rid of stuff. I'd hate to have the rebellion cancel on me. Actually, how's our priest? A wise direction. <laughs> it is time. Nah. I think he would get a, uh, I think he would get a rune bearer. Revenge incarnate. Got some, like, her, her horrific economy issues going on right now. What was that hero that I didn't infection? All right, that's good. Um, I recently back, went back and deleted like 90% of my save files for Wemma 2, and I feel like my menu lag has dropped considerably. I don't know why I felt so attached to all that crap for so long. Oh, I, I have um, a backup folder where I put all my save files, and then when even within the backup folder, I have like my old backup folder. So basically, every now and again, I move all my save files, except for the ones I'm currently using, into my backup folder. And then the ones that are really old, I put in that I'm never going to look at again, I put into the backup backup folder. Um, but yeah, I still, I kind of, uh, I don't know, I do just randomly delete them as well. Where are we? Which, which settlement is this? Karak Izor. Okay. Where's... Yeah, I don't know. That's pretty straightforward. But yeah, it's, I don't know, I, yeah. I quite often regret it when I get rid of my save files, you know, there's like good stuff in there sometimes. One student, one archivist. Demon Slayer! It is settled. No, you this looks it. doesn't look too hard to defeat. Don't trick, Gurnishan. Good odds for the great death. To the next one, then. Don't trick, Gurnishan. I'll do the fighting. Your doom is assured. Gotrek Gurnishan.
Oh yeah, this guy's done. Um, I guess I should just delete him. It's not really worth the money of springing him back. The throng is mustered. A wise plan. Up, that is agreement. Hmm. To war. My axe thirsts for war. True king of eight thieves. Ancestors hear us. Kill. By the damage crown. Ah, oh, Kruv. The runes are ready. An accord bound by runic law. is horrible but taking a look at my old campaigns their maps their maps in the load menu from time to time i wonder do you reckon the auto save time takes longer when your um when your folder is too full as well Plan Angrand, Golden Order. What else do we want to keep? Nothing else, really, I don't think. We can always bring him back later on if we need to. And then cut. Paste. There we go. I've only got two saves in my save folder now. I don't know if that actually is going to make any difference, but I feel a lot more organized now. Auto save time is pretty minuscule and how it's affected from what I can tell. Ah, okay. Oh, well. Doesn't matter. I don't, I don't really notice any lag because, I, like I said, I do like move it over fairly regularly. <clears throat> what am I going to do now? I guess I want to just go red line. I kind of want to get belly guy like beefed out as well, but I feel like I should do the responsible thing and go for red line first. Uh, 
I need to keep um, doing this stuff all the time, but. Hmm, interesting. Why you don't conquer Maragliano Mag to have sea access and trade with the everybody else? Um, yeah, we could do that. There might be good little dif different differentiation to do from the um, from the guide version. It's mainly this campaign is mainly focused on um, confederations, though. Basically, the whole like the whole idea of this is just screw around until turn thirty one and then confederate Thorgrim. <laughs> like just. Like they like the only thing I have to do is like not help Thorgrim so that he hopefully gets bashed. Um, but yeah, but yeah, there's definitely a good idea. That's definitely a possibility. Um, if I was gonna do that though, I would have not deleted that Thane that was right near Ulthuan because he could have gone over and got me all the trade agreements. Um, but I mean, I could still just send a new Thane down there, I guess. We'll do the patented uh, run at the door method. Hmm. Wonder can we like shoot over the wall without? Here we go. Oh yeah, if Belligar goes in right into melee with the door, does that um, mean that his spy activates? Let's he just hit the door. Nah. Gonna actually melee something, I think. Did the minus fifteen armor though? That's pretty cool. In Scotland, the main siege tactic for fortified towers was to build the bonfire and burn down the door. Yeah, that seems like a pretty, pretty reliable way of going about it. Alright, let's do it. Actually. Oh, this guy, we forgot about him. Yes. Yeah. Whoops. There we go, we're in a spite in effect. In the Scottish history documentary Braveheart, the angry old guy just runs up and lifts the gate open. I think I think that is more accurate to real Highland warfare. I've already thought of being engaged in melee with a door causes a fit of hysterical laughter. Lol. <laughs> what they really needed was butt ladders. Sorry, I don't even have a problem with the butt ladders really. A lot of the stuff like I don't really have a problem with anymore, like, you know, you know, I used to like, you know, I used to think, oh, that doesn't make any sense because of this, this and this reason. But then after you just play for like thousands of hours with that rule set, you're just like, well, it's just the way it is. It's just the game, you know? If you don't want to play it, just don't play it. Whatever, I don't know. 
Um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't really, you know, judge that it's right or wrong. I just, you know, I just accept that it is. Um, but, I mean, sometimes I think about how I'd like things to be and stuff. But, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, the butt letters I don't really care about. But it's like, uh, it's like I don't really care about it. Like, I like the game as it is. I'm enjoying it as it is, so it's fine. But, I mean, if I was... If they asked me to, like, redesign Sieges or whatever, then I'd probably bring back in manual letters because that'd be cooler. I mean, not not that... It, no, I don't know if that's a weird way of saying it. Um, obviously, I don't know what the technical challenges they have are or whatever but i'm saying like you know if, if all things being equal if i could choose between butt ladders and like ladders being siege equipment that you pick up i'd rather this rather than being siege equipment that you can pick up but um but it's not like it bothers me overly or anything you know what i mean i'm just sort of used to the way it works now but why do the single entities also have five butt ladders Well, see, my theory is that they're not actually butt ladders. They're like drop-down ladders that the, that the defenders of the castle have built in. So in case they forget their door key, they just like, you know, they, they activate the secret secret drop-down ladders on the walls. You know, because like, this is a, like, this is a place where people live, obviously, you know. So they've got to, um, you know, they've got to have a way of getting back in if they lock their keys out or whatever, you know. So basically there's like drop-down ladders attached to all the walls under like, hidden little drop down places and then you just go and activate them and they drop down secret secret letters yeah that's how it works the most hilarious part about it is there's no reason to climb the walls at all oh, i don't know about that i i definitely like climbing walls with certain army compositions not with this, not with this one, obviously, but... I recall every ladder model in the game that every faction uses has an Empire stamp on it as well. Ah, <laughs> really? Awesome. Classic. So it's like the Tomb Kings are like sieging a lizard man thing in... A lizard man temple in South South America or whatever. And uh, they have Empire, <laughs> you know, trademark Empire, Empire Ladder Co. Ladders. The Marion or the Marienburg Ladder Company, or whatever. Well, not, no, Marienburg's not part of the Empire, I guess, but yeah. Actually, is. No, Marienburg's completely not part of the Empire, is it? They don't consider themselves to be. It's not like they're part of the Empire that's like independent or something. It's like they're just not part of the Empire at all, is that right? But they still they still, they still speak Riechspiel in uh, Marienburg, right? Mm hmm. Um, one. But, like, what? Isn't this is. Oh, Crooked Moon Mutinous Gits. True king of I thought it was, in, I it was Crooked Moon. <clears throat> Damn it. Marienburg declared independence. The emperor tried to rein them in, but it was too much work, so they said, "Screw it." Merchant Marienburg is run by merchant lords, not under control of the emperor. Yeah, yeah. I was just sort of trying to think because all of the, yeah, well, because none, none of the empire provinces are really under control of the empire. They're all independent. They're sort of independent nations essentially, but they're in a like they're in a confederacy. Um, so they're all sort of like allied with each other and have like trade agreements and all that kind of stuff. And they're, you know, supposed to help each other out in wars and stuff. 
but yeah they're not really like you know they're not really like under the control of, like like the empire and the emperor probably has to request uh aid you know like if there's a war that he needs to fight or whatever he probably needs to like request that they send him aid he can't just kind of like demand it you know what i mean um If they're all in a confederacy, why can't you confederate them? Yeah. It's a bit like that, isn't it? Billiga. I wish I could think of a really fun Empire campaign to play. That um that no recruitment campaign was pretty awesome. But um Yeah, I don't know. Something like that. Maybe the first person idea could be cool. Yeah, maybe I'll play like an, a single first person Carl Franz campaign where like I can only control like my own army. I can only lead my own army. So if I, if I have any um, allied armies, they have to just be on auto control, you know, and I uh, have to like auto and have to auto resolve every battle unless Carl Franz is there. And if if there's two armies, then I only control the one, and the other one is controlled by the AI and stuff like that. And maybe also make it that you can never, you can't confederate any other faction provinces. Unite starting province, defend it, and establish an empire colony in the Dark Elf lands. I have an idea, but it requires cosplaying as Wolfheart. Do I have to cosplay as Wolfheart, or do I just have to play Wolfheart? Excuse me. Um, you want to see a, cos a roleplay campaign where you're 100% in character, even when talking in chat, cosplay and all. Um, yeah, that seems quite hard. But I, uh, I agree that it would be a, uh, it would be a sight to see. Oh yeah, did I change the? No, no, that's fine. Hey, Fruity Loop. How are you going, man? Welcome, welcome. Leave your starting lands, not expanding. You can keep the province and establish colony overseas. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I feel like I'd like to play like Wolfheart, Middenland, something. But I'm not sure. Because. Hmm. 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 Like, I like to play Wolfheart, I like to migrate to the Empire. But. Yeah, I don't know. I'd love it if you could play as Midland, their colors are nice. Yeah, that's what I was saying, because Wolfhart kind of comes from Midland. He comes from the Drakwild Forest, right? But the thing is, if I play as Wolfhart, he has those brown and yellow colors, which I actually really like. I think Wolfhart's colors are the best um, Empire color. Out of the out of Reichland, Soland, and Wolfhart, like, I think Wolfhart's uniforms actually look the best. Um, but they don't look very Midlandish, that's for sure. Marienburgers speak Rochspiel, but fast with an accent. Maybe there'll be the Warhammer 3 pre-order DLC. I wish they would just... Oh, they really dropped the ball with Wolfheart and Nakai. I hope they fix those campaigns with Warhammer 3. What's wrong with Wolfheart, Carlos? Wolfheart's good. Wolfheart's probably like the strongest Empire Lord. You just gotta, you just gotta abandon Lustria and move back to Empire, that's all. 
But uh, well, I suppose that's probably not how the um, yeah, that's probably not how the campaign's intended to be played. But yeah, I mean, if you stay in if you stay in Lustria, Wolfheart's kind of shit. But if you just like abandon Lustria and come back to the Empire, it's pretty awesome. No, Wolfheart's got the best faction mechanics. You guys have got it all wrong. You don't even need to abandon Viet Lustria. Well, you could keep Lustria as well, but yeah. Every two to three turns, he has one of his settlements. Turned. No, no, no. Every two to three turns, he gets a free army that he can kill for money and XP. And then he gets extra units for free as well. Yeah, instant recruit, instant unit, instant recruit unit pool as Empire. Yeah, he gets these free units that you can just keep. Well, not free, but instant recruit units. And you just keep them in a big pile. And then when you have one of those armies spawn, if you've got no one nearby, you just pop out your pile of free units and kill it with them. Get some magic items. You know, it's all good. I think it, yeah, it takes a few turns to spawn, but you don't know where it is, do you? But then, but then once it does spawn, it doesn't attack on the first turn. So you got at least one turn to do it. But do, uh, no, do you know, do you know where it's going to spawn? Or do you not? I can't really remember now. You do know where it spawns. Yeah. So you know where it's going to spawn. You've got like two or three turns. And then I'm pretty sure after it spawns, it sort of doesn't move for one turn, right? So you got like another turn after that as well so it's pretty easy to deal with and yeah it just basically gives you free money and xp um especially once you move back to the empire um yeah like you yeah anyway but yeah maybe we should do another one i kind of feel like i need to do a video for on wolf heart because yeah a lot of people you know just think it's really hard but i reckon it's actually super easy this hostility army usually is trash. Yeah. I feel like it's just, yeah. If you watch one of my old Wolfheart campaigns, I did two or three of them, all migration campaigns. Um, pretty much the same thing each time. Um, yeah. I kind of feel like I shouldn't do another one until I'm ready to make a video because I was, I was planning on making a video the first time around, but it's just, it would be a big video that's hard to make, kind of like the one I just finished. And it's, yeah. but it's not as, not as sexy, you know, I don't know if it would get as much tension. And so, you know what I mean? I don't know if I can afford to wait to spend like two months making a wolf heart video, you know, and then have no one want to watch it. So it's like, yeah, it's a bit like that. But yeah, I don't know. I guess I could just do another. If you need, if you have any wolf, if you have any wolf hard stuff you need, I can get it for you. That, well, that makes a big difference actually, Josh, Josh. If you can just send me all your saves, <laughs> if there's like a save, you know, I'll be, uh, the first like 10 or 15 turns, I can just do that myself. And then like, I can just be like, and then after turn 20, you migrate to there and then you do this and you do that and blah, 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 you know, then the, yeah, that actually is super cool. And, and anybody as well, like the, the uh, yeah, no, no, like pretty much what we're doing here where we've got a cool idea and then Dash Dash is like, oh, I've got a bunch of saves you can have. And I'm like, sweet idea plus saves equals video well idea plus saves plus a month of hard work equals video <laughs> um but um but other but you know without the saves it's like you know two months hard work and it never happens you know so yeah but anyway so yeah if um that's the way to do it if you want to help me make a video but um but you know it's not not up to you guys to help me make videos or anything it's um, i'm happy if you just watch them <laughs> but uh but yeah if, when people do want to help me i appreciate that too as long as you don't play wolfheart as intended it's easy kaya bashi maru scenario yeah basically that's it as long as you don't play it as intended it's fine lord of the Angrun. But it's also not even about it not being as intended. It's also just about how I love the Empire. Like, I love the Empire area. I love the Empire campaign. I love all of the... Con I love all of the um, provinces of the Empire. I love keeping them all alive and stuff like that, you know. The only thing I hate about Wolfheart is that I actually really kind of like the Empire mechanics now. And he doesn't actually get them. He just has his own kind of thing going on. So Wolfheart's kind of like old school empire where you don't have any, you know, you don't have any special diplomacy. You just gotta, like, you try and do normal diplomacy on all the emperor empire. Has anyone ever said that you kind of look like Marcus Scrooge from Vermintide? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's true, but yeah, it's definitely been said before. 
I think my beard looks a bit like Marcus Kruger, maybe. That's about it. I think we've got I've got much uh, like heavier features than Marcus Kruber. He's a he's a handsome man, Marcus Kruber. <clears throat> Random question: Can one farm the banner master rune of Grungi, the one with the ten ward save? Hey, I mean. Farm? You mean, is there any way of getting it? No, not really. But you can just randomly get it like a magic item. I, yeah, I think so. I just got a Master Rune earlier in the game, actually. Um, yeah, so you can pick them up as random items. Like, I just I picked this up. Master Rune of Groth One-Eye. Uh, tax cause discouraged, blah, blah, blah. Um... Yeah, so like, um, yeah, I got this one, Master in a Groth Guy. So I guess if you can loot that one as a, as a random item, then, you know, I'm sure you can loot the Master in a Grungi as well. From other dwarves or post -build? No, it wasn't from other dwarves. It was just from, yeah, it was from like orcs or something. Yeah. Yeah, they just, I think they just come as items for the dwarf pool. But you can only probably get them if you're a dwarf. I wonder if maybe you have to have a rune, a rune priest in your army, a rune smith in your army. What am I going to do with this guy now? I don't really need anything else. Uh, oh, actually, rune speed's pretty handy sometimes. All right, back to plan A. We should go and kill Skarsnik at some point. The throng is mustard. <laughs> I am Iron Fist. Some call me a king. You are welcome here. No way. Agreed. Yes. I am Iron Fist. Some call me a king. Yes. Agreed. Hmm. I agree. Oath bound. <clears throat> By the king. Yeah, and no, I haven't fought. I haven't fought against any dwarfs. would be proud true king all right we're going after uh, going after Skarsnik once and for all a bit late we should have been should have been um yeah should have done a bit earlier but that's okay Shit, is this guy? Oh, that's right. He's got nine turns left. I'm gonna say he's a bit of a crap if he like almost made it to Thorek and then he just ran out of movement and couldn't make it there. <laughs> Pretty cut. Where's he? 
how does how does that get to there? Hmm. Yeah, that sounds that's fair. Haven't watched your vid yet. What's the science besides behind behind this one? Hey, dangerous Dave. Hey, dangerous Dave. You got a different avatar now. I didn't remember you having that avatar before. It's pretty cool. Very mil very military looking. I like it. Um, science behind it. Um, it's it's just um, it's not really sciencey. It's just more like just specific, just a specific set of steps that you do. Um, but yeah, um, the idea is to the basic idea is to take diplomacy techs to get um. Take these diplomacy techs to get plus thirty with all men, high elves, and lizardmen, and then just use use that to get positive relations and get money from everybody from gifts and stuff, and then go for high king's authority, so that you get um, plus thirty rep with all dwarfs. Plus, Belagar has got a skill that gives him plus forty rep with all dwarfs. So with those combined, he's got plus 70 with all dwarfs. And then basically all you need to do is just screw around and like not help not help Thorgrim. Wait till he gets bashed a bit by the orcs and whatever, and then confederate him. Yeah. Me in my younger days, that very serious Dave that was. <laughs> nice. Well, you cut a dashing figure. Looks like orcs are getting wrecked. Yeah. I guess that's okay. I guess Sneakitch will come over and sort him out eventually. But yeah, it's not really a science -y thing because it's not... It doesn't really work out 100% of the time. It's just sort of like a... Yeah, basically, it's just setting you up in the best possible way to get to confederate some or all of the of the dwarfs, you know? But um, I didn't really go to the lengths of trying to figure out a way to do it 100%. But I think, you know, yeah, if you do this, then you'll probably confederate them all. Or you'll... Yeah, you, there's a pretty good chance you'll confederate them all fairly early. Or if not... Um, you'll get some of them, you know, and the others will, you'll get eventually, you know, that kind of thing. I haven't been able to catch much of your streams lately or even play the game. I think, well, thank God it's Friday so I can chill. <laughs> no worries. Well, yeah, it's, um, it's a bit like that for me too. I've got a, I've got a holiday now. The next nine days I've got no work. So it's like not only Friday, but it's like, it's all chill now. So I'm pretty happy with that. <clears throat> time to stream for 72 hours 24 hour streams upcoming nah I'm not going to do that it doesn't after about the first 7 or, seven or 8 hours it ceases to be that much fun anymore if I drink enough coffee like I'll still keep going but I don't really like have as much fun you know um, I've sort of that's one thing I've actually learned as I got older I used to just play and play and play and play. Now I um now I actually know that if I just go and sleep for a few hours, then I'll come back and I'll actually enjoy it a lot more. Three weeks and three days till the holiday, eh?
Yeah, in auto resolve, you don't have the legendary penalties, husband and wife. True friend of the Angrund clan. So, you know, in an even fight or whatever, you'll do better in auto resolve. But if you know some sort of cheese that you can use to exploit to get it, you know, get it over on them, then you know, or you've got if you've got very dynamic units like heaps of heaps of ranged or heaps of cav or something, then you know, you'll probably do better in manual, because you can use the skills of those units like if really effectively. Or or or, maz or wizards or whatever. All this time of all this talk of Wolfie Boy is making me want to fire up my PC and run back to the Empire. Yeah, I don't know. When I was really the thing is, I'm just thinking about it now. When I was really into the Wolfheart campaigns, it was when we were talking about this the other day when I was playing Empire. Like when I didn't used to understand how the Empire diplomacy mechanic worked. Um, it was really frustrating and I didn't really enjoy it very much. So, but now that I know I'm really oh, familiar yeah. with it and I know exactly what to expect from it and stuff, um, I actually quite enjoy it, you know? Um, and and conversely, because Wolfheart doesn't... And, you know, at the time I used to like Wolfheart because he didn't have that. And he had other... He had other um, stuff that you could exploit. <laughs> it was a good that was a good uh, underway so yeah, this is pretty cool actually hopefully we're gonna get to kill all of their dudes in one go hmm okay got track good shot Yeah, they should, They like, hopefully they're going to try and jump away. Then I'm going to get to kill them on their turn, and then I can still attack Scar still attack, um, Karagangarad, or whatever it's called. Karagangarad, or whatever. Keep me busy! Oh, we need to retreat. Like, they've... Got trick! I'm invincible now, pretty much, for a while anyway. There might be something that can kill me later on in the campaign, but I don't think there's anything that can kill me not right now. An uncertain path. Clan Wars. Just a minute. We should be meeting Thoric fairly soon. If he's still alive. Oh yeah, we didn't know if he's still alive. Fuck, I should have checked that. Oh, actually, um... Yeah, let me just... Onward. Is it... How do we... How do you do it again? You select... Do I have to select him in Diplomacy, or... Oh no, there we go, yeah. Yeah, he's still alive, cool. <coughs> I still wish Gotrek was a hero and not a bloody lord. Yeah, yeah, Gotrek's fucked. I really, yeah, really, Gotrek's really annoying. I was actually thinking the other day, what would be really cool with Gotrek is if instead of him, instead of you getting him when you build the like so you get you build the you build the tavern then you recruit him then you keep um you keep Gotrek 30 turns then he disappears for 30 turns i think yeah 30 i think it's 30 turns and he comes back uh or is it 10 turns no i think it's 30 turns i think he goes away for 30 turns comes back for 30 turns there's a guide on there's a guide on the discord whatever he goes away for 30 turns come back for 30 turns yeah, blah, blah blah whatever it's and yeah it's a bit fucked but i was thinking if if it was like 20 turns or 15 turns it would be a lot better it would sort of fit in more with the whole theme of him. So, like, if you get, you want to do, you want to attack the vampires or something, right? So you hire Gotrek, you've got a second army, no supply lines. You go, you take out the vampires in 15 turns. Or you take out half of the, most of the vampires in 15 turns. Gotrek leaves, whatever. You finish off the vampires, you get organized, you find a new enemy, you get into a fight with the orcs or whatever, and then the fight starts hotting up, and then you get the opportunity to get Gotrek back again. 
you know, like, because it's only 15 turns, you know? So you'd still have him for the same total amount of time, but the rotations would be faster. And the other thing about it is that you should get the same Gotrek, you know? They've made it at the moment where Gotrek leaves and then a new, a unique, a totally unique new Gotrek spawns. So all the traits and the memories and shit that you've presumably got when you had Gotrek have gone, you know? So yeah, I feel like they should do it like, yeah, basically you, you get him, he keep him for 15 turns, he disappears for 15 turns, comes back for 15 turns, you know? So instead of a 30 turn cycle, it's a 15 turn cycle. And additionally to that, there should be like some way you can like keep him or you can do something to interact with him or something like that. Thoric has late game life expectancy with his alone major settlement. Thoric doesn't die quickly. Oh uh, really? I've had a few people comment that he that he like he hasn't died on me, but I've had a few people comment that he can die. To war. Welcome to my throng. Nope. Hmm. What's Thorgrim like? What? 29. So we could just confederate Thorgrim. Follow Dawi. Once we get to turn 31. That might be a good move. I want to kill Skarsnik first though. Let me think about it. No! Uh, we need a bit more money. Who can we scab the cash what? from? All oh, right, yeah. Now we've got the Helmgar, the fort. We can trade with um, Guilty Boy. Very well. That's pretty cool. It is tough. Come, come, kin. Let us feast and drink. All right. Who calls? I am ready to parley. Armored in. How do the dwarf friends fare in these? I am no churl. Hmm. Uh, Mercy, have you ever tried any of the mods for Hermit 2? I'm thinking of trying random start, but I don't know if it will feel too stupid. Well, uh, we were just talking about that exact thing before, actually. I reckon random start would be okay if you played a faction like um, Alithana, where he's meant to be like a roaming kind of, you know, outlaw kind of guy. Or Teclas, maybe he's on like an expedition to some crazy place or something like that, you know. Oxyodal, of course, would be fine. You know, but if, but like somebody was saying, who was it? The Seragol, I think. He's playing Alariel, and Alariel's got all these mechanics specifically around defending Ulthuan, and it's just really weird, like having her in a different place, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's sort of like, yeah, I don't know. I prefer to just migrate, you know what I mean? Like, I prefer to, like, take an existing faction and then just say, oh, I'd, you know, I want to be whatever. I want to play Alariel, but I want to... No, actually, that's a bad example. I want to play, um... Yeah, I want to play Alariel, but I want to be in the age, Oak of Ages or something. You know, whatever. Like, a specific, you know, like, I like a specific... I like to migrate myself to a specific place to play, play the random thing. But, yeah, I mean, if you like to... If you like punishment basically or if you like just challenge you know you just like things to be hard and weird and stuff i could definitely see that it could be appeal to it it definitely make things fresh oh yeah so do you think do you, do you guys want me to like become the fucking miragliano dwarven trading company and do that whole thing i don't really that wasn't where i was going with it really what i was really going with is to returning the holds i want to take Karakate peaks you know Avenge the avenge the grudge, um, confederate Thorgrim at the same time, and um, you know just be happy. Just be happy. You know, that's all I want. 
Alright, we've got enough money, we're not gonna go broke this turn. Every turn is just like, who can we beg enough money off so we don't go broke this turn? <laughs> That's like the whole theme of the campaign. Nah, I don't know. I'm like, nah. I think I could have, like, yeah, like I could have done it. If I was going to do the crating thing, I would have done it earlier. I think now that ship's sort of sailed. I mean, I could still do it, but yeah, I think I feel like yes. it's kind of sailed. On the move. Oh, yeah, I don't have that much, that much money. Yeah, that's fine. And all right, now we've got our growth. We've got our other growth. Let's uh, get some weaponry. All right, let's see Skarsnik trying to get out of this situation. I've trapped him. Here we go. So. He's coming at me with both armies. So that one won't be able to underway away now. The other one... Will... Can they underway after they retreat? I'm not sure if they can or not. Grim and Snicket are at war in my one. Well, yeah, sort of. I mean, I really want them to bash Thorgrim so that he'll confederate with me. Oh, actually, no, he will already confederate with me. Yeah, we already checked it before. I just gotta wait till, um... Yeah, so obviously, like, even though Thorgrim's doing okay, he obviously considers them to be a significant enough threat. You know? Shield bearers, hold! Move to a 
Very effective. Yes, Anu. Weaker than blood. Shield bearers, hold. That is Queen Helga. This is the Kozorika. Now that the curse on me behind being led by mercy, did you just kill me, man? Husband of my fear. God damn you! It's my namesake, Mercy the Cow Sorcerer. from the RP stream but check your Twitter DMs. What? <laughs> Twitter DMs? I don't know what a Twitter DM is. All oh, right, what? This thing? Graham? I don't know, but... Oh. <laughs> Lol. Um, in case anyone was interested in, um, what, uh, Marcus Wolfhart, Mercy Wolfhart. Well, the beard looks even better in that picture than it does in real life. <laughs> um, thanks, Graham. Hey, that's uh, very, very, uh, very nice. What happened with the cavalry beta thing? I'm so out of touch. Hey, Sagosh. No, nothing. Um, we're a mercy will part. Yeah, exactly. It fits. It does fit, doesn't it? Um, yeah, not, nothing much has happened with the cavalry beta. Um, I'm still playing on the cavalry beta. I think it's fine. I think it's the way to go. If you're not on the cavalry beta, like, get on it as far as I'm concerned. It's just, yeah, it's fine. It's good. Um, I wish, I kind of wish that cavalry did it had a bit more impact damage, but, um, but yeah, it's not been merged yet. 
No, so the cavalry. Well, the, so the thing that happened before was that the no, no, the, on the yeah, no, they have been merged. Yeah, so patch one point twelve point one had come out, and then the cavalry beta came out. But the cavalry beta was based on the previous patch one point eleven or whatever it was, um, not one point twelve point one. And then they brought a merged one with the latest patch one point twelve point one with the cavalry beta on that. So the cavalry beta is now the effectively the most re like the most the newest version. Unless you know, unless you think there's something wrong with the cavalry beta, in which case you can do the one point twelve point one, which is the same except it just doesn't have the cavalry changes. Vanilla is more exploitable. How's oh, really? Why is how's vanilla more exploitable? Because you can counter charge cavalry with your melee infantry, <laughs> or is there something else that's cool about it? Because cavalry is more broken. Yeah. I'll uh, see you later, Steve. Yeah, I'd, I'll probably be off to bed too in maybe an hour or so. I think got a little, I think got a little bit more left in me. We've got to do, we've got a few more milestones to hit. I think we can kill Skarsnik and get at least our first one or two confederations, and that'll be a good, um, that'll be a good first stream. I think. Are you trying to confed Zifflin and Nord? I'm not trying to, but I use. I feel like before, if I can get a confederation of somebody before turn 25, then I take it just as a stepping stone. I was going to take Zorn, but they didn't want to Norn, but they didn't want to go for it, so I took Carrick Hearn instead. Um, but yeah, I would have taken Norn if they had have gone for it, um, just so that I could use their lands for confederation and. Um, yeah, I could have gone after these guys, but I'm gonna I wanna take out their um their home settlement. Uh, actually I'll gonna fight their battles first. Now nah, shit, I should have gone for this first. That's right, I'll just sack city this until we get our get all of our grudges done. And then we'll um command. Using guild roots. Go from there. And we'll go and find it's nearly turn thirty one. So we'll go and find Isabella and get her trait. Because I want to kind of make the um, make the most powerful Belagar I can. I can't believe I'm going to engage in such trash behavior. I got a perfect score on my first two exams in biochemistry, and now I'm thinking of either skipping or Christmas treeing my exam in two hours. Mm. So you're saying that you got such high scores in your first two exams that you can just do really shit in your current exam and then it'll be fine uh, i'm not sure if i understand properly hey steven pullen great video belligar video oh thanks man i i yeah i appreciate that i, I put a real lot of work, work into it so um and, I, and i'm pretty pretty happy with the result i'm pretty proud of it i think i did a good job so um yeah i'm glad that you guys are appreciating it Yeah, I was actually thinking about today and like, it's sort of, yeah, I feel like YouTube's kind of cool, like, like, I feel like YouTube actually, like the videos that have gotten the most views on YouTube are generally the videos that I think I did the best work on as well, you know, um, there's some, some like, not so much, but, but yeah, generally. Another tip on the work warp rocket. Uh, no clue it could one shot units dead center. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I think it's. I try to include. Yeah, that, that's. Yeah, I've got a bit of a formula that I've got now. Like you know, um, the, yeah, like I try to have a, like a guide. But then I also try to have in general information. And then I also have to try to have like you know stuff that a lot of people maybe don't realize. Like 
then and you know maybe like yeah it's like i want to have like a couple of really of new like of new exciting things so that the hardcore people like will actually think oh that's actually something new you know but then i don't want it to just be only for hardcore people so then i want to have like all kind of you know more like general information for newer people as well and then also just little bits and pieces that you know like none of the individual bits and pieces are that amazing but if i put like 10 of them in there then at least one of them like you know when you watch one of my videos there'll be at least one thing in there that you didn't know hopefully you know or that you'd forgotten or something that you'll get value out of so you know and now uh, the other thing i've been working on is making them entertaining as well so not entertaining but like like yeah sort of entertaining i guess and just like well pa like paced basically good pace you know that's what i try and go for I try to make it so i'm not wasting your time you know i'm not boring you i'm not you know like i don't like my thing with the videos is like i don't want it to be like right i've got some information and i'm gonna make it i'm gonna tell you in a really boring way and make you just sit there for 20 minutes until i get around to telling you the thing you know i just want to be like information 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 you know like as fast as i can <laughs> so that you just sort of like ah, you know well not you but necessarily but you know people in general you know that's what i go for um but yeah thanks a lot and any appreciate that as well man um yeah i was just gonna say like there's like a couple of videos like the 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 f like the the ones on the two turn malekith videos with malice that got a lot of views um and the and both of the vampire videos the original seven uh max level turn seven video and the builder wall around sylvania video and now this Belligar video like those ones are the big big videos that i did where i put like you know dozens of hours into it and you know it paid off i think they're really good videos you know and i kind of still stand by them you know whereas a lot of the other ones i just i didn't want to didn't want to invest as much time um but, but i still wanted to produce something you know and I don't know it's like they're okay but they're not like yeah like how you're saying like that a lot of my content will stand the test of time yeah i think some of it will and some of it won't you know but i i'm not as worried about that anymore because the way that youtube works naturally is that the shit that you do that's good gets pushed to the front and the shit that you do that not that many people like just kind of gets swept away and no one really notices it so, so it's sort of you know what I mean? It's sort of like a self-cleaning thing. You can just make your videos, and if they're good, they'll pop to the top, and if they're shit, they'll go to the bottom, and you don't need to worry too much about it. Your videos are very entertaining. You have this great personality, half jovial lad, half thoughtful professor. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a really nice, that's a really good way to put it, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I can see that. That makes sense. <laughs> Professor of Total War. If um, that would be a pretty good, I'd be proud to wear that title. Anyway, yeah, I think we're starting to get to tired mercy time now, where I start to just completely forget about the game and just crap on. <laughs> like at the best of times, I get distracted fairly easily, but um, but yeah, once it gets above the seven hour mark, I just start to like just wander off. Armor is for maidens. Armor is for maidens. Uh, fuck, we're broke again. I should have attacked one of these armies to get some money. I don't know if I should care for Carrot Kadrin. My kin, the throng of Kadrin will. I can get Carrot Kadrin next turn, or I can just wait a couple more turns and get. Kareza Karak, but Kareza Karak has got like, yeah, see Kareza Karak's got like 12, I mean 7 regions. Like they want to do it, so the thing is Kareza Karak want to confederate now, but will they want to cons confederate again in like 7 turns from now? You know, um... I'll go no further. And I like I can deal I can live without Ungram and Thoric, although I do want uh, I want Ungram especially. Um, I can live without both of them, but I don't I don't want to live without Thorgrim and Grumbrindle. Those are my favorites. Maybe you shouldn't have maybe you should have made a dwarf merchant empire hobo king. Yeah, maybe we should do maybe we should do like no, that's not good. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe we should do Belagar goes to Ulthuan. 
We're gonna we we'll start the Ulthuan migrations, but with Belagar. But no, that doesn't work because he needs to take um, Karagate Peaks. Playing without the rest of the Dao is unacceptable in my eyes. Well, at least at least Thorgrim, because you got to take Karak Eight Peaks, and then you're right next to Karak your Karaza Karak. So it's like if they get wiped out, then you're just gonna have to look at their dead, their empty, smoldering Karaks for the rest of the game. Hmm. <coughs> 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 Hmm. But yeah, um, but yeah, the uh, the video is doing right. It's up to three thousand video views now. It's not too bad. I think the the size that my channel is at now, like three thousand, is about how well like one of my average sort of videos would do. But uh, but you know my good videos like that I think this one is the caliber of, they have got like 30,000 or more views. So, um, yeah, basically, I feel like if it, if it gets 10,000 views, then I'll feel like I broke even, you know what I mean? Like, considering the amount of effort I put into the, like, considering the amount of time I put into it. So that's it. That's the problem with, you know, if you put, if you work on a video for two months or like, you know, six or seven weeks, you know, like you ha it's a it's more risky because you need, you know, you need more. You need to, it needs to be a lot more. Like a video that I spent seven weeks on needs to be a lot fucking more successful than a video that I did in an afternoon. You know what I mean? <laughs> Three thousand in a day. Or so yeah, yeah. If it gets ten thousand, then I'll be you know I'll be satisfied with that. Because it's you can't like it's not a very busy time at the moment. Probably not many people care about Wormer right now and stuff. You know, yeah, ten thousands like you know is pretty good. But uh, but yeah, I wouldn't be like super happy if we get ten thousand. But if it gets less than ten thousand, then I'm gonna be pretty a bit gutted, you know, because it's like yeah, just consider the amount of time. But oh no no I'm not no I'm not gonna I don't care I don't, I don't care at all like uh, yeah I try to remind myself like. It's just, you want to make good content, you know? That's the primary thing. Because, like, it doesn't matter if it doesn't get any views, because at least I'll still have it there on my, on my channel, and then when new people find my find my videos, they'll, they'll have some good stuff to watch. <laughs> so it's still good. It's all good. Yeah, it's all good. You don't want to, like, set yourself up for fail, you know? You don't want to set yourself up to feel bad or feel like a failure or whatever. It's all good. Whatever it gets, it gets. I'm glad that you guys all enjoyed it, and yeah. Stephen Pullen watched it yesterday, 94 views. Nice, Stephen. You were one of the people that watched it, like, that um, that gave it a good, um, you know, you gave it a thumbs up and, like, it watched a lot of it and probably helped propel it to the next level. I'm, I keep looking at my bankruptcy and I keep trying to figure out how I can not be bankrupt anymore, but I haven't got any clue. I guess I could go through and just beg money from everybody I know. Let's do that. Dowie from another hold arrive. Tis a great day. Could confirm it, Carrick Norn. They'd give me a heap of money. I could One rug! All here are honored dwarf king. I oh, see they've already gone yellow. Fuck, they must have just got bashed. They must have just lost their army last turn. Mm. Oh. I was first, husband and wife who was first. Time for some dwarf tax, exactly. It's dwarf tax time. Alright, what are you guys doing? Give us 300? How about, how about 900? Nope, alright, how about 300? Alright, All right, good. Good start. 300 in the bank. How about defensive alliance? Come on, we're your dwarf, we're dwarves, we're all dwarfs. Let's do it so this thing you're just so confederated you know, now like with the with Belagar, like yeah like even like i was saying before it's not like you guaranteed necessarily get every single dwarf like every single dwarf legendary lord easily but you're just just it's just very easy in general to get confederations with everybody you know um and you can even like like i was saying you can even just use it as a make as a 
strategic um, tool, you know? It's like, oh, I need to move west. West of me is this faction. I can just confederate them, and then I can use their lands for um, replenishment, and I can sell all their buildings when I'm finished to get a bit of extra money, you know? Um, and that's just because you've got that plus 70 relations with all dwarfs. This makes it super easy. Those who displease me do not live to tell of it. Sigmas, come then. Only Sigmas, Sigmas come then? Ulrich what? Absolutely not. No. Mm. All right. The I think these guys are, are too new. They brought a few barrels of bugmans with them. Oh, no, Atua, I don't remember Atua if they actually ever gave us any money, did they? And I'll hear your Ask a peasant. Peasants work. Mm. Yes. Oh, Kerry Zipflin, we haven't dumped money out of them yet. For you on this fine day. Yeah, I want to take. Let's take defensive alliances with all the dwarves, so that if anyone messes with them, we can go to war with their enemies, and we can just form a big confederacy of all the dwarven nations. I can dig that. That's an idea I can get on board with. So now at three thousand, that's great. Yeah, it's really hard because every every video has got its own kind of thing. Can you get more money if you sell the packs separately than if you sell them together? Uh, yeah, you can if they don't run out of money, though. I think that most of them are all, like, giving me all the money that they can give me, you know? Sometimes, like, I'll do, like, non-aggression, I'll sell that, and then I'll sell them Defensive Alliance, and then I'll sell them Confederation. But, you know, they won't have much money left by the time you get to Confederation. You know, like you only get a little bit more that way. Down. Asking for money is Kalita is hilarious. Getting 20k out of thin air was fun. Does Kalita have good, like, plus relations stuff for other factions? I wonder if Legends will do something interesting with the Belagar idea. Maybe, yeah. I hope, yeah. I mean, I hope you. I hope so. <laughs> like, if he does that, I'll probably get another five hundred subscribers out of it, um, which is pretty cool. I was actually, think, I was actually wondering the other day about like, I was saying this the other day how like you know some people like I think like when Legend first stopped streaming and I was streaming um, on Saturday during the time when he normally streams or whatever, um, and. Um, you know, they were saying something about, like, you know, making hate. Well, I don't know. What, I can't really remember now. But it was like, I was just saying, like, it's not really like there's any advantage to Legend not being around. It's actually, like, keeps better when he is around. Even though you would think it's sort of like a competitive thing and, like, you know, he takes up all the market share or some shit like that. But it's not really like that at all. It's more like legend streams because the legend will commonly have like 3000 people in his streams so it's basically like the whole total war community is in his stream like just chatting and stuff so whenever anything happens whether it's like creative assembly news or there's a new you know okoy meme video out or whatever it is it'll get it's it'll get discussed in legend streams so basically if i do a good video even if Legend doesn't even know about it, like people in his stream will be discussing it, and then other people that are watching the stream will see them discussing my video, and you know, you know what I mean. So I was like, I feel like I was getting, um, I would get more views and more subscriptions and stuff just from like Legend streaming, <laughs> because and and then he would talk about my stuff as well sometimes, and then I'd get even more views from that. So you know, and that's, that's just just him talking about it, not even him like putting a link or anything, you know. <clears throat> Troll Slayer. TK in general do if you're willing to go through torture of saves coming for trustworthy lords for the first 20 turns or okay, saves coming for trustworthy lords oh right yeah that's right because you get the bonuses from the yeah okay is he taking a break from streaming Mr. Man? yeah he's taking a break um I don't know if he's like 
I, yeah, I don't know if he's taking a break until Warmer 3 comes out. I wouldn't be surprised. I, I wonder if he's just starting to like, he's just liking it too much now. He's liking the lifestyle of being a man of, man of leisure. Doesn't have to like get up at midnight every night and stream. I'm not sure, but um, but yeah, I imagine that if he if he doesn't come back before Warhammer Three, he'll definitely come back when Warhammer Three starts. I reckon. I mean, oh well, I don't know. I don't really know what he's playing. I don't. He haven't. I haven't talked to him about it. I don't know. But um, but yeah, I mean, it, if he was going to come back ever, then it would make sense that they would come back. Um, you know, for Warhammer Three. Monster Slayer. Gotrek Gernishan. Giant Slayer. Taking a break until he decides otherwise. Yeah, basically that's it, I think. <clears throat> that was a pretty successful begging, uh, begging trip. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm glad for him, like, because yeah, he's been playing Whammer un, uninterrupted for a few years now, um, and um, I wonder if they, in, I might fight it again manually just to make sure we don't wipe them all out, because we might need to get two battles out of it. In the Lawhammer podcast, Legend of Total War says he went from working 100, hour, 100 hours a week to working eight hours. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I was thinking that today because I messaged him and um, he didn't respond until like, I don't know, like eight hours later or something like that. And I was like, ah, oh, he's keeping, he's just got the one hour a day office hours now. <laughs> like, you know, because before he would, you know, he would like, res no, oh, he wouldn't like respond straight away because he'd be busy. But, you know, you could tell that he was like online, you know, um, but now it's like, oh, I guess he just checks his mailbox once a day and that's it. Man of, man of luxury. It's pretty cool. Um, I, w I tried to watch the Lawhammer podcast, but it was not. I didn't dig it because, like, I've been really enjoying some of Legend stuff lately. I don't really get to watch that much of it, but, um, but um, I've been really enjoying it lately. Just like his, um, you know, like his uh, rate rating the different units videos and stuff like that. Because he just like he's just so knowledgeable, and you can just listen to him talk for hours about just you know stuff, just Warhammer or whatever. And um, and yeah, and so when I heard he was going to be on Lawbeards, law, law I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. Um, wait up, you talking about Lawbeards or law, what's Lawhammer? Is that something else? I, I, I knew he was on Lawbeards, I assume that's what you're talking about. Maybe Lawhammer is something different. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it was just like, I, yeah, maybe I wasn't listening to the right parts or something, but I felt like there was not enough legend, basically, that was, yeah. Tear lists are awesome to watch. Yeah, because he can just talk, you know, he can just talk and talk and talk about it, and it's just all interesting stuff, you know, just getting his different, like, viewpoints on stuff and just little bits of tidbits of information about different things and, you know. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Whereas the lore bits thing, I tried to watch a bit of it, but it was just like, you know, like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's like the normal lore bits format, I don't mind, but it's, but I'm not, but I'm not going there to listen to Legend, you know what I mean? Like, I because I knew Legend was going to be on there, I'm like, cool, Legend, let's, I want to hear Legend talk about all the stuff Legend talks about, you know? But because it's not, it wasn't, you know, because it was, uh, there's other people there as well, like, he wasn't doing that thing. But uh, I would have been interested to hear about his, um, about that other stuff. You guys, anyone who's watched it all, tell me everything. Tell me everything Legend said. <laughs> Without delay. 
but yeah, anyway, so yeah, long story short, I, I tried to listen to a bit of it, but I was a bit disappointed that it wasn't as, it wasn't as legendy. There, there was, there was too much not legend and not enough legend. That was my, uh, that was my take on it. discovered how do you get discovered Weird. Are the, are these guys hmm. I don't know. the starting episodes of most the starting episodes of most podcasts are really rough to be honest uh where you saying you don't think that they they're very good at the moment they need to like improve a bit or something He doesn't get sniped. No, but I had his I had his fire will turned off. He's got no he's not got fire will on. See? Yeah, I just turned him on. And he's off again. But he didn't have fire will on, so he shouldn't have been you know. Maybe I mm, I don't know, maybe I clicked him on to Why is every every army got ogres in it? No. Didn't I already kill their ogres in the other battle? and they haven't shot. Yeah, I must have, I guess. It didn't seem like they were close enough to, um... So taking that into the yeah yeah that's right yeah yeah no I think uh, yeah I don't know I just yeah whatever I don't know I yeah I yeah I think I don't know I don't know why I expected it I just I think I just expected it to be more legend but yeah yeah so I was a bit like yeah I just because I don't have time like I only had time to listen to it for like five minutes you know so. I just clicked around to a few different bits and I couldn't really find any parts where Legend was talking much. So I was just like, oh well. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know. I don't think that the, yeah, I don't think it's for me probably that one. Like, because it's just because I don't have the time to listen to it, basically. Um, yeah. I like as I've, I've watched a little bits. I like well, watched little bits of it because I enjoy I enjoy Nathan and um, Sotek's personalities, you know. Like, but I'm essentially just watching it to to see them, you know. <laughs> Not really, not really, because I'm necessarily interested in like the content or anything. Um, yeah. So what did um, what did um, what else did Legend say about his new lifestyle? What does he do all day? Jesus. What's life after Warhammer like? It's funny, like, because he's been getting, like, so... Oh, I don't know, yeah. It's funny because he's been getting really good views on his, um... On his, um, videos. And, um... And it's like, yeah, I wonder if he's, he thinks, like... 
oh shit, I've been like streaming for 10 hours a day and like working for five hours more a day on making videos to get like, you know, 150,000 views a day. Whereas I could have just put out the video, put out these videos and gotten like 120,000 views a day for like a 10th of the effort. <laughs> like, why was I doing that this whole time? I always assumed he just counted his money since he liked bringing it up, lol. What, what, in the podcast, was he talking about his money? Yes. The most interviewing of Legend of Total War happened where one of the hosts went AFK. And they need to fill in the time. Oh, really? Was it um, was it Lawmaster Sotek that had to go AFK? Or um, or uh, Nathan Great Book of Grudges? Yeah, I feel, uh, I kind of feel bad, like, I don't mean to sound, like, critical of, um, of the guys, like, because I do like both of them, like, Legend of Tor, uh, not Legend of Tor, um, like, um, Great Book of Grudges and Lawmaster Sotek are two of my favorite Total War streamers, uh, YouTubers, I mean, but, um, but, like, Legend's just, like, so much more my favorite of, like, you know what I mean? It's, like, like, out of all the Total War streamers, for me, personally, um, it's, like, Legends like 10 out of 10 and then oh no it's not really like that it's not really about a quality thing it's just about like appealing to my specific interests you know like Legends he like 100% appeals to my interests like he does the exactly the sort of content that I want to see you know um whereas everybody else is sort of like yeah you know it's kind of interesting you know maybe once in a while or whatever you know but it's not really like my main thing that I'm into well, most of you guys know what I'm into now, you know? I'm into just, like, the more technical stuff, I guess. But, um, but no, I definitely, like, I'm definitely interested in the lore. Um, and, um, and yeah, Lore Master, Lore Master Sotek, Great Book Grudges, and Indie Pride. Are probably my three favorite YouTubers for, um, for lore, for lore videos. Or for all, kind of all for different reasons, I guess. Um... Like they're just all slightly different takes on the same on the thing, you know. But uh, but my my um my the demand in my life for law videos is way lower than the demand in my low in my life for like you know for for six strats. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Yeah, I've, um, the yeah, legends done a few co-op things with Sotek. Um, pretty cool i haven't really got a chance to watch them though it's just the lot it's just too long form for me now like because because i'm you know because i'm streaming now so you know like if i had eight hours free i would just stream myself you know so yeah i can't like yeah i can't really watch streams now anyway but um yeah the only time i really watch any streaming is like after or before one of my streams if i drop in to say hello to somebody or sometimes if i'm doing a video and i can't stream i'll i'll drop into somebody else's stream at the start or the end of when i'm doing the editing just to, you know, say hi and stuff. Alright, I've got to try and concentrate. Um, but yeah, see, this is why I may as well just go to bed now, because I'm like, just trying my concentration level so fucked that I, I can't, like, <laughs> I'm not getting anything done. Like, I, I'm not, I'm not having a bad time. Like, I don't feel, I feel okay, but I'm just, like, my concentration's shot. I'll do the fighting. Your doom is assured. Come on! Mostly the format was just asking Legend of Total War his opinion on the topics that they were discussing. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think, like, if, like, I, uh, yeah. I guess it's because the there's, there's two, there's a, um, 
There's an interview that um, Battle Tutorial did with Legend of Total War. So it was just an interview with Legend of Total War. It was it was cool because it was slightly different from the normal stuff. Like it wasn't just him talking about the game like normal. It was actually him talking a bit about his life and you know how he got into YouTube and you know all that kind of stuff that you know that you'd be more interested in if you're like a fan as as a fan of Legend rather than as a fan of his content. If you know what I mean. Um, and that, I thought that was really interesting. Um, but it was like non-stop interview of legend, you know, there was no, no other stuff. Yeah, I think that, I think that was my problem with it. Like, just like, I, yeah, I should have been expecting exactly what you're describing. Like them doing the podcast, like they normally would, but with three people talking about it instead of, instead of two, but, but like what I was expecting was them to be interviewing legend and yeah that i guess that's not not what it was but yeah i don't i feel bad like i feel like i'm sounding really critical and i didn't i didn't mean to be critical at all really i just meant it to be like yeah i don't know pretty much just said what i just said then you know just that it wasn't what I was expecting. Gotrek Gurnishan. See, we're still pumping her up, pumping up the oath gold. You know, it is costing us horrific, horrific amounts of cash. This thing's costing us two thousand gold per turn. Um, we'll keep it going for another six turns. It's going to be too expensive after that because of the supply lines. But um, oh yeah, how long have we got to get this going for? Uh, three. We need two more battles. Sweet. So we can basically just kill this guy and kill this guy, and then we're done. Damn it! You cannot ask this of me. Uh, I might just sack this twice then, just in case, so that um, I don't accidentally wipe him out before I get the other spot. On my way. Oh no, here we go. I'll just kill this guy. But I'm a and then we're done. And then I can just occupy it or whatever. I'm going. Boom! Another rune splat. True king! You mean it all this with it? No, no, no. Yeah, no, like uh, I really, I, I don't really know Lomas or Sotek that that well, but I've ha I've chatted with him a couple of times, and you know he's a cool guy, and I and I definitely like his channel. Um, but um, but I've had some really good chats with Nathan, Great Book of Grudges, and he's yeah, he's a fantastic guy. I really enjoy him. Um, <clears throat> But um but yeah they're both super busy and I am preserved on um, a greater doom. Especially well Nathan especially is super busy, so not really you can't really hang out with him. Okay, well we've basically smashed Scars Nick. He's still got a few remnants left. Once we take over his settlement there we'll be Good to go. Oh yeah, I forgot to build um was that available last turn? I don't know. Oh no, that's right, I wanted to put this there. And here I wanna build this. Get another engineer. Does that give us No, yeah, because we've already got engineer level two the capacity two. And we can get one more runesmith. Yeah, we could build a runesmith building somewhere as well. Get a bunch more heroes. Turns to 28. Onward. Our kin have come. Fetch the brewmaster. We drink. To war! All here. Ah, see, he's too strong again now. 
Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, so I'll probably take I'll probably take the Ungram Confederation first, but yeah, I feel like I need to be like available and ready to confederate uh, Thorgrim. But I guess we can just wait till later. It's not like that big of a deal. Um. Oh, I don't know. I felt like I wanted to. I wanted to hit some like landmarks, you know, like some milestones or whatever. This campaign, this uh, episode. Um. So I feel like, um, yeah, like confederating at least Ungram or and taking out Scarlet. Maybe I'll play. I'll play one more turn, we'll, and then we can confederate. Yeah, then we can confederate uh, Ungrim and um, mostly wipe out Skarsnik at least. Mm, Zarxil, should I level up Zarxil? No, I feel like it's going to get taken out by somebody. We'll get, I'll wait till we get another. I love the dwarf heroes on the map. They look so cool. There's just these like little mountains, little dwarf mountains. Pretty awesome. Was the master in a spite just a completely random drop? No, no, the master in a spite's from the quest. So I bought one. You can buy one of each. So I bought one like on turn five, and then I just did the quest. I just finished the quest to defeat Skarsnik five times to get get the second one, um, and then as well as that, you can also get them to drop randomly. But it's pretty rare to get them. I think. <clears throat> That's good. That'll help us actually get more but rebellions and seven blight, which is good. King of which is what we want. Um, yeah. So this, um, we just can take this now. <clears throat> uh, do you wanna? This will. Be quiet. Ogres, my lord. Yeah. So now Skarsnik's got no. Um, now Skarsnik's got no territory, I think. Yeah. Um, maybe he took something over. No, nah, so Skarsnik's got no territory. Um, he's only got like a couple of busted armies, I think. He might have, he might have another one somewhere. Uh, he's only got a couple of busted armies, and you know he's pretty much done for. So he's done. Uh, uh, Kadrin, um You know, doubt have a request. I'll hear it now. Doesn't want to confederate for some reason. It's weird. Oh, uh, great power! Maybe because of the great power. I feel. I feel like before the great power like affects it, but I don't know why. Like I don't know how. It is time. This is no fantasy. I've been this told that it doesn't like do anything, but I don't know to if that's true or not. Episode. Rune Lord. And what can the Dowie do for you? Check this out. Confederation straight away. May as well take it, I guess. Very generous. <clears throat> Thoric the homie. Thoric joins the fold. Alright. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much just going to abandon this straight away, I think. Oh, wow, he's got tier 3 here. Hmm. 
Oh, he's also got beer, so I don't have to build that straight away. I'm already building it anyway, so I may as well just keep building it, I guess. Um, but we can... Um, Gotrek Gernishan! Even Slayers must rest. Yeah, you get to deal with the scaven side if you're stale. Uh, well, I'm not gonna like. I don't really care if it, like. I, then my choices are either sell it now or just leave it there until it gets taken over and, or try and sell it at the last minute. You know. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really bother me either way. That is yeah, it's useless. We'll leave the beer there. Cool. Uh, this army, we could go and attack these these uh, elves. Sigma preserve us. Oh, Grungni is pretty good. Oh, you know what this guy can do? This guy can cruise around doing agent actions until he gets me a rune bearer. Boom. Been trying to get one of those the whole time. Sweet, we're just gonna walk this guy all the way back up and just keep just getting doing stuff and getting rune bearers. Yeah, just do stuff like that. Uh, we may as well just like get rid of Felix. Like he's only got like five turns left and he's gonna be gone. Oh, I guess we could just discover some map with him or whatever. Make him randomly move over there. What is it with dwarves and spamming great weapon variant? That is probably the biggest reasons they lose to the green skin. Yeah, they they do do the they give great weapons to yeah they do. It's weird, isn't it? Like why? Why do you do that? It's very odd, very odd behavior. I like this Grimnir. Get him, in the, get him in the mix. Um, but yeah, it's just about time that we go and take out Karagate Peaks about now. Arcane wisdom. Get some runes. Get some purples. Not bad, not bad. Begin. I'm gonna find an archivist for him. Is there another illiterate? Summon me if you dare. Let's gonna get these illiter uh, get these archivists spread around so that we can maximize our technology. It hurts me a heart to lose those uh, gold chevron iron breakers, but it's not the right segment of the it's not the right segment of the campaign to be having iron breakers. All right, so we got two iron, bro two iron wardens tankards now. One for Beligar and one for um, and one for um, half uh, Hulk and half Stonebeard, our two main tanks. Um,
Might give this one to... <clears throat> give this one to him. Um, he won't take as much damage because he's not in the front line. We got another archivist there as well. <clears throat> I love Dawi at the moment. I'm loving Dawi at the moment too. Oh my god, dwarf research rate is insane. The start of the campaign, I got really lucky. That Lord trait and by turn forty, had three hundred to four hundred percent research rate. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty bonkers. Um, <laughs> Fleet footed perceptive weapon master tactician. Yeah, I guess perceptive. It's all right. Let us begin. Um, what's our way up to? 310%. It's pretty good for a turn 29. Um, we'll keep going. It should keep going up faster as long as we keep cancelling our technology all the time. Hey, Stephen Pullen. Does the seed in the tank get stack? Yeah, they do stack, yeah. Pretty sure. Um, they're different. If you get different abilities, then they stack. But you just can't get... If it's two abilities that have the same name, then they can't stack. Um, but yeah, they're two different things. One of them is constant regeneration. The other one, um, the the other one um, only works when you're in melee combat. So they're two, two completely different. You know, they both give you health, but they're two completely different things. But if you get like, um, I don't know, you can get you can get different items that give you the same effect, and then they don't stack. Um, I can't think of an example right now, but yeah. Can Belgar be tankier than Gorok? Um, I don't know. I don't know how tanky Gorok can get, but you can get Gor you can get Belgar to have like two hundred armor, like nine thousand health, um, seventy-ish ward save without the sort of cane, ninety you know ninety ward save with the sort of cane. No uh, physical resist. Sorry, not ward save. Um. Oh, well, maybe it's like 87. Yeah, I'm not sure if he can... I'm not sure if Belligar can get to 90% physical. He probably can if he's got uh, a Thane with him giving the 15% bonus. Nah, he's pretty tanky anyway. <clears throat> and yeah, and he can probably get to like 110 or 120 melee defense. So he's definitely one of the tankiest in the game. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if he can get to ninety percent ward save, no ninety percent physical resistance. I mean, um, which I think is kind of a benchmark for for uh, one man armies. You know, Oracular's physical, yeah. I don't know, I guess I'm comparing it to Malice Darkblade. You know what I mean? Malice Darkblade's got 90%, can get 90% physical resist. He can, he's got, I don't know how much HP, he's got like 4,000 or 6, 5,000, 6,000 maybe, but he can heal himself, but he's got twice that, plus he can get the six potions and he can heal himself, you know, use them twice so he can heal himself like six times. Um, so he's got two different heal caps because he's got two different characters, you know. So yeah, I don't think there's anything tougher than Malice, but um, yeah, it could be wrong. Um, I don't really know what to do now. I guess I want to start going down his personal trait. Yeah, I don't think we really care about ambush. 
Too much do we? Uh, I guess we do, sort of. Because if we get ambushed, we lose all our rangers. Like, the heroes will just kill everybody after the rangers die. But, um... But, yeah, we don't want to lose all our rangers, I guess. Yeah, I feel like as soon as I upgrade Zarexil, I'm going to lose it. So I might, um... Is it time? Might skip that. Alright, well... Yeah, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I think I'm starting to fade a little bit, guys. So, um, I... Yeah, I didn't quite make it to eight hours, but Fridays are a bit rough to me, or a bit rough for me, because I, I finish work at like 10 o'clock at night, or nine o'clock at night sometimes, and then, you know, I just hang out, have dinner, and then I gotta try and get an hour of sleep before stream, you know, so, I'm, yeah, it's not, yeah, not the best, <laughs> but, um, but tomorrow, I'll be uh, well rested and uh, ready to go. So, um, yeah, thanks a lot for, uh, for coming by, guys. I felt like, I had a really fun stream tonight, I felt like, it was really nice to get my video out and just have like so much nice positive feedback from everybody and you know so for me it's been a really good day you know so um yeah i hope you guys had a good time as well and um i hope you're enjoying the time of the dwarf that is upon us and there'll be much more dwarf to come um i'm really looking forward to getting um the ultimate Belligar going with this campaign we i don't know if we'll get him all the way ultimate but we'll try and get like isabella's trait you know max armor ward save all that good stuff Make him into a one man army. All right, um, I'll just quickly check if anyone else is streaming um, Total War Warhammer so we can check out a host to somebody. Does anybody know anybody, like, is there anybody that you guys know that's streaming right now uh, that you can recommend or anything? <clears throat> just saw a wolf, uh, Mercy Wolf heart again. <laughs> Uh, Anticity is Anticity is streaming. Um, like he, uh, he's like, uh, he's Anticity is like a he's a um. If anyone who doesn't know Anticity, he's way more famous than me. Just I think shreds, so. You probably should know should know. But um, yeah, he's oh, um, he's uh, he's a he's a uh, he's a good uh, multiplayer player, and he's also a um, like a um, what do you call it? Um, like speedrunner. You know, so he's got like the best. He's got both, both going on. Um, he's I don't really know much about him, but what I do know about him, I quite respect him. So if you want to check out Anticity, he's uh, he's 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 one hundred percent. Um, and Dame Offensive, we love Dame as well. She is streaming um, Grom the Paunch, sexiest Lord of Warhammer. So uh, yes, yeah, so if you want to check out some, uh, I think Anticity is kind of like a is a scientist of Total War, but a different type. You know, the slightly different vibe. So if you want some more science, but a different strain on it, check out Anticity. If you want some more campaign play with um, with uh, you know more similar to probably I don't know how you describe Dame similar to what I do. I guess are we the similar? I don't know. We're probably similar in some ways, different other ways whatever anyway campaign campaign play uh legendary campaign play on uh, dame stream or multiplayer on anticity stream check them both out um whatever you feel like anyway thanks guys have a great time and i will see you guys next time